Um, yeah. I agree. All right, a quick question here. Lewd, can you hear me right now? Yes. Yeah. Good. I've been waiting for you to be able to hear me. <laughs> we have a donation right here from one D hashtag. It is in the amount of $54.54. 54. Dollars 54. And 54, 54, cents. 54. The comment reads, <laughs> new incentive. Because loot is awful at this game, I will donate $50 for every death in this run, including blindfolded PC1, as well as $5 for every failed dodge. Now for some predictions. You'll get 54 failed dodges and a trap from Eden Twas. <laughs> we'll forget the Vidofner. Bulbasaur will use fire exoproofing and will be hopeless. <laughs> You'll die three times to a behemoth. You know the one. <laughs> Death to PC1 will result in Alec K. Not proud. Total <laughs> donations go to runner's choice. D Sharper. Oh, boy. Are we good to go or still setting up? I don't think it's on stream yet. Okay. So we might have to do all that again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Did they hear that? Oh, did the stream hear that? I don't see why they wouldn't. <laughs> Hi, stream. Give me, give me a sec while I go do my job. <laughs> well. The dangers of wearing two hats. Oh, they heard it. I can, I'm looking at the chat. They heard it. They heard it. Okay. It's okay, Vulligen. <laughs> uh, the joys of running a marathon. <sighs> So welcome to the Final Fantasy XIII title screen. <laughs> it has very relaxing music. Indeed. Something that will not be happening for the rest of the game. Uh, the there's a lot part. of relaxing music in the game. But there's not a lot of relaxing. True. Except for, yeah, Chapter 6. Good to go? All right. So start in 3, 2, 1, go. Good luck. Thank you. Ah, cutscene skips. <laughs> Thank God for these. <laughs> yes. This is five hours of full, unadulterated action. Well, okay, maybe there's like one minute of fake cutscenes in chapter... Uh, chapter 12? 12. <laughs> 12. So as you can see here, this game, uh, you know, it's pretty much press X to win. You just auto-battle over and over, and uh, that basically just gets you to the end of the game, no problem. Yeah, yeah it'll be fun. Sounds about right. No, it's first two chapters are mostly out of battle, but as soon as we unlock the Crystarium and Paradigm system in chapter three, that's when things start getting pretty fun. Yep. Even in this uh, second battle now, there's a small optimization that Lude's about to do here. Doing that partial string there is so that we can get three attacks in before the wave beam. Yeah, it's something that's easy to overlook when you play this casually. That. You can just press the triangle button or the you know Y button on an Xbox controller to uh, cancel a string of attacks and execute it immediately uh, wherever you are on the ATB. And as well, if you press circle in the middle of a string of attacks, you can cancel the rest of the attacks. Yes. So I'm going to try to do this full string. I'm probably going to fail. So I'm going to cancel so, the yep. string. But that Even. starts recharging my ATB manually. So another small optimization. One fight down. And one nice thing while routing this game is you can see the fight times at the end of every battle. So it's not like, oh, I have to time this every time. It's like, oh, there's a nice timer for us. So who wants to describe the uh, camera <laughs> trick? <laughs> we're staring at the ground because it saves FPS. No, it doesn't. Right, reduces <laughs> lag, yeah. It uh, causes the enemies to react to your presence a little later, and that enables several dodges that are otherwise quite difficult to become much easier. Yeah, those two soldiers are situated on the left side, but if I kept the camera up, they would have been on both sides, and I would have had to, you know, finagle a run through them, which would have been a bit, a bit more difficult. So yeah, dodges are pretty significant aspect of this run in terms of going fast. Uh, retrying a fight to be able to try to dodge it again takes, you know, several seconds. Close to 15 seconds, if I remember right. 
Something that like might that. Be, that might be PlayStation like... 3 loading times. Yeah. That's true. It does Closer vary. to about 10 to 12 seconds. So that was pretty good first little section there. Chapter yep. 1 is notorious for being really annoying. Unfortunately, those were the easy dodges of the first <laughs> section. Yep. <laughs> now for the hard one. The one that we call Lightning 4 because it's the fourth dodge in the Lightning section. We're not creative. Oh, failed it. <laughs> the stairs. We run up the stairs because it exits the battle zone and that resets their ag ag aggro. And that was interesting. Whoop. Well. Dogs are kind of annoying in that <laughs> in that way. Sorry, I'm just trying to artificially raise the donation that <laughs> by the way, Sharper is raising. Whoop, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, D Sharper, I hope you're counting because we're gonna lose count real fast here. <laughs> Excellent. I just want to ask, you are doing this on purpose, right? Just yes. because you want to D Sharper to pay so much? It was one hundred percent intentional, yes. Mm -hmm. This is all for that's, charity, guys. That's very um Secondhand generous of you, Lude. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was sort of unintentional. Well, not sort of, unintentional. Uh, I don't usually fail it. If I fail it on the stairs, I don't usually fail it the second try because it's only half the distance I have to run. And then the third try was funny. It just happened. It, it happened, yeah. These things happen. All right, the item usage tutorial is the most useless tutorial in the game because it asks you to throw a potion when you're at full health. <laughs> so we're going to skip that. <laughs> I literally did not even remember that that was what it was. But in this fight, we uh, took advantage of the fact that Saz tries to, to attack whoever your current target is. So I hovered over the soldier briefly to have Saz finish it while I used the rest of my attacks on the Pantheron. This sequence is just on a timer. It just happens if you wait long enough. Right. And you'll always wind up here, so there's no point in moving. This, to me. this is another camera trick that enables me to get up to the stairs before the Pantherons even start charging. Hey, this way. Come on. Nice, he didn't block you. Mm -hmm. Saz can sometimes uh, situate himself in a spot that I can't run around him while he says, hey, come on. The joys of NPCs not being controllable and yet still being able to block your path. Now the attack chain tutorial is pretty useful, but I'm going to skip it because I don't like reading. Also time. <laughs> but we can talk about the chain percentage. So the uh, percentage bar up in the upper right corner is a damage multiplier. So currently the Psycom Rotter is taking 103, uh, now 204 percent of normal damage. Why did that suddenly go up like that, Tiernus? Well, we staggered the Psycom Rotter, which happens at each enemy has a different stagger point. And at Stagger, the chain is raised instantly by 100%, and several other useful things happen as well. Uh, notably for this fight, it becomes much easier to interrupt the Psycom Marauder. Yeah, we can talk about more, uh, more about the in-depth mechanics behind that later on, but basically, enemies while staggered become much more vulnerable to you, and uh, of course, the 100% damage bonus helps quite a lot as well. Of course, now, that 100% is much more meaningful on a low percentage enemy, like that one, than right. someone who staggers at, say, 500%. <laughs> so now we have another set of dodges, this time with Snow. And Snow's dodges are harder than Lightning's dodges because Snow has a bigger hitbox than Lightning's. He's fat. He is, in fact, the largest hitbox in the game. Yeah, he is rather fat because the heroes never diet. <laughs> oh, Credit God, are, to Zwanzig for that. Are we starting this already? Like, Of course we are. <laughs> So this dodge is called the legendary dodge in that it's pretty difficult to get the dodge. It's in fact pretty random as far as I can determine. Um, so we basically figure that we're going to fight this fight because of the fact that it's difficult to dodge. But if we do get the dodge, it saves some time. Fortunately, Snow has these useful hand grenades that we will see for the first two chapters and never again for the rest of the game. Alas. The only hope these people have. And now that you're done talking about that, could we get a roll call for the couch? We can start with the runner. Well, I'm not on the couch, so. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Lou Dolphin. I'm Freda. I'm Tiornis. I'm Vulgen. And uh, over here is Melagron. He'll probably be joining in later on as well. All of us are, to varying extents, uh, 13 runners. Some 
More than most. <laughs> Bro, back us up. Pretty sure 90% of the runs was made by 20% of the people. I eat me. All right, so that was another camera trick dodge. Uh, I only had to dodge a soldier and a panther. If I didn't camera trick, there would be two soldiers and two panthers. There's nothing we can't do. Here I'm throwing an immediate potion, not to heal, but just to not get interrupted by the behemoth attack. <laughs> Items in this game, um, when you throw them, you can't be interrupted, so we use them sometimes in order to not get interrupted by various attacks that uh, could be quite, not necessarily deadly, but the interruption would be quite annoying. And while he was talking, Lou just barely missed a timing trick. He was attempting to have Snow jump back as the behemoth swiped to dodge that swipe. Uh, missing it once is not a big deal. Missing it twice costs him a second or so. Yeah, because now the bro's throwing a potion instead of attacking. And there's going to be a lot more of this type of little optimization throughout the run. So you quickly see that, you know, unlike, uh, you know, kind of the stereotypes, well, you don't just auto battle to win. Not There's when you're trying to do everything as fast as possible. That's right. 54. <laughs> 54. <laughs> and six potions. And six potions. It's so much less exciting than a trap. It really is. At least if you use the potions in the run. In any design. This is the first fight where runners legitimately die on occasion. It's not actually a dangerous fight if you play it safe and throw a potion if necessary. But it's so early on that it's pretty tempting to take it kind of risky. So he's only attacking Saz, but occasionally he will switch targets. And when he switches targets, that actually enables you to do this fight potionless, which would save like a second or two, but it's pretty random. Now that he's staggered, I can sort of try to keep him interrupted so that he doesn't try to attack Saz when Saz attacks, but it's not a big deal if I don't get that, because he dies soon after stagger anyway. Yeah, and at this point, you don't have enough ATB uh, and enough characters to actually keep him fully stunlocked. I hope everyone's but all right. Every little bit helps just to make sure you can go potionless. So I'm equipping the power circle on Snow because I believe it takes his strength from 30 to 40. And the way that uh, physical attacks work in this game is that they are linear against your strength stat, so that means that his attacks are now doing 33% more damage. This is another difficult dodge to get, because the two panthers are annoying, but I can sort of deal with them, but the aerial recons are faster than snow, so once one uh, isn't close enough in the area and swoops down, I'm uh, basically going to have to fail the dodge. So this is another sort of routed fight. Not really routed, because I mean like it, we're not getting experience from this fight, and the items aren't guaranteed, but it's just like, you know, this is an expected situation. He's also been getting rather poor luck with the uh, recons throwing, or hitting him with missile bursts, uh, and interrupting his hand grenade throwers just cost him little bits of time. You know, don't go rushing in on your own. All right. Since we have a moment here, I'm going to go ahead and read off a couple donations. We have $25 from Cool Maddie. I am donating $25 just to tell Vulogen they heard it. They heard it. <laughs> we have a $2.50 donation from Neutrum. Come on, Mark. Blindfolded PC1 isn't that hard. Just spam the X button. Opie, opie. Thanks, Vanille. <laughs> <laughs> we have five dollars from Zynathon. Everyone needs more Bob Ross in their lives. I agree. And we have another five dollars from the Lone Quacker in the Dark. Quack! French Restream, yeah! <laughs> so that's the end of chapter one, about, you know, 15 minutes into the run or whatever. Uh, 12. Uh, very roughly. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, yes, 12 is roughly you 15. And you know, there's 13 chapters, so it's going to be like a three hour run, you know. Right, they're evenly spaced. Yes. Very evenly. <laughs> <laughs> chapter one is one of the shorter chapters. I want to say it's the second shortest chapter. Chapter yeah, eight's pretty right. short. Chapter two, at least, 
is somewhat longer because we're going to be farming a few shrouds. Unless we get lucky. Yes. Well, we're giving ourselves the opportunity to get lucky. This is a somewhat out of the way fight. Yeah, this fight is a little off the beaten path, but uh, it's going to give me a 50% chance at a Deceptisol drop. Would you mind explaining Deceptisols? <laughs> Uh, so, we have multiple types of shrouds in the game that are activated out of combat. Sepsols allow you to be ignored by the enemy. Uh, mostly in the speed run, we use that to dodge more difficult uh, combat encounters, like the legendary dodge in Chapter 1. Except we can't have Deceptisols for that one. Yep, can't get them until this chapter, and I believe that was a drop from that first pack. If only this game had time travel. Yeah, I yeah. did get a Deceptive Assault from the other fight. So this is another fight that has a 50% chance of a Deceptive Assault. After this section, the Shroud drop rate in this chapter drops to 12%, and then it drops for each chapter after that, basically. So I did not get that Deceptive Assault. I only have one right now. Normally I aim for two, but today I'm going for three because the third Deceptive Assault makes a nasty preempt a lot easier. That is the other use of the Deceptive Assaults. It allows you to automatically preempt uh, any enemy that can be preempted. Right, a preemptive attack in this game, uh, it starts you off with full ATB and also causes you to immediately uh, load up an almost full stagger bar on, or Rest chain bar on every enemy in the fight. Uh, however, it does so by, like, one by one, tapping each enemy and filling up their chain bar, um, which can be kind of slow, there's a lot of enemies. Yeah, there are some fights where he, uh, Lude will actually avoid getting a preemptive strike if he can. No problem. So there's a fort. Yeah. That was a 12% fortisol. So fortisol is another type of shroud that you're going to see uh, actually pretty soon, and that's going to give him a bunch of uh, positive Offensive. buffs on his characters. Yeah. Offensive buffs. Offensive, yep, it's bravery, faith, oh, that's and haste. <laughs> Yeah. So this is yet another camera trick, and it's a fun one because I'm now in the battle zone, now I'm out of the battle zone, and th there are the enemies that are supposed to be in the battle zone but aren't <laughs> because of the camera trick, making that a lot easier than otherwise because dodging three panthers in a six-foot-wide corridor is pretty hard. So I don't feel like playing anymore. Cool. <sighs> I'm not actually not playing. I'm <laughs> intentionally being slow in this fight because I'm trying to get zero stars. So it's a 12% Deceptive Soul chance, but if I get zero stars, that chance is multiplied by eight. So it's a 96% drop, making it almost, almost guaranteed. Almost guaranteed. How many 4% misses do you think we'll have this run? 54. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there are 54 fights. I'm going to be stuck in the ghoul hallway for 30 minutes trying to get that last Deceptive Soul. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there might be 54 if he keeps missing. So to figure out when to get zero stars, I know that I need 32 seconds in the fight. I had 34 there because I was a little bit late and lightning got interrupted. But 32 seconds, uh, I know the audio cue for that in the battle music. So when I hear it, I just have lightning finish off the fight. Actually, I didn't see if I got the <laughs> Deceptisol or not. You did. Yay! So now I'm at two Deceptisols. So yeah, aside from a couple fights that are uh, either really hard to dodge or mandatory. Like this this first part of the game, you pretty much only care about getting shrouds. And of course, that's only possible in chapter two. This fight's an exception. We're doing this fight for the uh, Gladius. Yeah, we're picking up the Gladius. We're not equipping it right away, because that's a menu. We're going to equip it once we get the power wristband, and the two of them on lightning is pretty good. So see in this case, he entered the battle zone to drag both of the mobs into uh, onto one side and then exited the battle zones, so they'd stop and then re-entered to get around them. It's just the little tricks for dodging in this game. There are many of them. Nothing to worry about. So these little guys cooperate? Oh. Uh, no? Okay. Back to it. All right. And even though there's only one enemy left, he still threw another hand grenade because the panther is weak to fire. So that does no actually more damage than two attacks would have. But another bonus. Got that Deceptive Soul. So now I'm at three Deceptive Souls, which is what I want, so I don't have to farm an additional one. Which is good. 
So now I'm changing the battle speed to slow because this game is too hard. Now we're again going to farm a shroud, this time a Fortisol. And this time it's easier, or at least possible, if uh, we set the battle speed to slow. I actually, I don't think you can get zero stars on this fight if you're on normal. I think you may be right, actually. That's probably true. Yeah, I hope Hope will finish the battle with no help from the Neil um, too fast. No daydreaming. Probably because hope, str hope is stronger than Saz for some reason. <laughs> hope is too useful right now. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Don't worry, that will change. <laughs> Very quickly. <laughs> and soon this run will be hopeless. At least until chapter 5. While we're waiting on this fight to end, we do have a couple more donations. We have $1 from Epic Kai 13 Shoutouts to Vulijin on the couch for doing commentary and tech crew. In honor of Vulijin. Hail our Dark Lord and Savior, <laughs> Lord Demon Chocoboard! Lord Demon Chocoboard is love, Lord Demon Chocoboard is life. We also have a $20 donation from Seasoner. Donating again because FF13 is one of my favorite games and the one that got me into speedrunning. May the Shroud Gods shine upon you and don't forget the vid off near Kappa. <laughs> Thanks, you both. So we got the Fortisol from that fight, and the chest they were guarding is also a Fortisol. So we got two Fortisols for the price of one. We also, of course, change back to battle speed normal because otherwise this next fight becomes, well, all the fights become intolerably slow. Yes. yes. <laughs> Mini a runner has forgotten to change battle speed to normal for this fight. Oh, I've done it so many times. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So ghouls are also weak to fire, so hand grenades are doubly good against them. This could be a two grenade fight. No, of course not. Almost. Two grenade in the fist. No problem. Should we talk about the story at all? <laughs> We're skipping it entirely, so I don't know. There's a story? <laughs> I think there, there's one of those. There is a story. You're not gonna see very much of it. <laughs> no. The story is stuff happened, and then thirteen days later here we are. It's a nice preempt, taking advantage of the fact that the ghouls have really bad uh, peripheral vision. It'll make this fight significantly faster. Yep, we're mostly killing these, or completely killing these to get to the chest behind it. Yes. Nice quick fight. The ghouls cooperated and lined up for a, uh, or whatever they're called, lined up for uh, two blitzes there. So there, the Gladius and the Power Wristband has moved Lightning from 30 strength to 60 strength, doubling her attack power. It's also worth noting that he used to optimize there in the equipment menu, and uh, basically the entire route of this game is, is so thoroughly planned that there are going to be a lot of occasions where he knows if he optimizes in particular order or particular characters, uh, the right equipment will end up on them. And uh, you're going to see a lot of that kind of menuing optimization uh, especially once Chapter 3 starts, because right now there's almost no reason to go to the menu. That dodge that he just pulled off is much harder than he just <laughs> <made>. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. The two ghouls behind them, or in front of him, were also rather strange and almost blocked me out of the entry, but the ghoul was also uh, cooperative. Now here's another set of ghouls. Oh, this is the stupidest dodge. <laughs> this one, yeah. It's... Sometimes they're in the way, sometimes... Uh, oh, that's not going to no, work. No, it's yeah. not. So what, what he's doing here is he aggroes the ghouls, and then he tries to get them uh, to back away from him, because once he's out of, ah. their, uh, once he's out of their combat range, uh, they stop chasing him, and then they kind of look at him for a second, turn towards where he is, and then kind of back away. So he's trying to get them to separate like that. But they're a little bit finicky, so it's hard to be like... Like, they sometimes just take a step forward. There we go. But... But that was good. Yeah, I actually went for that dodge uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Gave up after like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's worth noting that that hallway, typically, uh, if you need more Fortisols or Deceptisols, you will, each of those ghouls drops a specific one at zero stars. But And with the fine, so. power wristband and Gladius on Lightning, that is a 33 second zero star. Yes. So very conveniently similar audio cue to the earlier fight. Sorry, did you say zero scar? <laughs> oh, never mind. He may be watching, but no. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fellow runner of 13 and, well, the rest of the trilogy for that matter. And FF12. 
So yep. we brought a Fortis all into this fight uh, just to make it substantially faster. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty painful. So, once you destroy both of the uh, manipulators, uh, Anima starts regenerating them, during which time it won't attack you, so you can just kind of beat the crap out of it. And uh, with the Fortisol, and of course the latest power has been lightning dealing a pretty substantial amount of damage, so the fight won't last that long. At this point, it's not worth trying to kill the arms again. Even though Anima will counterattack now. It is, however, worth not dying, so... Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I killed them a bit earlier than I normally do, because uh, I killed the the arm on the left side, uh, which is the right arm, <laughs> uh, before I killed the arm on the left side, or right side, which is the left arm, yes. <laughs> Some combinations of words in that sentence says what I meant to say. <laughs> but he we killed them earlier than he's used to. We That's finished, <laughs> alright, so we finished chapter two, and in the story we are now the sea, which make us stronger. So the well, we didn't actually fight any ghouls, but for gameplay purposes, we are now into the actual combat system of the game. Uh, this is the paradigm system. Uh, I believe that uh, Square's name for the battle system is Active Dimension Battle, or is that Ever Twelve? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's something, all right. <laughs> I do not remember what it is. Anyway, we have paradigms. Uh, so each character has. Um, several roles. Uh, currently, most of them have two roles. Snow has three right now. Um, they'll have more roles opening up as we go forward. Everyone will have three roles eventually. And towards the end of the game, uh, we'll add a couple more. Important skip coming up here. Yes. Got it. <laughs> All right. Good job. If that I don't do that skip, I have to do Crystarium on Lightning, which isn't bad, but I mean, it's longer. It's slow. Yeah. It's very slow. Also done that before. Leave a lot of frames. And you also notice that Lude got another bonus to Septisol, uh, which means he has an extra one for a preempt down the road. Oh. Pretty much everything has, I don't know if everything, but most fights has a chance of dropping an extra Fortisol, Deceptisol, or Aegisol. Uh, Aegisol is the same as Fortisol, but for defensive. So Lude just did a million things, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was menuing. Yeah. Yeah, it's so a Lude menu, so it's, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, all the menus are pretty much going to look like that. Don't expect to really be following what's going on during them. Uh, we'll try to summarize. Uh, in this case, uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice touch. Uh, in this case, Lude wanted to set up basically for the rest of Chapter 3. Uh, well, for the rest of this first section of Chapter 3, which includes the boss. So he set up some paradigms. Uh, we'll explain what's in those in a little bit. Uh, he also did some Crystarium uh, just to get little stat boosts on his characters. Uh, I don't think you pick up any abilities at this point, right? No. And then uh, he also did some optimi uh, optimizing. Uh, he picked up a Magician's Mark from the store a little bit earlier, so... Oh, he got the three. Oh, that's a two. two. Dang. Very nice. <laughs> nice fight. That's one of my favorite fights in the game. <laughs> uh, so Lud Dolphin is using uh, the Via Cursor option um, for targeting, as opposed to From Menu. And that lets him do a trick where he uh, inputs a command with the X button and then immediately executes it with the triangle button um, and bypasses a little bit of execution time. That fight is not, you can only get that fight in two seconds with that trick. And that's also going to come in very, very handy later on. Uh, it's going to do strats on a lot of fights that are going to require really tight timing and you're probably not going to be able to get that timing without doing that triangle via cursor method. Uh, I can confirm, without the uh, via cursor, those strats do not work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried, it didn't work. Okay, and I just want to say real quick, uh, thanks to the chat, I can confirm that Active Dimension Battle is in fact an FF12. The name for FF13s is actually Command Synergy Battle. Command Synergy, uh, of course. Command synergy. Okay. I should know that. In other words, it's just a combination of words. <laughs> I don't think anyone should know that. <laughs> command Synergy Battle. Therefore, oh. you should only use commandos and synergists. Perfect. <laughs> I've been in enough forum discussions about Final Fantasy Add saboteur, and that's basically what Where I did for my casual. Out. I guess we can probably talk briefly about the roles and, and the paradigms and stuff. Uh, so the main roles that he's got right now are Commando and Ravager. Uh, he has one other, but he's not. it's not going to be as Two important. Others. 
Oh, that's true. Medics, yeah. yeah. And Sentinel is used for about two seconds. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Commander is going to be his main, like, damage dealing role. Uh, mostly, yeah. And uh, the point of Commando is basically to just deal high physical damage attacks. Uh, then also to uh, build at chain duration, which we'll explain in a little bit. And then Ravager is going to deal magic attacks and uh, build chain percentage, uh, which we're going to see a bit of here. It's important to note that uh, commando damage can easily be magical, and there are, I believe Snow will be primarily using physical Ravager attacks here. Yeah, I always forget that. I think the correct uh, differentiation is elemental versus not elemental. And high damage versus quick chain building. So you'll notice right there, he actually delayed casting with lightning for a little bit. Uh, that's to, whenever someone is staggered, it completely interrupts any action they were doing. Most of the time. Most of the time. Depends on some bosses going. But in this case, uh, the war mech was using a ability called Crystal Rain, which would have killed him. So he waited to stagger until that started casting, thus and then saving him. He put in Snow very briefly as Sentinel to cause Madison War Mech to stop targeting lightning. And as a result, he's able to do this battle with no potions. It's also uh, something that you'll see coming up in, in very near future more and more in battles is uh, he did a trick called ATB Refreshing, which I guess is really not a trick, but it's a mechanic that exists in the game. And uh, basically every 12 seconds, you get a refresh of your ATB bar to full when you do a paradigm shift. So if you shift, uh, the first shift of the fight, you'll get a full bar, and then 12 seconds after that, you can shift again, get another full bar. I mean, you can always shift otherwise, but you won't get that refresh. Um, so he's going to take advantage of that a lot. Uh, generally, the timing is like you do two full ATB strings worth of attacks, and then you can shift and get another full one. With three ATB, it's actually not two full strings. Yeah, it's, uh, I forget the exact numbers. Slightly more than that? Yeah, it's a short delay after the second string. The full ATB bar fills up at, like, it, it fills up at different rates based on the number of ATB segments you have. So right now he's got three, so it's going to fill up at a different speed than later when he's got four. Four ATB segments will fill up slower overall, but not 33% slower. Right. It's each segment fills up slightly faster, but the full bar takes longer to fill. So there's a lot of complexity of that timing and stuff, but uh, in general, decent rule of thumb to ATB strings. Meanwhile, the dolphin made all of the dodges look very easy. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those are not. Yeah. It's fine. We've got we've got the best one coming up right now. Absolutely. The Brog Fridge. <laughs> this is a bridge composed of frogs. But if you're like me and you accidentally switch syllables in speech, this becomes the Brog Fridge. <laughs> and so that's how it's been fondly referred to ever since. So even with the Decept Cell, that dodge is very tricky because the frogs jump around unpredictably. Yep. Uh, what he just did there is what's known as a Decept Cell cancel. Uh, by re-entering the enemy zone from the backside and then retrying the fight, he gets the Decept Cell back, but he's conveniently on the other side of the enemy zone. Right, so this is how he's going to be able to take those, uh, what, four Decept Cells he got in Chapter 2 mm -hmm. and sustain those until, like, much later in the game and then use them uh, to get preempts while also using them earlier in the game to get dodges. <laughs> That tutorial describes techniques which we already used against Manasman Warmack, so. <laughs> and which I believe we won't bother using in this fight. Indeed. Um, if you're playing casually, it's worth it to Libra this enemy to improve Saz and Vanille's AI performance, but here in Speedrun, they only have one Ravager ability, so Libra does nothing for them. So yeah, if you look at his uh, paradigm list there, as you see each time he uh, goes to shift, he's got doubles of uh, Relentless Assault and Aggression. With the reasoning, or Tri Disaster, I think, in this set, right? Yes. Yeah. With the, uh, the reason being that uh, generally he wants to be doing one particular set of paradigms at any given time, but he can get HUB refreshes, so he's got two copies of that paradigm. Just swap from one Relentless Assault to the other, and uh, you can still get an ATB refresh that way. So that's going to be pretty common later in the game. Uh, and sometimes you'll have different variants, uh, like two paradigms that are similar but differ in one character's role.
We have a few more donations here. Another one from Cool Maddie, ten dollars. Man, this run so far is lightning fast. <laughs> I hope it is a world record. I give it five stars. So he says. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Without even batting an eyelash. Wow. <laughs> I can see it was no problem for pretty much everyone on the couch except for Vulagen to just, you know, shake that one off. <sighs> Seriously, thanks for the donation. We also have five dollars. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we also have five dollars from Baffon. Just noticed the Cherub Sandals goal in Shining Force 2 is still not met, so I figured I could put some help there. Once again, keep up the good work with the awesome marathon, everyone. $20 from Folokinix. I probably did not read that right, so sorry. I just got made a fool of by my yard escaping dog. In honor of my anger and relief at her, time to put money towards something. It was going to be more Warmack, but I just saw something not met. Let's make it Bowie. And finally, we have $5 from Zephyrs. Lu, 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 Good luck on the run, buddy. Glad to see you going out and supporting a good cause with FF13. All the best to you and everyone else. Thank you. So chapter three is obviously substantially, uh, well, I guess not substantially longer than the previous chapters, but uh, there's a lot more kind of stuff going on, obviously, since you've got access to paradigms and the actual battle system of the game. 24 minutes in. <laughs> so we did two Decept cancels. Which yes. again, you know, we run past the battle zone and then we run back in, uh, retry the fight, and that puts the Deceptus all back in our inventory. So we've been skipping a lot of chests because they're mostly pretty useless um, yeah. early in the game. That chest he just passed is perhaps the most useless. It's like 30 gil. It doesn't even buy you a potion. <laughs> <laughs> which is 50 gil, which is one of the cheapest items you can buy in the shop. Yeah. A number of these other chests have uh, items that you can use to upgrade your weapons, but we don't even have that ability yet. So um, you can still collect them, obviously. And there's, I mean, there's old speedrun routes that did for uh, various purposes. But uh, in the current route, you don't really need to do that. Uh, cutting out chests like that has been a lot of the optimization over the past year. Yeah. Finding different ways to use our resources. It's definitely very slow to pick up chests in this game. Yeah, I mean, I, having just learned semi-recently an older route compared to the one that Loot is using, uh, you can just see the difference in terms of like the number of chests collected and uh, the number of shrouds collected at the beginning of the game and also the uh, number of menus uh, is a really big deal. and what is done during those menus. Like, particularly the Crystarium is extremely time consuming, so you really don't want to be just spending a crap load of time in there. You just want to get the bare minimum. And uh, by the end of the game, like, when, when you've played this casually and you see what your stats were when you beat the game compared to what loot's gonna have, uh, you will see that we really do mean the bare minimum. Um, this uh, speed run is very close to being a highly optimized mandatory fights only challenge. <laughs> Uh, though obviously we've done some non-mandatory fights already. Um, we just move and make on yeah, there are a couple more of those throughout the run. Yeah, very few. But practically none after chapter two. Uh -oh. oh, wow. That guy wanted to get you. Rude. That happens. <laughs> sometimes he doesn't move. Sometimes he moves to the right. Sometimes he charges at you at your side. Sometimes I take the slower, long route around them, which is usually safer. And by going up above like that, he made it much easier to dodge that group down below. So now I'm picking up the only two items I ever pick up in this chapter, which is a Libra scope. No, yeah. Phoenix. Well, my Phoenix down and two Libra scopes. That's yeah. the order. So Libra scopes are going to come in pretty handy later on. Yep. Um, For the first several chapters, he'll just be collecting them. Yep. As it's worth mentioning, as he starts this boss fight. <laughs> Um, which is pretty straightforward boss fight. This is kind of the, uh, the first test of like, oh, do you understand how to stagger a thing and then kill it? Um, and oh. <laughs> the mess. 
Nice dodge. That is the first time that happened. <laughs> Hashtag that never happened before. I love marathons. But yeah, as it happens, Lou does know how to stagger a thing and then kill it. Uh, there's two phases to this fight, so now he's going to go into the second phase. There yeah. is one little tech thing that he uh, used in that, in that uh, when you're in the air, there's two animations for when you're switching a paradigm. The first yes. time in a fight, when you switch paradigms, it does like a switch for each character and takes a lot longer. But if you're in the air when you do that, it will not play the long this long animation that just happened and just play the short one. So he on purpose always shifts while lightning is in the air to avoid that. And in that second fight, that uh, shift to try disaster onto with the long animation, he deliberately does that when he's not going to get an ATV refresh so that his ATV gauge continues to charge during that animation. And then when he does the ATV refresh, uh, he doesn't have to deal with the long animation. Small optimization. It worked that time. <laughs> We'll have larger optimizations <laughs> later in the round. Yeah. Yeah, this fight, I mean, really, all the fights this early in the game are pretty straightforward, but you're kind of getting glimpses of, like, how deep things can really get in terms of the combat in this game. So one other thing we could mention is, uh, notice he did open with some commando attacks and then spent a lot of time in Try Disaster. Uh, so there's a common misconception with this game that commandos slow down the decay of the chain gauge and ravagers speed up the decay of the chain gauge. It's not actually true. They both slow it down. It's just the commandos slow it down a lot more. Right. So the mechanic basically is uh, when you do an attack, it adds a certain amount of duration to the chain gauge. Uh, also, he just skipped like a bunch of extra enemy spawns there. Yeah. And also, maybe we should talk about Eidolons before we <laughs> yeah, let's, go into uh, the detailed mechanics. We have time for it. So with Eidolon fights, the goal is to raise Gestalt. And for the lead character, just about anything they do can raise Gestalt. But the most effective way is to build chain. With Shiva, you also want to be a sentinel during two specific attacks. Pirouette, which we just saw, and Wheel Grind. Uh, Shiva will always telegraph those by doing an ATB charge. Uh, so, anytime that she is not doing an ATB charge, it's going to use the commander roll to build some duration, and then the ravager roll to uh, build faster chain while he has that duration. He's alternating attacks in the commander roll because that builds a small amount of extra chain, which translates to a substantially larger amount of extra gestalt. Yeah, so the story kind of idea behind these battles is that, you know, as it was see, you're t being tested to, like, you know, see if you can something, something strong enough withstand whatever. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but the, I, the way you do that is by raising the Gestalt meter. And uh, in that fight, you know, you're getting helped by Shiva is actually two entities, and you get helped by, I think, Nyx, uh, who cures you over the course of the fight. That doesn't happen in the future fights. You will get straight up killed if you're not careful. Yes. That was also a really cool animation that is also fortunately skippable. <laughs> I say fortunately because otherwise there would be a lot of extra animation time. Because summons are actually used quite heavily in this run. Yes. Yeah, we're going to see that a fair bit later on in the run. Um, but it'll be not for a while. Oh, I wonder if you got the uh, the hidden fort. The invisible fort of soul. <laughs> I will check once we cross this bridge. So that little encounter he had with the uh, three soldiers right before Shiva uh, has the possibility of dropping a fort. I actually missed if you got it or not. I did not. Okay. Even though you don't get to see like a battle results screen on that fight, it can drop that. Should we resume talking about chain mechanics? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's got, lots of opportunities for it. We've yes, got, we got like the basics in. Um, so early on, uh, what he's typically going to do is build a little bit of duration and then use a lot of Ravager. Um, while he's, Ravagers can mostly maintain chain duration, they lose a little bit each round, uh, but they can't really build it without help right now. Uh, later in the game, that will also change. So Chapter 4 is notorious for having extremely difficult dodges. Yes. And those dodges, that last dodge with the three watch drones can sometimes troll with just positioning. Uh, but luckily, no problems so far. 
Of course, that's not even close to the worst dodge in this chapter. No, uh, we'll get there. <laughs> we're, we're about to come up to one of the sections with uh, several very troubling dodges. Yeah. But first, we're going to meet a new roll. Uh, Vanille's about to open the saboteur roll. Uh, actually, two new rolls, because Sass is opening the synergist roll. Right. Those are uh, our last two rolls. In peril. <laughs> very important. Not yet. It but is soon. important, but not yet. Um, Technically, Synergist was available in Chapter 3. It was on Hope, but <laughs> you don't have hope, hope in your party. so. <laughs> yeah, so the Saboteur is kind of a debuffer role. It casts a lot of things like Deprotect and Deshell, which reduce, or rather increase damage taken from uh, physical attacks and magical attacks, respectively, or Impera, which makes them weaker to all elements. Uh, which we'll be combining with uh, a buff from the Synergist class. So as, as Saboteur is the debuffer, Synergist is the buffer and casts the opposite. They basically counter each other with their own opposite sides. So that was really good through shell luck right there. Very yeah, nice. that was. So we just did two very interesting things at the start of that fight. First, he Libra hovered over the Pulse Wars Soldier, and what that means is selected Libra and put his tar cursor on there. And uh, that caused Vanille to start attacking it first to get the stagger on. And then he uh, moved his cursor over to the watch drones and did Libra. And that improved Vanille's AI targeting on those enemies. Uh, I mean, her usage of abilities. Uh, these watch drones are weak to water. So by Libraing them, uh, Vanille starts using water, which kills them much faster than oh, using man. And this is one of several dodges that is tricky that to good. avoid and you cannot influence because the enemies do not notice you. Uh, this makes it relatively easy to fight in casual play, but very annoying to dodge if they have to be positioned wrong. That was very lucky positioning. Yep. That one can stop you for a while, as can this one right here. This is the worst one. 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 <laughs> okay. If you weren't sure. <laughs> But yeah, this is totally, like, the enemy movement is pretty much totally random. Uh, you can obviously learn kind of how the enemies move a little bit, but you're still go. hoping for good luck like that. Hey, what do you know? That was not that terrible. Was, yeah, the Thexterons are following the Pulsework Soldiers around, so you sort of have to watch the Pulsework Soldier movement to see how the Thexterons are going to be moving. And in this next section, there will first be a quick fight um, for a weapon, which... Uh, the Dolphin will get a preempt four to make the fight go much faster. These pulse work, uh, uh, pulse work soldiers take a lot less damage when they are not staggered. Let's get this over with. Well, this is another example of uh, special effects of stagger. You see that his core thing opens up there, and now you can just deal a ton of damage to him. Whereas when it's close, you can't do pretty much anything. And that quick shift of variety was just so Vanille could get the shell on it, which. Uh, D-Shell is a 89% boost damage. So not quite double damage, very close. So very soon you're going to start. Oh, <laughs> yeah. bonus huh. Age Assault. <laughs> bonus Shrouds are flowing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> sure. So Chapter 2 mostly had a 12% chance of Shroud Drops. Chapter 3 had an 8% chance. Uh, chapter 4 has a 6% chance. And after that, all future chapters have 1% or less. <laughs> There is one shroud associated with each encounter, not with individual enemies. Birds. Birds. And yes, birds. This is why, another reason why this uh, dodges in this chapter are hard. Because birds, like in every RPG. RPG jerk birds. They are jerks. Yes. So here, Vinny, I was going to go peek ahead from behind us. Do me a favor. Stop wandering off and stay where I can keep my eye on. He yeah. says while he's in the lead. <laughs> 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 All right, <laughs> good dialogue. There's another instance where I forget who, but I think it's Snow that says to Hope, hey, wait up while he's way in the lead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, chapter 7, I think. Just Birds. real quick. Okay. Birds. Birds. <laughs> birds. <laughs> All right. Many birds. All right. All right, one last one. Birds. Oh, oh wow, they didn't even The second one didn't wow. jump down. All right. It's cheating. Excellent. <laughs> so typically, if one of those dodges has failed, um, 
you just use a Decept to solve for the rest of the dodges, uh, because with the birds already starting on the ground instead of jumping down, they are significantly harder to dodge. Okay, and real quick, we are here supporting NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. If you want to learn more about them, go to NAMI.org, N-I-M-N-A-M-I.org. They primarily, uh, or sorry, they are striving to raise awareness of all the unfortunate and difficult things that people with mental illness struggle with on a daily basis. So I highly recommend going there, checking them out, uh, donate. It's a, a cause that a lot of people are afraid to talk about. So just, you know, even getting the word out, if you can't afford to donate, is enough. It's, that's good. So don't be discouraged even if you can't donate. Spread the word, social media, talk to your friends. Please do. So these birds are such jerks because they're guarding the thing I'm trying to activate. So that wasn't a failed dodge. I actually have to fight this one. Alas. So what you're going to start seeing real soon uh, thanks to the various synergist uh, buffs and saboteur debuffs that Mood has is that uh, this game, like being able to perform in combat effectively, depends a lot on combining the multipliers from different buffs and debuffs. Uh, D-Protect and D-Shell, of course, each being 89% increase oh, well. in damage taken, uh, physical and magic respectively, and then Bravery and Faith being uh, buffs of how many percent? 40%. 40%. Uh, attack and magic, respectively. Uh, then you also have the commando roll, which starts as a 200% bonus and grows good. throughout the game. You have elemental weakness exploitation, which is a 100% oh. bird doubling bird. damage. Yeah, so like when you combine all these different multipliers, uh, you know, like in peril. <laughs> yes. Um, at the end, you get damage numbers that are just obscene and. Uh, that's really the key to being able to take enemies out quickly. Yes. Yeah, so should we probably should go into the passive bonuses for each roll as well. Uh, each roll, uh, in com combination with other rolls, has a passive bonus. So each commando roll in your party increases damage by a certain amount. Um, Tiro probably knows the exact percentages, but... Uh, not for the secondaries. <laughs> Fair enough. And the, you can level up these rolls over time, so the, the bonuses will be higher over time. Uh, Ravager increases the chain uh, boost rate, so the more Ravagers in your party, the, high, the faster the chain rate will be boosted. That's why a lot of times we'll be in the Tri-Disaster, which is three Ravagers. Uh... Medic increases healing done, Sentinel decreases damage taken, Saboteur ins increases the percent chance of a debuff landing, and eh. Synergist increases the buff landing. Right. And now we're in our first boss. Well, <laughs> So, this is Dreadnought, part one. He does some nifty ATB tricking to get uh, the buffs he wants without losing too much in the way of uh, chain building, without having to reset his paradigms to do that. Right, for example, oh, in the battle, he's uh, trying to get a uh, debuff out with Saz, and, or sorry, a buff out with Saz, and then immediately uh, switch back to another paradigm to keep Lightning attacking. Uh, Lightning's going to be the main damage dealer in this fight, so he really wants to make sure Bravery's on her and then that to keep Protect is on the boss. And you may have noticed that that uh, potion just almost healed him full. That's thanks to the doctor's code that he equipped earlier. Uh, doubles the effectiveness of potions and makes them your strongest healing for most of the first half of the game. So, another two-phase fight. These are pretty common. Um, second phase is just slightly more dangerous. Uh, he has this attack, and then he's also got Wrecking Ball, which we'll see pretty soon. Actually, hopefully we won't see it. Oh, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Uh, much like the Manusman Warmbeck fight where he stagger canceled Crystal Rain, he's going to attempt to stagger cancel a Wrecking Ball. Uh, unfortunately, Wrecking Ball is a lot harder to stagger cancel. Yeah, so he's doing a very precise planned out sequence of attacks and uh, early ATB canceling just to make sure that he's going to get the stagger at exactly the right time. 
It can't be too early and it can't be too late. It needs to be... Even the potion toss was carefully timed. That was it. He started walking forward, so nice. that was Wrecking Ball. Nice. Just... So the Steam Queen that we canceled in the first phase will actually remove the debuffs, and I'll have to recast those once it goes off. Other than that, it's just ATB refreshing, trying to kill him before Stagger wears off. Which is pretty straightforward with Lightning buff with Bravery and uh, the new Faith. And both debuffs on the enemy. And you also notice it's a lot higher chance for debuffs to land on them when they are staggered. Much more? Is it based on the percentage? It's uh, based on the percentage of the chain. So, um, yes, the chain gauge acts as a straight multiplier to uh, status effect chances, just like it acts as a straight multiplier to damage. So now we finally have the ability to upgrade equipment, uh, which we will do in a little bit. Yep. Um, also, he made sure to remove the doctor's code from Saz there. He really, really wants to have it <laughs> not on Saz in the very near future. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll be losing control of them, and they heaps his equipment because yeah. he's greedy. This is another thing that uh, when I start learning the run, you probably make this mistake a lot of times. Uh, you tend to make it once. <laughs> <laughs> once, and then you remember. Okay, well, some of us don't learn from our mistakes immediately. <laughs> That's fair. <bad. laughs> Next up is the hardest fight of the speedrun. <laughs> no, it's not the hardest, but it's Close. the one that has led to frequent deaths just because of aggro on the leader. For for better or worse, leader death means game over in this game. And so if everyone in this fight targets lightning, it's basically game over. Well, not basically, it is. Well, basically, yes, game over. He could guard against that by very technical. <laughs> tossing a potion, but that would be slow. Hope sucks. Potions suck. <laughs> so this is excellent positioning because that blitz hit all four soldiers. That would have hit the third one, but he backed up. Overall, still a pretty, pretty good setup there. Yes. Soldiers tend to be rather annoying to fight because they don't like to stay grouped up. Or stationary at all. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it more harder to uh, hit all of them at once. Very uncooperative of them. We have time for a few donations here. Yep. All right, we have one from Existence. Never been big into the speedrunning community, but it's always amazing to see how guys like you and AGDQ continue to do what you do for the betterment of the world. Keep running those speeds, gamer men. <laughs> we have a $10 donation from Go Cool Maddie again. Uh -oh. I'm thinking of doing my own RPG marathon. The name? It's hip to be square, Enix. That was <laughs> weak, Matt. Come on. <laughs> We have $10 from KROB16. Lude Dolphin is my favorite streamer. It used to be Bic, but now it's Lude Dolphin. Oh, Love oh K -Rob. wow. <laughs> Shots. Dang. And finally, we have an anonymous $5 donation. Hey, Lude and crew and RPGLB organizers. About high time somebody mentions you guys, eh? Good luck on the run, as always, and especially so today. You can tell this is a special occasion because Garuda Interceptor practiced this routine day and night to prove that to prove you that it too can perform the legendary dodge. Can't wait to see all the Banks Vanille <laughs> moments we'll have this run. <laughs> and I have to say that is one of the most epic whiffs I have ever seen in this game. It was so perfect. So he just used a Pacepta Soul Cancel there because this enemy is actually surprisingly challenging to dodge. Like, if you get the right timing there, it's, it's easy, but getting the right timing is like, I don't know, it's just very funky. It's a fairly small window. Yep. I've had issues dodging it on PC, but on PS3, for whatever reason, I've had no problem with it. So I'm just going to talk it up to PC differences. Cool. I'll <laughs> use that as my excuse going forward. <laughs> <laughs> I've ran this game on both PS3 and PC, and anytime I do something bad on PC, I now have the excuse of saying, oh, this didn't happen on PS3, therefore it's not my fault. I yeah. think it's, it's probably a great time to mention that Luke Dolphin is not just, like, good at this game. Uh, he previously had the, the world record on uh, the PS3 version at like a 512 some number of seconds. And uh, he didn't have a PC that was really... Uh, so this game is kind of weird in terms of how it works on PCs. You can have a really good PC that for some reason just runs it like trash. Uh, yeah, like Freddy. <laughs> like me. We don't know why. Uh, but uh, Loot finally acquired a PC thanks to uh, 
Well, I'll let him say how he got uh, it. Like. Some anonymous donor. Oh, actually, not anonymous donor. They don't. They, uh, shout outs to Values and Takasu for gifting me a PC so I could speedrun this game on PC. So once he got that PC and the PC version of Final Fantasy 13, I believe he did one run and immediately got World First record. run. So, <laughs> by a lot. <laughs> uh, and I mean PC World Record. I don't mean that he beat his uh, PS3 time. I mean, he also beat the PC World Record of 505. So yeah. Previously yeah. held by Maelstrom. Who is also really good at this game. Who is currently sleeping, so we can say anything we want about him. Agreed. <laughs> Excellent. What a noob. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, so in that uh, mini game we just saw, um, Lude actually was very careful about how many soldiers he kills. He didn't want to kill too many of them or too few of them because he wants that 20 thickened hides. Uh, he needs those in order to uh, do some upgrading in the relatively near future. Uh, so this might be a good time to do a quick rundown of the upgrading system. Uh, you have organic multipliers. Uh, sorry, organic components, inorganic components, and catalysts. At the moment, we are just worried about the first two. Uh, organic components raise the experience multiplier. Uh, inorganic components have high experience values, but lower the multiplier. So generally, you want to throw a bunch of organics at it to get the multiplier up to times two or times three, and then drop a whole large lump of inorganics to exploit that multiplier. Right, so right now he's going to upgrade uh, Lightning's Blaze Fire Saber. Uh, the Gladius is going to go the way of the Dodo right about now. And uh, he's going to upgrade to level 13 uh, using these Thickened Hods and uh, I think uh, whatever he has lying. Oh, I didn't on. actually buy the things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about upgrading, right, so I went to upgrade, but I don't have the things <laughs> I need to upgrade with. I didn't also, okay. <laughs> we'll take a step back. Before we shop, we're going to menu. <laughs> I got too excited about upgrading, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Upgrading <laughs> is really fun. <laughs> now that I've menu, I can now shop. Right. This also reminds me what you're actually doing in this shop, which is that he's going to buy 49 polymer emulsions. <laughs> and combined with the thicken hides he had, that will get him to level 13 on the Blaze Fire Saber. And now that I've shopped, I can now upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> and they are here. And he funds that upgrade largely with uh, the extra weapons that he's been... Uh, picking up. It's worth noting that he took uh, Hope's original weapon off and replaced it with the thing he picked up and sold the original weapon, which actually sells for 5,000 gil. So it's a nice shot in the arm right now. So Odin. This, this is a <laughs> first really dangerous boss. So this trick is actually really neat right here. He does two attacks specifically on Odin, and that causes lightning to shift to the left slightly and it almost always causes this separation between Lightning and Hope, which means that they won't both be getting hit simultaneously. Protected from Hope is key to uh, making the damage manageable. And of course, the very powerful healing from potions. Uh, in addition to healing prevents uh, Lightning from getting launched from Odin's multiple ways of launching you. Uh, a lot of people have come into this fight gotten interrupted, launched, and then killed before they can recover. <laughs> so now that he's pretty high on Gestalt and uh, Hope is getting targeted, he's just going to let Hope die. Yeah, I'll finish the fight. Oh, oh Hope finished it for us. <laughs> <Excellent. laughs> Don't write him yes. off just yet. 54, dude. 54. And an Odin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That what is an inside meme. joke if you haven't caught on by now. <laughs> <laughs> you may hear a few more of those. What a meme. Yeah, this is another instance where there's a triggered cutscene that for whatever reason triggers when you exit the different direction, the opposite direction. Yeah, it's, it's just slightly faster. A few seconds faster. Yeah. That tutorial tells you how to use summons. Um, we're not going to use them the way the tutorial wants us to. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, since Lightning is in yellow, Odin is going to Kiraga and then um, use Elder Shield. So it's not, actually not that good, so I am going to end up using Odin the way the tutorial intended, because I'm not going to be able to maintain a uh, long enough stagger. Yeah. So the ideal there is that he would have staggered both of the Ulans and then used Blitzes to kill them. 
while Odin just kind of helps sustain the chain. Correct. But uh, yeah, it's definitely use Zantats again. Zantatsuken has some funky mechanics. We'll get more into that in Chapter 5. Uh, suffice to say, with them both staggered, the Until one uh, extra lightning blast. I can't remember the name Lightning of that Storm? Move. Lightning Storm? Lightning uh, something. The circle button attack. <laughs> 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 thunderfall. There we yeah, go. Thunderfall. Yeah. That's it. The uh, one Thunderfall followed by Zantatsuken is an automatic kill on this guy. Now we have some awesome music. Is this called Can't Catch a Break? I can't remember from the soundtrack. I do not remember any track names. Basically Saz's welcome. theme. It is Saz's <laughs> theme, yeah. And Can't Catch a Break does sound right. I, I think that's right. Be. We'll see if chat corrects us in a second. So bombs are fun. They're <laughs> basically, I mean, they're D20s, right? Just look at it. <laughs> but uh, they do have a face, so you can like tell when they're actually looking at you and when it's safe to go by. It's kind of hard to see. Like in a casual playthrough, you'll probably never even notice it. Yeah, you were probably ignorant of their face. Oh, wow. <laughs> Rude. Oh, wow. You know what, Lude? I got to give that one to you. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Okay, this is just Saj's theme. Can't catch a break Oops. is for the Enki and Enlil fight. Uh, okay. Yes. So this chapter, or this part of this chapter, is pretty interesting because uh, you have to do all these fights with just Saj and Enlil, and Saj and Enlil kind of suck together. Like, they don't have good combinations of uh, paradigms right now, but with the right usage of bravery and faith and uh, certain combinations of calm and sab and stuff like that, you can do some really neat things here and uh, actually make it work. It's not so much their paradigm, their roles that are lacking. Saz has Commando, Vanille has, they both have Ravager. Um, it's that their stats are significantly lower than Lightning stats. Uh, even not counting the Blazefire sa uh, Saber upgrade. So if you're not leveraging their... Oh, uh, rude. RPG uh, bombs are jerks. Meanwhile, Luz is getting trolled by this dodge. <laughs> yeah, this is, as you can see, a dodge that can be very much in the way. I'm just going to throw T-Sept it because there's an opening. All right, we have a few donations here. Let's start off with a $4.55 do donation from... Noah Rapav. Yo. Decept list bird elevator a riot. P.S. Don't do. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's actually, a, wow, those are two great That's references. a very marathon safe strat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Noah Rapav is Vaporeon backwards, just FYI. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of awkward to say. Yes. We also have $5 from Jay Fairmount. Have another $5, because while Lude managed to whiff Garuda Interceptor, I managed to whiff the name visibility field with my last donation. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. And last but not least, we have a $100.54 cent <laughs> donation from Little Sharky. Yo. Lou, it's been three years since Zoning drove to Canada to run 13 on no sleep at Crystals for Life. As the old man who hasn't seen our game at a marathon since, I'm proud of how far we've come since 2013. You and the couch are representing us well. Speaking for the old men of the community, Dylan, Matt, Gabe, Brett, and everyone who ran with five forts with seven decepts, thank you for doing this for such a good cause. Cinquenta cuatro! <laughs> <laughs> and we heard you like Batman, Sharky, and the missus. <laughs> it's definitely worth mentioning that there was another marathon appearance uh, after Crystals for Life 2013. Uh, this was at ESA 2015, and uh, it was run by Maelstrom, uh, who we mentioned earlier. Yeah, but he doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, he's asleep. <laughs> I actually don't know if the video of that run is up yet, <laughs> so I'm not sure if you can actually I go watch it. I think it recently was added okay. somewhere. Awesome. So, because uh, I won't watch that. Lude was waiting to get the preempt on this fight. <laughs> These fights can be done without a preempt, but it is much faster to have the preempt. The preempts are also really awkward, so you can kind of decide whether or not you want to wait and retry, or wait to try the preempt as opposed to just going for the normal we got fight. This for Neil. So there he made sure to uh, get Vanille and Saz to kind of target different things and stagger both enemies before the initial uh, boost from having preempted war when, off. When you preempt the enemies, you get uh, 
10 seconds of uh, chain duration. On I was each literally of the just going to ask you that number. <laughs> so, not a whole lot of time to. Plenty of time to get one of them staggered. Not a whole lot of time to get multiple staggered. This fight is not really doable in a time efficient fashion without a preempt. Fortunately, I would normally preempt there, except the back soldier turned much earlier than normal. So we're going to wait for the second round, which is probably also going to suck. Yeah, that's just the awkward thing they did where the two posts went through. All right. All right, it worked out. But yeah, where they ran into each other and just kind of, you know, hugged each other for a minute. Follow the old man's lead. So same deal here, make, making sure to get them both staggered. And now he wants to protect on them both just so that uh, the uh, comm attacks that Saz is doing are more effective. It's worth noting, we talked earlier about how commando attacks add a lot of chain duration. Saboteur attacks also add a pretty good amount of chain duration, especially when there's a successful status inflictor. So by having Vanille stagger these with Saboteur, you have a very good chance of having a lot of chain duration going into stagger which translates to a longer stagger, which makes it easier to kill them before the stagger runs out. Right. The maximum duration of a stagger is 45 seconds, and there's like a formula that they use to determine how long the stagger lasts based on how much chain duration you had. Uh, basically, you want to have 18 seconds of chain duration, and then you'll get the max stagger. So if, if you've ever wondered why when you preempt your staggers are only half as long as normal, it's because you only had 10 seconds of chain duration if you stagger with the Ravager. Uh, you only had 10 seconds of chain duration by the time that gets there. Right, and so these strats, you know, not all of the enemies need to be staggered to full length because, like, the bomb there just dies instantly as long as it's staggered. But uh, the post work soldiers need a lot more love. <laughs> Bullet love. Lots of bullets. So far, these fights have been going pretty well. Yep. These fights are, of course, <laughs> mandatory. You've got to hit all four of these panels uh, so that you can hit another, or go through the door yeah. on the other side. He says so far because we're now coming to the one that can randomly go terribly. Yes. Well, that was nice. It's but that was a really good guaranteed victory. Yeah. yeah. So if, you, if you miss the preempt, you're basically just hoping that you kill one bomb and that when the other one explodes, it doesn't kill both of you. Just <laughs> uh, Really, you only care about a killing Saz. <laughs> yeah. If it kills Vanille, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> And miraculously, we're killing both this time. Usually, with a preempt, you kill one and the other one explodes, and one explosion is not enough. <laughs> what to is you. happening? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so people at home watching may not be like closely monitoring the battle results screens, other than like speedrunners. But he just got another bonus age is all, and he got another bonus to sept earlier. Like these are just lewd numbers of drops. <laughs> <laughs> up a Fortis Hall for later on there. This I mean, is one of those dodges that is possible to do without Decept Hall, but is much easier to do with it. Yes. Yeah. Some people do it Deceptless. It's probably not that bad. It requires you to lure them, but... I usually try to. There are some formations where you have to lure them, so sometimes you Decept Hall and then you find that you can't actually get through. So let's double check. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't remove them. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah. <sighs> Good double All check. Right. <laughs> yeah, so removing those there, again, is really important. You don't get to control or de-equip Saz of Anil during the next chapter, so you really don't want to lose these items. Hey, it's 300 gil. That's six potions. <laughs> it is. Agreed. <laughs> possible to do the next chapter without those items, but significantly more difficult and slower. If I yeah. forget them, I just purchase a power wristband, and I run... Yeah. The chapter with an extra power wristband and no magician's mark. Oh man, this exciting segment. I think this is the closest thing I would say that, that this run has to a cutscene. Because you <laughs> skip everything else, but you can't skip this. To run. But this is the end of chapter four, which is pretty much the longest chapter of the first eight, seven or eight. Oops. I think that's right. Yep. Yeah, but I pressed X there. Yeah, this segment is, as we said, a, a, an interactive cutscene. Because there's no fights, it's just we're trying to find Sarah. All right, real quick, I'd like to say, uh, just mention that we do have a few donation incentives for upcoming games. 
Not only are there the Chirrup Sandals for Shining Force 2, which has not been met yet, if you want to hear some silly walking sound effects, that one is twenty-seven dollars and six. And I'm sorry, fifty-nine cents away from being met. We also have uh, tomorrow morning for uh, those of us in America, at least, the Gilgamesh battles. Uh, or no, th that one's met. The fighting Neo X Death <laughs> is the one that hasn't been met. Sorry, it can be kind of hard to tell which row it's on. Uh, but most importantly, I would like to plug the final uh, or the uh, Shining Force 2 musical incentive, which only has seventy dollars out of two hundred fifty. Bowie wants to entertain you. <laughs> you should want Bowie to entertain you. So I think it, we all want that. So, we all want that. So as Got much as it. I as much as I would love to encourage you to donate for RPG Jerkbird over good taste because RPG Jerkbird is good taste. I would instead say, at least for now, donate for the Shining Force 2 musical. So can we talk about how much Hope sucks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let, let's talk about how much Hope sucks. So Hope Hope is 93% competent, right? That's the number, right? <laughs> as in he runs 93% as fast as the other characters for whatever reason. I Everyone else runs short. at the same speed. It's so stupid. Hope is slow. So that actually makes like little things like that uh, that dog cat thing. Textrons, I think. Sure, let's go with that. Um, <laughs> are actually slightly harder because they catch up to him quicker, very slightly. It's so stupid. Yeah, usually with Thextron and the similar that type of uh, enemy, you can dodge them by doing like a quick diagonal right about as they're to catch you. Uh, that has less chance of working with Hope because yeah. Hope is slow. He yep. has to do more like a juke to the right. Yeah. Yeah, with a lot of these dodges, you just sort of hope that you can dodge them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the Panthers are most of the... Uh, Thextrons are most of the tricky parts of the dodges in this chapter. Yeah, this is a... There's a number of fights in this chapter, but it's also a lot of kind of just running. <laughs> and a number of cutscenes that you get to skip, like these. That I'm sure there's some sort of story involved there, but Over yeah. Gameplay is too much fun. We don't want to <laughs> wait around for it. Something about a knife. Story about a birthday. <laughs> Worst <laughs> birthday ever. Yeah, and some story we kind of skipped in chapter four as they had an argument and split up, so. Hope decided to tag along with Lightning, because Lightning wanted to do her own thing. While Sazen, you're like, well, I guess we'll find something to do. And Hope is a young boy who truly aspires to be a murderer. So <laughs> Lightning's going to help him achieve his dream. <laughs> 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 She's already given him the weapon. Does, uh, does she give him the weapon before or after he reveals his plot against Snow? I do not remember. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in these cutscenes. <laughs> this chapter sometime. So here's another place where the camera trick is very important. Um, it's not that important. These, uh, I disagree. <laughs> so that I, that I dodge actually, is basically automatic with the camera trick and extremely difficult without it. I actually always used to dodge that without doing the camera trick. I like never had any problems. And then one day someone was just like, by the way, that dodge is like really hard without the camera trick. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then the next time I went to do it, I, I failed it like multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first time I tried to get through there, I didn't know about the camera trick and probably got walled there for five minutes. <laughs> just couldn't get past him. <laughs> Apparently ignorance serves religion, uh, religion well. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> In everything, truly. <laughs> so this is actually the first opportunity, opportunity, you get to fight with Hope as lead. Uh, there's nothing super remarkable going on here. Uh, he does have access to Fyra, but uh, Fyra is best used once the enemy is staggered. For uh, I actually forget what the effect is. It's more damage when staggered. More, more chain, chain building. Right, right. right. Uh, so typically, the base chain build of fire is 10%, and Fyra is 15%. So and costs two ATB segments. So two fires will do more than one Fyra. But when you have a staggered enemy, Fyra gets a boost and it does 25%. 
Right. It's more efficient to build up the uh, stagger and stagger the enemy before starting to launch your fires. Uh, both for the chain rate or for the chain bonus reason, like your fires are gonna do less before the enemy staggered, so there's no reason to waste them. Right. And that was a mandatory fight to open a, a little electrical gate like the one you see up ahead. And here's another one where it's mandatory. And he'll try for the preempt here, but it's not a big deal if he doesn't get it. Since he got it, he's going to do something special here. He's gonna hold off on Hope's input and deliberately doing it do it slower than he could. He wants Lightning to start her action before he staggers the enemies so that she blitzes. Otherwise, she'll go after them one at a time, and it's much slower. Yeah, the, a lot of the optimization of combat in this run is based on, like, manipulating the AI partners to do the right thing. <laughs> and so in this case, when you don't stagger the enemy, Lightning's uh, AI changes what it'll do. Maybe we should try something else. You lift. Very nice. Ah, so in this works. fight, you're going to see the first example of really stun-locking an enemy. Uh, so once the uh, Feral Behemoth is staggered, any attack will cancel any action it started and uh, prevent it from initiating an action. So by timing these waters opposite Lightning's Aqua Strikes, he's able to prevent the Feral Behemoth from attacking. The well, timing happens to work out pretty perfectly with Lightning having four ATB and Hope having, uh, there we go, and Hope having three. Yep. That was my very first damageless fight there. Very nice. Did you throw in? Uh, did you throw in a combo for also? Uh, I tried. I don't know if I got it or not. But yeah, the first attack missed Lightning, and the second attack was going to hit Lightning, but I stagger canceled it. Crawler E is best crawler. Yeah. <laughs> this fight, you deliberately don't want to stagger. Yeah. It is slower to stagger it because it takes so long for Hope to hit all ten enemies. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's also very easy to preempt. Yeah. Crawlers are not very good at noticing you. They're not quite as bad as the ghouls in the first chapter. That said, this fight is a little bit dangerous at times. It's pretty much... You need to be hitting them with the AoEs to keep right. them disrupted, so they're not attacking you quite as often. Yeah, it's not at all uncommon to die on this stupid fight with 10 crawlers. Yeah, it, it happens to me quite a bit. <laughs> I'm terrible at that fight. It's happened to me quite a bit. It almost happened there. Lightning was down to 10 HP. All right, I'm so pretty sure that was touching story right there. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> but mercifully, now we've got lightning in the lead. So I can tell it was there. touching story because there was piano at some point. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, pretty soon, actually, now that we've got lightning in the lead, we're going to see, uh, I mean, we're going to very easily see uh, an, a, a technique called comb buffering that he's yes. going to do. Uh, you want to go ahead and explain that to us? So we mentioned earlier that each of the rolls has a passive bonus. The passive bonus for Commando is to multiply your damage by double or more. Um, that's true for any rolls attacks if you are a Commando when they hit. So what Luke will do in this next uh, Feral Behemoth fight uh, is initiate some... When, when he's finished with the chain building after staggering Feral Behemoth and ready to go into Commando anyway, he's going to time that shift into Commando so that the last Ravager hit gets the Commando bonus. And that'll actually do more damage than anything else he does in the fight because uh, you're exploiting the elemental weakness on top of the comm roll level bonus. Right. It's actually a pretty simple trick to do, too. Like, you wait until she's about to execute the attack. Like, you watch her winding up to do the jump spinny thing that she does when she awkward strikes. And at that moment, you switch uh, paradigms, and she's going to get the bonus. You picked the wrong and you can actually buffer different roll bonuses that way, but uh, comb buffering is the one that you will see. Uh, most obviously, probably. I actually accidentally dodged that behemoth before and just had him run way past me out the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> Although I think we actually use more rav buffering in the run. Yeah, I think so. It's just harder to notice from a, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know we'll, what I mean. We'll point yes. out when we get there. At the very least, there'll be a lot of rav buffering in Eden Toys. <laughs> That was an interrupt. And then coming up here, watch the damage values. 
2602. Yeah, compared to the 1200 that he did with the previous attack. And, and the 1400 the there. Yep. yep. Nope, Don't not God, quitting. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a cutscene skin. <laughs> what was the last time you safety saved? Oh, safety right. saved? Safety saved? Not yet. <laughs> I was going to say something because we are playing the PC version and, uh, yeah. It's a good point. I was planning my first safety save in the Chapter 6 menu. It's really reasonable. And I mentioned the Shining Force 2 donation incentives just a little bit ago. There's one that I uh, actually didn't realize wasn't met yet, which was the push-ups incentive when they get bad RNG. And <laughs> apropos of that, we have just met it thanks to an anonymous $80 donation. The comment reads, Suffer. <laughs> Suffer. <laughs> Suffer. <laughs> that was, that so this good. dodge used to be uh, considered very tricky. And then uh, someone pointed out that if when you come up the elevator, the uh, rightmost right one from our perspective turns to face the elevator. And so you can just do what Luke just did. Shout out to Ultra. I believe that was him. Yes, that was Ultra's. Unblockable Ultra. Alternatively, that's a dodge I don't think I've ever missed. That's always one of my favorites. <laughs> People are like, that's to watch a hard thing. I'm like, really? I, okay. <laughs> so here he's decepted, and uh, he's coming up to an actually uh, not optional fight with this uh, cycle in the background that you might be able to see. Uh, so he's going to actually cancel with a Septisol in this fight. Um, be well, Is I he? don't know. Are you using a bonus there? No. Okay. Okay. I, n I don't ever know. I, I forget whatever. the order That's of fine. the Septisol usage. Me too. It's, it's <laughs> a little. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you even we'll have? We'll figure it out. Like five? 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 Yeah. Yes, we have five D sets. So I was planning on All using the them. All in Tajans are free. <laughs> True. Yeah. We yeah. Can win if we stay Two in Tajans and then one in Chapter 9 was my plan. So the Vela cycle is really, really annoying. So he's going to go for uh, Stagger on that first. Uh, he's also going to get Protect up because the Soldiers plus the Vela cycle has a decent chance of just killing him with accumulated damage. Oh, and something you'll notice here is uh, he will be alternating different uh, types of elements uh, when something is not protected against it because that uh, using a different element increases the gauge by further than just using the same element over and over again. That effect is stronger on an enemy like Nova's Velocycle, who has pretty high chain resistance. Um, they're known as conditional modifiers. Uh, in this case, the conditional modifiers are use the attack that's different from the previous and have a buff or have the enemy debuff. Uh, those ignore chain resistance. So something minor he did there was also to target the blitzes on the soldiers instead of the cycle. The cycle is the thing he wants to kill, but the blitz will do the same damage either way, and if he targets the soldiers, lightning will get in the middle of them and blitz them all. Yep. Turbo jet drop. Nice. nice. So now we're coming up on probably the first boss many people winning the speedrun have difficulty with. Yep. Including probably everyone on the couch here. <laughs> Uh, I actually didn't have too much trouble with it. But All that's right. Okay, fine. This guy. That's, <laughs> fine. that's because I had fought him, like, for 20 hours before I started, like, just doing Challenge. various learning about the uh, oh, fight okay. uh, before ever picking up the speedrun. So the goal of the strategy of this fight is to kill with Santetsuken. Yes. And the way that mechanic works... Uh, based on his chain level at the time that you use the ability, uh, there's an HP threshold, and if he's below that HP threshold, he will be instantly killed. And if he's not below that HP threshold, he'll take some puny, insignificant amount of damage. Yes. So the ba the numbers really we're talking about are about one third of his HP if he is at 999 uh, chain level when Zantetsu hits. And the thing is, Zantetsu itself increases chain level a fair bit. Yes. Especially if you have uh, Gestalt level 3 going into Gestalt mode, which Lude will be going for. Now the annoying thing is this boss has an ability called uh, Exoproof, and he's going to do one pretty soon. Right think. about now. Nope, seed or he's going to do that seed. Okay. Okay. And he's Exoproofing right. Lightning. So that was a 1 in 4 chance there of getting an element that Lightning uh, doesn't currently have the opposite for. If Astro Florian had gone to fire, Lightning doesn't know Blizzard. 
and uh, that would have made this a lot slower. He would have had to wait until it changed elements before he could uh, successfully execute the plan. Timing is really important in this fight. He just threw a couple extra ruins there, and then really needs to stagger ASAP because he needs his chain duration to be max, so that, I mean, for his stagger duration to be max. Uh, Other yeah. yeah, go ahead. Otherwise, you don't have enough time to build the chain high enough and deal enough damage to get the Zamic to you. Right. So he's going to do a bunch of dual casting here to get uh, the chain up to about 600 usually. We've got another small Roughly. optimization coming up. Uh, you notice he's been doing uh, ATB refreshes. Here, when he might have done an ATB refresh, he instead summons and then gets to do another ATB refresh. The summon gives him a full ATB bar as well. Right. And resets the ATB refresh, I believe, as well. Uh, it's typically you get it because there's been enough time passed. Right. Alright, so now that he's about at 830, he'll do Zontetsu again. That's going to boost his chain up to 999. And unless something catastrophically wrong happens, 992, uh, way uh, below. Oh no! Oh. Oh, yeah, we're good. good. <laughs> that was, it's not it a was, concern. Yeah, that was not even close to being dangerous. So, <laughs> so the Zantetsuken threshold we talked about, it's uh, proportional to the square of the chain gauge. So higher chain really matters for Zantetsuken. Right, and conversely, even a small bit below 999 makes a big difference in that HP threshold. Yep. But uh, fortunately, he, I mean, he was going to have done way more than enough damage to have that even be a concern. So that was a good fight. That's, uh, again, that's like the first really challenging fight that involves a lot of, you know, knowledge of timing and paradigm shifting and things like that uh, in order to be able to kill it effectively with the Zontetsu again. You can still sort of kind of potentially survive a tiny bit afterwards, but mm, you'll probably not die real fast. Really on that D <laughs> Double Seed Birth is lethal, and Launch and Spike is lethal. Yeah, both they're both going come to out when he's a <laughs> Yeah. Brace yourself for Saz complaints. <laughs> so this chapter is pretty much a walk in the park. You get the literally. <laughs> no, not literally. Walk in the forest. It's figuratively a walk in the park. There is a later literal walk in the park. Yeah. <laughs> this next line is my favorite line in the game. <laughs> what a great line. Saz is the king of dialogue. <laughs> We've probably got some time for uh, donations if there are any. I just want to mention before I say anything else. That don't you love how Vanille swings her arms and makes her hitbox so much larger? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we do have a couple donations. We have a $30 donation from Masa. Glad to see FF13 being run. Dispel your nostalgia, forget your expectations. FF13 is an awesome game with a 30-hour tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> donation goes to Runner's Choice. We also have a $20 donation from Iceplug. Reminder that in FF6, Kefka was going to destroy all hope, but you killed him before that happened, so it's your fault that hope is back in FF13. <laughs> Please put to naming Marcy after the greatest swordsman in all of Ivalice. Zunde. Zunde's justice sword! <laughs> Alright, so this uh, Belladonna wand is actually one of Vanille's best weapons, so what are we going to do with it? We're going to save the game. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> we're going to keep it, right? Yeah, we're we definitely it? absolutely going to sell it. Yeah, we're going to sell it. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. 18,000 kill is a lot at this point of the game. So while he's doing all this, uh, another thing to note that he sold here is uh, credit chips. Uh, so there's two items that can drop from soldiers in the game, credit chips and incentive chips. Uh, I think incentive chips are only available later on, right? Yes. Uh, but credit chips sell for 500 gil and incentive chips for 2,500, and they'll be a pretty important source of gil later on. Uh, in fact, even now, like, every little bit really, really helps. Uh, otherwise, if he comes up short on credit chips and incentive chips, he may have to sell stuff like Phoenix Downs. And although, like, ideally you're never going to need a Phoenix Down, you're going to need a Phoenix Down. <laughs> it's, they're nice to have. Yep. I managed to get away with uh, keeping three Phoenix Downs, which is nice. So otherwise, this chapter is mostly just uh, dodging enemies. Uh, obviously, he did a menu there, and then he's also going to pick up uh, 
sorry, an upgrade there. And then he's going to pick up a Doctor's Toad in a little bit, and then he'll do a menu to uh, change up his paradigms a little bit, uh, set up for the only fight in this chapter, which is the boss. And uh, also, you know, equip things. <laughs> Man, my brain just, I don't know where it went right then. <laughs> I'd also, also like to. Again? Uh, I'll just this dodge sucks. There you go. <laughs> also, quick reminder that the Yeti is offering shirts for our event. Again, as usual, uh, they are donating three dollars for each shirt sale directly to Nami. Uh, if you want to check that out, go to theyeti.com/rpglimitbreak. That is the Yeti Y E T E E dot com slash RPG Limit Break. Also, RPG Jerkbird shirt. I'm getting one. <laughs> so generally, the point of these menus is to kind of get uh, specific abilities that we really want to have at any given time, and then uh, with whatever CP we have left over, uh, Crystarian points, the very originally named thing, uh, get some stat boost that will be helpful. Uh, it has to be like enough of a stat boost to really be worth the extra time spend. Um, so in that case, he really wanted Saz to have uh, and Water and in Thunder, so he went and picked those up from the Synergist roll. Uh, and those are going to come in very, very handy on the uh, boss coming up. Do you want to explain some about that, Tyrannus? Uh So the other thing he picked up was Poison for Vanille, oh, which yes. also will be very important for the boss coming up. So this is uh, th these are the first enemies... Um, where you're going to see uh, end spells and commando working together to really stack the damage against uh, uh, enemies with elemental weaknesses. Uh, so you saw a little bit of that with the Ravager strike buffered into commando. Uh, but by casting an end spell, uh, Saz can make all of the character's non-elemental attacks take on an element. Uh, so, say, attack and ruin. And then you just naturally get the commando roll bonus and the double damage from elements stacked on top of each other. Uh, poison's important because uh, it helps with disruption. We'll get into that when we're actually in the fight. Uh, and then it, you I'm throw sorry. On it also does quite a bit of damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you throw on bravery and deep protect, and it just starts getting out of control. Oh, yes. We will be using deep protect as well here. I yeah. don't remember if the current strat uses bravery that's been in and out of the strategy over the years it's bravery is not Thank yeah you. only if we have absurd amounts of fortisols basically mm. but of all the bonus shrouds fortisol is just one of them yep yeah that'll that'll go to good use elsewhere i have never seen those break that way that's sort of a, so before I ran into that dodge, I sort of ran to the side, which is sort of inefficient running, because normally you want to like run from corner to corner for optimal paths. But by running to the side a little bit, it induces that those, those uh, gremlins to sort of dance a little bit more and separate to create the opening I need to run through. I've never actually been able to get that to work. So poison in this yeah. game is actually much stronger than it uh, is in most RPGs. It deals 1% of maximum enemy HP per three seconds. Uh, so the higher the enemy HP, the more effective poison is. But ultimately, it will kill anything from full to dead in 300 seconds, All right. which is pretty nice. Doesn't it also have a uh, additional effect of making uh, stagger maintenance things more effective? Um, so there's no nothing there. I mean, like any saboteur ability, successfully inflicting poison carries a large right. generation bonus. Um, the what we're going to exploit in the fight coming up is the rather long delay between poison the spell connecting and poison the status inflicting successfully or not. Um, when fighting enemies who are very vulnerable to a status effect, uh, saboteurs build chain almost as well as ravagers because each successful infliction counts as a second hit. Um, saboteur spells do a little less than half of the chain as ravager spells, so double, uh, doubling that chain puts you pretty close in the ballpark.
By the way, if you hear like a quiet humming coming from somewhere, that's me. I can't help it. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's hard this, not to. This is one of the best tracks in the game, I think. Certainly one of the most hummable. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Now we've opened the floodgates. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of the commentary for the entire run will just be us <laughs> humming along. <laughs> and saying 54. <laughs> and a trap. Thanks, Daniel. In peril. Ah. Oh. These dodges haven't been kind. Yeah, these two dodges are, are actually fairly annoying. Um, yes. They're in a very tight space, and they're right next to one another. These are two separate dodges. All right, there we go. And now we get can't catch a break. <laughs> Which makes sense, because I know one of his lines is here is something like, oh, we can't catch a break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, something smells fishy, apparently. <laughs> so Libra Scorp is very important here to reveal the enemy weaknesses so that Saz will actually cast the end spells. And that was some very nice initial debuff luck. It's worth noting that Libra Scope, uh, when used, will Libra all the enemies in the battle. Yes. Whereas Libra usage, the ability or the technique, will only get the one that you target. Libra Scope also reveals all of the enemy info. Libra by itself only reveals about. Half. Of course, the trade-off being that Libra Scopes are far less plentiful. Yes. So here you're going to see him do these three poisons. And then they will start inflicting successfully. And oh, one of this one. It was fine. It was the middle one. Whoa. Yep. It's so the least good. important one. Yep. Oh, that wasn't easy. Uh, really? Uh -oh. Trying to. Oh, okay. Ooh. Well, that I, was what we were trying to. I avoid. disagree. <laughs> Should be okay. Should be okay. All right. Now that I've potioned, I should be fine unless he does. Not oh, that. That's geez. that's not the thing I was worried about. I was <laughs> I was worried about the slam. Okay. So once. Uh, and he is taken out, and Lil becomes a lot more aggressive. He will attack like way more often. So you just need to be prepared for that and potion aggressively. Yes. But otherwise, this strategy will be identical. Well, you'll notice we're <laughs> using and water instead of and thunder. Also, he's going to try not to get a bellow this time. Yes. <laughs> hey, I tried last time. For the record. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the, the basic premise here is he uses the poisons to really draw out the amount of uh, interruption that Vanille gets, and that gives him time. Gives time for Sass to recharge his ATB. And then he can ATB refresh, and Sass will... Uh, and with that particular up. timing of the ATB refresh, he gets Sass to skip what we call the ready animation, where, and so Sass just immediately attacks out of the ATV refresh instead of spinning his guns around, resetting his stance, and then attacking. Again, another op uh, another instance where you really want to de-equip your accessories, and I always forget. Now that <laughs> one is the more important one because we yes. upgraded the power wristband. I don't have enough gil to purchase another power wristband and further upgrade it. Um, and I forgot to do that in one of the very recent runs for the first time, and I subsequently lost three minutes in this next chapter. Oof. Yeah, those items, yeah. especially the upgraded items, are super important. Uh, so we talked earlier about oh, no. how in the Cresarium we're mostly caring about specific abilities um, and also roll levels, accessory expansions, not so much about stats. Uh, we're going to make up for the offensive stats by upgrading weapons and accessories. Um, I think right now we're maybe a little bit ahead of where in casual play you would be with stats without upgrading. Um, but towards the end of the game, we'll be right around casual level for our offensive stats. Defensive stats are another story. <laughs> hit points are going to be extremely low. You don't need hit points. You got potions. It's fine. <laughs> and <Absolutely. renew. laughs> Yeah, renew is, of course, a lot more important later on. And the only hit point that matters is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to survive, you got to keep your hit points above zero. Two is sufficient, as recently was proved. <laughs> <laughs> so chapter seven is uh, another pretty lengthy chapter. 
Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here, story-wise and combat-wise. Uh, and we're going to fight one boss three times. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, if you count, if you yes. count the second yeah. one as okay. an actual Fair thing. <laughs> and the second one is probably one that many people will like anyway. I, I will very much enjoy it. Yes. But we won't spoil it. So coming into this zone, uh, there's actually some timing with the platforms. Uh, Lude runs, does his, does his runs efficiently and gets his dodges timed. Uh, he can get some nice timing with these platforms uh, that he's going to be riding. We do have a couple donations right now. We have an anonymous $5 donation. I'll donate more when I get paid on Friday, but for now, just wanted to say I'm super excited to see how fast you can shuffle down a hallway. We also have a $30 donation from MMMB2008. Wait a second. That guy isn't Lude Dolphin. That guy's a phony. A big, fat phony. Hey, everyone. This guy is a phony. At least he isn't running around playing yakety sax. <laughs> That is actually an inside joke from high school, of all places. Wow. <laughs> Not sure who that person is, but thank, thank you. <laughs> These early dodges have been easy. Uh, the dodges coming out of this cutscene. A little trickier. Oh man, we're gonna see the best enemy in the game. The Flanator. The, the Flanator. Flanator. Oh my gosh, what a, whoever came up with this idea. <laughs> or as Sarah yes, calls them, flaninators. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. <laughs> the intended name was Flaninator because it's a play off of Janitor, but sure, Flaninator. So with that uh, dodge successfully executed, he barely has to wait for that platform. If he misses that dodge, he has to call the platform. And you saw how much slower that was at the beginning of the uh, section. This is once again another case of tight corridors making things much more difficult. Yes. Did you say corridors? You mean like hallways? Ha like hallways. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I prefer corridors. Hallways can be misconstrued and Well, I think, I think the called. distinction in my, in my mind is that the hallways have more, you know, linear <laughs> <laughs> boundaries. Connotations, yes. So missing that dodge once is still okay for the platform timing. Actually, I feel like the cut the platform resets after the cutscene, but that's my suspicion. Hmm. Possible. Well, we can hope so, since you've now missed this one twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that is actually really We're going to try something slightly different, since they're not cooperating, and lure them a little bit, which hopefully works. Uh, surprise. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Got the surprise planet over there. So that was our third failed dodge, which means... Deceptisol time. Deceptisol time. Just, just to use one. Don't even cancel it. You still have like a million. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> All right, pass the battle time. So I don't know if anyone's been keeping track of the failed dodge count, but I'm sure D Sharper has. I heard a number. I think it sounded like 23. 23. All right. I don't normally count decept cancels as failed dodges unless they were unintentional, and that was an unintentional decept cancel. So that was a set of four. <laughs> and I just have to say here from chat, Mr. Swansig says, You are getting flaninated. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, he did. Oh, man. Come well, with me if you want to clean. Flaninate, <laughs> flaninate. <laughs> And that does look like the right platform timing if it reset at the cutscene. Oh man, we got a really cool fight coming up. Huh? So uh, this fight... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. This fight is much more difficult on PC than it is on console. Uh, something about uh, Eidolon Gestalt hitboxes works differently on PC. Uh, all you have to do is stagger the Orion and then use Diamond Dust. But you have to do this specific sequence of moves to actually guarantee staggering the Orion on PC. 
On uh, console, you can pretty much just mash X and any sequence of moves practically will stagger. Yeah, the stadium's surrounded by ice tracks. Is that some kind of elite power? <laughs> Wait for it. No, we're, we're waiting. Waiting, I should have said that a little bit later, but yeah. yeah. I got an incentive chip there, which is nice. I'm hoping to get two incentive chips. And at least one Phoenix down also. This yeah. game has great dialogue. Got the Phoenix down too. Listen closely. Listen. Is that some kind of power? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, man, who could possibly conceive of Ice Tracks? Ah, oh, what, <laughs> what a great character. That is Mr. Zwanzig's favorite line. So, meanwhile, catching up on the story, uh, Hope is currently stalking his uh, assassination target. <laughs> while also, for some reason, being in the same party as him. I don't know either. Well, they got separated from Fang and Lightning because soldiers invaded um, the reunion. Who's that? Uh, well, we'll find out in about two minutes. Some random girl. -ish. Some name that I've never heard before. Because we've been skipping the cutscenes. We ask the same thing, Hope, all the time. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> I'm just waiting for the right moment to place this knife in your back. <laughs> and we're gonna call it an operation because it sounds better. Operation: Place this knife in your back. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, it sounds like much less horrifying and murderous. So a story is happening. Yeah. Yep. So this hey, is I'm Fang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fang now. Alright, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, so we're gonna run around with Fang for a little bit. Here's a dodge I almost got, except that was too far forward. Oops. So let's do that again. All right. All right. We hope that was Fang. This, uh, <laughs> time with Fang. <laughs> Fang actually, uh, like Lightning, Fang has a pretty like narrow hitbox, so it's actually a really nice aspect of having her as lead. Yes. Especially compared to Vanille and Snow. And now we're back to our regularly scheduled snow stocking. Right. <laughs> Here goes my knife in your back. How about that? That's my contribution. Thank you. That's good. One of the few chests will actually go a little way out of our way to grab. Uh, this uh, three incentive chests, I believe. Two? Two? two. It's only two. 50,000, or sorry, 5,000. <laughs> 50,000. I just like to, you know, multiply everything, make it a, sound a little better. 50,000 tenth gills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after all, that is how you do combat best in this game, is just multiply everything <laughs> together until you hit the damage gap. That's right. <laughs> just call it 11 D billion and call it good. <laughs> But yeah, most of what he's picking up otherwise is uh, items to sell. He picked up the uh, what the warding talisman earlier, and he's got the guardian amulet here. Uh, neither of which he intends to use. He's just getting them to sell. Very attentive soldiers there. I know that. What? What? Oh, he just ran by. Yeah, I know that when I'm like assigned to monitor an area, I just kind of wander around aimlessly, staring in random directions. That's definitely the. Oh, he ran more than 10 meters away from me. I should just give really up now. <laughs> Lude run ba uh, backward there, partly to get, let the uh, soldiers there get a little bit further away from the wall, but also in part so that if they happen to catch him, he wouldn't be caught ba or sent back to that previous area. This is Blinded by Light. Yeah, welcome to the Blinded by Light section of this area. <laughs> Time's a wasting. Maybe that's why his plan failed. He was too blinded by light. Thank you for okay. visiting the Blinded by Light section <laughs> of this area. <laughs> so now there's this We're track. Not continuing on to whatever this track is called. Yeah, Hold right. on to hope. <laughs> yeah, right. That's my favorite hey, lane of the game. Yeah, wait up. Guy who's behind <laughs> me. <laughs> All right, good. 
I think there's an item here I'm supposed to pick up, but I can't remember. No, you're good. You just continue onwards. Okay. Actually, no, I'll just grab this one. All right, now I'm going to carry on. Actually, no, one second thought, I'm going to go gra grab this. I just have an inkling that there's something in here. Like, it's useful. What is it called again? All right. Oh, oh, that's probably trash. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Should probably just get rid of that, like, some random shop somewhere. Yeah, yeah sell it for, like, a couple thousand gil. You know, you might need it. Something around here. <laughs> Hi, bike. I did not know that you could dodge it on that ramp. <laughs> Uh, that was a bit YOLO, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't know you could dodge it on that ramp. <laughs> I didn't know you could dodge it on that one. No I thought that was just, like, strats, and then, no, it's just a lewd. It just happened. Don't worry about it. I mean, 90% of lewd is just wacky. This is not going to work, and then it does strats. And the other 10% is wacky. This is not going to work, and then it doesn't strats. <laughs> Yeah, all these enemies are because there's, you know, cyclers that are really fast and the troopers, which are pretty fast. Uh, and you only have, like, two feet to dodge in. Yeah, so the sub cancel, much easier. We'll just say the bikes are doing the speed run correctly by going really fast. And I wish we could steal one. So we're going to do a bunch of upgrading here right after he does this to sub cancel. Uh, I think he's going to upgrade Fang's weapon? Nope, not anymore. Oh, snap. That's Snow's a, weapon. My Snow's old, weapon, yeah. Yeah, yep. that's right. My old route knowledge there. So the biggest change, there have been many, many changes in the route uh, over the last few years. But the biggest change is the switch from what was known as Fang Route to what is now known as Snow Route. Uh, as the names imply, this involves using Snow instead of Fang for most of the second half of the game. Basically, just search and replace every instance of Fang with Snow. No, not yeah, right. totally. Works exactly like that. More or less. <laughs> a few minor tweaks to strategy here or there. Yeah, there's a couple reasons for that change. and uh, I mean, it's super complex overall why that change was made, but uh, kind of the gist of it is Snow as a Ravager uh, is ridiculously good. His uh, animations are just so fast compared to, like, it, that alone just makes such a big difference compared to anything Fang brings to the table. And when we're saying he's good as a Ravager, we're referring to the Ravager's primary job of quickly building the chain up. He's not as good as someone like Hope or Vanille at dealing damage from the Ravager role, but that's a very minor concern in the speedrun. So, so here is the first of three Ashamgul subjugators. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see this guy a couple times. And you'll notice that Hope's looking pretty pathetic at 310 hit points. We could have him at more hit points, but... He sucks. Nah. Yeah. It's fine. He's not useful for anything. Thanks, partner. It's all about teamwork. So actually what uh, Loot is primarily going for here in this fight, well, apparently getting a little... There it is. Over there we go. <laughs> he wanted to summon cancel that attack, which just means that he summons while that attack is happening and that just prevents Snow from taking damage from it. Uh, Hope died, but who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Summons have a number of defensive benefits. Uh, among them are the invincibility frames when you summon and the invincibility frames when you go Gestalt. Uh, we won't be seeing Gestalt in this battle, though. Yeah, there's no need. No. What he wanted was the stagger, and now that he's got the stagger, he has enough chain that uh, Snow can finish it off pretty easily. And once again, we're doing the idea of always shifting in the air to never have to do the long animation. So, suddenly, <laughs> hope. It's been real. Maybe. <laughs> there he is. Hey. He was there all along. <laughs> Great. He's been fun. So that uh, sort of like a, I don't know what to call it, it looked like nothing was happening it was because I killed him while Shiva was being dismissed. So the game waits for Shiva to fully dismiss before uh, doing anything else. By the way, s story just happened. Uh, Snow died. Very, very touching. Basically, story. Michael Bay. <laughs> 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 Accurate. <laughs> I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of the artists who contributed to our event. 
LLK and Carry Fry are responsible for most, if not all, of our sub emotes. I'd have to double check on that. Uh, 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 Carry Fry also designed the RPG Limit Break logo and some of our promo banners. You can check out her work at carryfry.com. That's K A R I F R Y.com. And LLK. Uh, also designed some of our promo banners. You can check out her work at jazaboo.com. J-A-Z-A-A-B-O-O.com. And our layouts were designed by Orolen and Namix. Orolen, you can uh, follow him at Twitter, at Orolen, O-U-R. Uh, yes, I was, I was spelling that correctly. O-U-R-O-L-E-N. Uh, his Twitch is the same. And Namix at uh, at Namix SRL and A M U X SRL and his uh, <laughs> just boosting that yeah. uh, failed dodge count. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was I, about. <laughs> if I had known that was going to happen, I might have chosen a different moment to <laughs> start that uh, start <laughs> that plug. Anyway, uh, it's uh, there we go. Namix SRL, like I said, for the. Uh, Twitter and Namix just for the Twitch. Yeah, so those two Orions at the end operate slightly differently on PC, making the dodge slightly harder. Sure. I can get it probably Why about not? half the time. <laughs> yeah, we'll call the it. The other half the time is because PC, of course. <laughs> on console, you, you camera trick that dodge and it's basically free. So we're going to become friends with our friend. The Shimgal Subjugator again, yes. pretty shortly. Um, and we're going to have to, of course, fight him with the best character, Solo, Hope. Yeah. And the Shimgal Subjugator is going to do us all a favor. Agreed. Oh, um. It's going to be a long, tense fight. Some <laughs> really challenging moments. I believe. We got this, dude. I think it's hopeless. <laughs> All right, so first, <laughs> first I'm going to shift be. to uh, Synergist. Oops, that's not Synergist. Well, I'll still Libra. And then I'm going to shift to Synergist. And then, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, he died. Uh, well. Oh, no, that was intended. <laughs> now so we have the proper party. <laughs> this is what we want. All right, there we go. Uh, so we actually left Hope weak specifically to make that fight go faster. So now we're going to, uh, as it turns out, if you retry from the third fight against the Subjugator, uh, it puts you before the third fight again. So you don't have to redo, redo that hope thing. And you get access to the menu with the new party. So you can set up your paradigms. You can do some Crystarium. And uh, as it turns out, this is much faster than just trying to do the fight without retrying. Uh, this is one of several fights where the game generates a set group of paradigms. And um, like with, I think, every instance of that, the paradigms it gives you are not particularly <laughs> good <laughs> for the fight. Well, you're, it, they're dependent on like your character's stats and role growth and things like that. Mm. Um, not at this point. Oh, man. That, that's uh, totally wrong. That's true for other areas where it pre-generates paradigms, but uh, for the Ushimgal Subjugator fight, it's actually specific paradigms regardless of your development. See, I really like sitting next to Tyrannus doing commentary here because <laughs> I'm learning so much about this game that hopefully one day I will even be able to speak on again. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Tyrannus is like a walking encyclopedia of this game. If you ever see him posting on a message board or on a Reddit thread or on a Steam thread, basically he knows what he's talking about. Usually. This guy. I, I was just saying earlier today, I may seem like I know everything off the top of my head, but I actually don't. I know a lot of it, and I know where to find it. He knows where to find it. That's the important part. That is. So this fight is uh, one of a couple fights where you cannot really feasibly kill him in one stagger. Uh, you just don't have enough damage to really do that. Uh, so we're going to go for two, uh, which is really straightforward. And uh, we're going to do a fair amount of damage with Fang here, but it'll, the bulk of the damage in this fight is actually coming from the Thundaras, from Lightning, and to a lesser extent, Hope. Lightning gets to double Thundara, and 
You know, might have noticed there that Lou Dolphin timed that shift, so he got four Thundars in a row from Lightning. Uh, he'll be doing that throughout the staggers. I believe this is the first point in the run where you see someone actually get launched as well. Yep. So we should probably talk about that mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's fine. We're no, good. I just wanted to mention that. That was a <laughs> combo for that you can't really see uh, since mm. the camera was <laughs> angled away. That was apparently not a smite. Yeah, not a smite, but the combo for makes up for that. Yeah, it's all good. Um, okay, so uh, launching, um, you can do to any enemy with uh, an attack that has rise as long as you are able to disrupt them. The specific mechanics are cut and keep. Uh, probably won't go too much detail with that. Um, so when you have an enemy staggered, commando attacks uh, get an auto ability to change into launch as long as you've learned that auto ability, which adds rise 10, uh, or basically almost as high as you can get an enemy. Um, later in the game, we'll have some other attacks with rise and occasionally uh, get things into the air without using the launch ability. I don't remember if the speedrun actually has any enemies getting launched into the air without being staggered. Offhand, I can't think of any. I can't think of any. Yeah, yeah. I can't either. But yeah, so launch is pretty useful, especially because, like, the Shingon Subjugator, even when staggered, will, like, he's not helpless like post work soldiers or whatever earlier. Uh, he will do a lot of really damaging attacks and just waste your time. You'll have to heal. Um, but by making sure he's launched, you uh, pretty much have an easy time of it. Yep. Uninterrupted attacking time is good. Now there's probably some sort of tender moment happening because I heard piano. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Definitely something. Yeah. So we mentioned smite there. That's actually one of the fights where we're most likely to see a smite or scourge. Uh, these are special attacks that only occur at the end of stagger, and they give you a five times multiplier. So they basically pack an entire ATB gauge worth of attacks into one attack until you hit the damage cap. Yeah, it can be somewhat difficult to time because it doesn't stop the ATB from running out. But in that case, it, it wasn't. It'll speed things up a little bit. Yep. And here we're going to use Odin again. We're going to try to use Odin. He's going to Kiraga now, because Lightning's in yellow. Lou's just trying to get a little bit of chain duration on all the enemies here. Uh, if he can get that done, then he'll be able to use the stop mode. To kill yellow again, so he's going to Kiraga again. But I'm just going to do this. So he's just going to Thunderfall until they all stagger. Um, Thunderfall doesn't build the duration, so you have to have duration going into this to make this work. But it'll keep the duration pretty well. Because technically, that's not true. Thunderfall only builds duration on the enemy you target. Right. Sometimes I'll try to change targets to select a target that I know doesn't really have much chain duration, but sometimes in the act of doing that, Odin tries to turn around, and the process of turning around well makes that target lose chain duration, which sucks. Mm. Yeah, there are a number of fights where we use a strat where we try to get Odin to uh, build chain, or not build chain, well, yeah, yeah. build chain level not chain duration, on a number of targets simultaneously using Thunderfall. And uh, it can be pretty dicey sometimes depending on the system chain duration, so yep. you should be attentive to that. It's not uh, it's not going to cause him to lose the fight if he doesn't kill them all with Nantasukin, just, you know, cost a few extra seconds as he kills the sole remaining enemy. Yeah. So this next fight coming up is pretty cool. Uh, he's doing this quick little fight here, too, so he can open a door, basically. It won't let him open the door because it's... And also to get access to a particular... Credit. Also to get access to a good accessory uh, called the Brawler's... Brawler's Wristband? Yep. Yeah, which is basically an upgraded version of the Warrior's Wristbands that he's been using. Power Wristbands. Power Wristbands. Yeah. Warrior's comes later. Warrior's is later, yeah. <laughs> They're uh, all the same. And actually, at level one, the Brawler's Wristband is only 50 strength, while a fully upgraded Power Wristband is 60. So... But it quickly outpaces it as you get a chance to upgrade it. And th that's especially important for this next fight because you actually get to see Lightning use her gun blade as a gun. This is the only time in the <laughs> run you'll see that. The only, well, 
not do counting four attacks. isolated yeah, single true. shots. <laughs> <laughs> I literally don't even notice those. <laughs> Uh, but this is the only time in the game that you can see this. So it's not just in the speed run. Yeah. So for whatever reason, they set the game up so that lightning could actually do something, because we are fighting a giant flying airship. Lightning's gun is really fast. Yeah. We really wish we could use this animation like all the time, everywhere. So just there, he used the potion to cancel the uh, launch that would have occurred on lightning from the main cannon attack. Uh, it's just going to do chains repeatedly on the various side targets of the uh, stat tank here, one by one to kill them off. And he'll get a tier refreshes, he'll alter between tireless charge and uh, the other one. In between yeah, the haste and bravery from the Fort Assault, the boosted stats from the equipment upgrades, and the insane attacking speed. These parts go down fast. Yep, yep. each one of these parts reduces the hit points of the main body by 20%. And then once they're all dead, it will shift forms and be much easier to stagger. And what he did just there, he was targeting the main body to make Fang cast her ruins at the party he was trying to kill. And then when a Lightning's ATB was full, he switched back to that target. So he got both commanders to the same target. I had something we haven't mentioned, actually. Uh, when you have mul the way the AI is set up in the game, when you have multiple characters in a commander role, or, yeah, commando role, they will attempt to target different uh, things on the battlefield if yeah. there are more than one thing. And well, will yeah. 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 Well, be, uh, yes, yeah, later exploiting on. that. Super we important. Yeah. Definitely will be exploiting that. And then, in uh, contrast, Ravagers will actually try to attack the same thing that your party leader is targeting. So once the uh, Sky Take opens up its cannon, it can be staggered. And once it's staggered, it dies pretty quick. All right, see ya. And that's chapter seven. Now for yet another really short uh, Saws of Neil chapter. And literally a walk in the park, <laughs> as you said earlier. And while you're taking that relaxing walk in the <laughs> park, we have a few new, do do uh, new donations <coughs> here. First off, we have a $30 donation from Daragon. Since the couch likes to hum along, can we make Final Fantasy XIII karaoke a new incentive? <laughs> and I'm not sure, do you actually want that? <laughs> We also have a $10 donation from, from Takaze. RPG limit break. Is that some kind of Lissi power? <laughs> <laughs> There's also a $30 donation, anonymous one. Bang! Another $30 donation, this one from Values. To Lude. I'm glad me and Takasu could assist on your PC practice and world record attempts, Kappa. Good luck on the run. When is Plat present? <laughs> <laughs> so technically, I guess it is a Lissy power, because when Lissy can summon things, and when they summon things, the Eidolons using their ultimates can break damage limits. And this is an RPG, so yes, it is a Lissy power. <laughs> <laughs> RPG limit break. That's yeah. It. Yeah. <sighs> And then we have an $8.50 donation from Kaio's Little Monster. Hi guys, Kaio's back again, donating for a new PB time. Wanted to shout out again, Nitrodon and Alec K, Team Smooth Boys, Freddy, D Sharper, and the rest of the amazing FF community. You all are one of, if not the best community out there. Keep up the amazing work. RPG Dino hype! You know, I, I'm inclined to agree, but I don't know about that Alec K guy. He sounds kind of like a... Um, I don't know. I'm I'm just not sure about him. He sounds creepy. Yeah, probably. <laughs> like he couldn't make up his mind whether he should be Alec or Alec, so he went with both. <laughs> well, no. I, I, I'd imagine that his parents made that choice for him, so. <laughs> anyway, I'd also like to uh, remind everyone that there are some donation incentives coming up for the next run. Uh, once this will refresh, I'll actually have the... Meanwhile, we're going to hunt down numbers. a baby chocobo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mini games. 
Uh, the most pressing one, I would say, uh, now that Chirrup Sandals has actually been met, is the Shining Force 2 musical, which has gotten a few donations since I last mentioned it. It is now up to $108.50 out of $250. Now, I might remind you that Bowie, the hero, one of the runners of Shining Force 2, has a background in theater. He is offering to sing to you. Do you want to hear his silky smooth singing voice? I'm sure you do. If so, I highly encourage you to donate to that incentive. It's a much better incentive than FF13 karaoke, I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, especially since Fair. I don't think most of us know all the lyrics to the songs we'd be trying to sing. And I would just be terribly off pitch. It would be a lot of humming. <laughs> Mostly humming. So we just got probably one of the best abilities in the game for damage. And that is Saz's Blitz. Yes. Uh... We will be showing why very shortly. Saz's Blitz is a special snowflake. It's <laughs> different from all of the other Blitzes. Uh, it fires seven bullets in a cone, and those bullets can all hit the same target if that target happens to be close or large enough. Uh, if all seven bullets are hitting, it's doing more damage than two attacks would. Or sorry, more damage than four attacks would. So you're getting double the damage out of your ATB segments. Oh, sorry. Just remember, if we surrender, they'll kill us. Never surrender. Never give up. <laughs> Never or surrender. Or if they don't kill us, then we didn't surrender. We fight this fight because the item it's guarding sells for quite a few gills. Yep. We used to fight a different fight in this same section with five of these guys that got an item that sells for more gills, but we don't need that much gill. And, and that was Taz's Blitz. And that's Blitz. Yeah, he waited until <coughs> the enemy was right in front of him so all the bullets had. If you missed it, don't worry. We still have the rest of the run. Yep. You will be seeing a lot of blitzing. So this is the dodge of chapter eight. <laughs> the one that is All hard. right, we're we done with success. the dodge of Good chapter job. eight. <laughs> that dodge is quite tricky. And I am known for failing it like five times. <laughs> it's one of the few dodges where I have a better record than Luke Dolphin. Yeah, I just never figured it out. It has something to do with how they're positioned and where they're looking, but no matter what, I fail it, except for today. So Midlight Reaper is naturally weak to ice, and you see the end frost on Saz to exploit that. We're also looking for deep protect and poison from Vanille. Unfortunately, Midlight Reaper has very high status ailment resistances, so it's more random than normal uh, to actually get these debuffs. Um, most of the enemies there we've seen is. so far, nice. very nice. Most of the enemies we've seen so far, when you get them staggered, you've basically got a 100% chance. You've exceeded 100% on the status infliction. That is not true with Midnight Reaper. Still trying to get poison, because it's... I like it, especially because I'm unlikely to kill him in the single stagger. So the poison will keep acting after stagger ends. Since it's percentage based, uh, the chain, whether it's staggered or not, doesn't matter. It's still doing the same thing. Yep. Alright, so I didn't successfully kill him in that stacker, but I'm still gonna stay in Comrav and just spam Blitz until we win. Poison's doing damage, and Sass's Blitz remains doing damage. Probably could have gotten away with a single attack there, but. 
even without the chain bonus, the combination of bravery, deep protect, and uh, the end spell exploiting a weakness is about five five hundred and twenty eight percent damage, I believe. So that's the same as having none of that and having a five hundred and twenty eight percent chain. So next up is Brunhilder, who is an interesting fight. Yes, we will be exploiting some things that we've mentioned in passing earlier on. Um, so uh, we mentioned that being a leader, pretty much anything you do helps build Gestalt. Uh, when you build Chain as the leader only in the Commando role, you get a large bonus to the Gestalt that you build because the Commando role isn't expected to build very much Chain. Uh, we also mentioned earlier using a different attack and targeting a... Um, Using a different attack can be part of a conditional modifier. Uh, with Enfrost on, we can target a weakness, which is a pretty large conditional modifier. And by putting that on seven hits of Blitz, we get seven instant well, potentially seven instances of Brint Elder moves closely, uh, of a conditional modifier that's getting multiplied by the Commando Gestalt bonus. And watch the Gestalt go up here. Well, you can't. Oh, well, okay, you shift away. Trust us, it went up a lot. But you can see that it just got like a third of the bar from that one attack. No stopping us. Unfortunately, Brynhildr's backed away, so... Yeah, it's stay. pretty random what Brynhildr can do. I try to make sure my Blitzes hit while Vanilla's a Ravager for her ally bonus. For a little bit of extra. Yep. Still a decent fight. If Brynhildr had stuck up close, that would have been a very good fight. And that's chapter 8. Now we have some more story. Lots of story. Little Suddenly we're on a ship. Yeah, the Lindblom, I believe. Yeah. A little, little bit of time for a donation if we have them. Guess not. Huh? Okay, well, <laughs> more story. <laughs> Whoops, no, I'm not ready to depart. No, I'm not ready to depart. No, I'm not ready to depart. There we go. Now I'm ready. <laughs> now we're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> that was uh, RNG manipulation. Yes, three no's and a yes. Yes. Definitely RNG manipulation. <laughs> really not good manipulation. <laughs> if there is a way to manipulate the RNG in this game, we do not know it. Now finally our whole party is together. I believe. No, we no. Uh, don't currently have Saz and Neil. Oh, oh right. The other four. So I'm we've jumped got ahead of the some of the party together. together. <laughs> this is where the game really starts picking up, though. Yes. Yeah. And this is the same strategy uh, as that fight. <sighs> oh. I didn't want to switch targets because that was going to make him lose chain. So I'm just going to do the best I can, which probably won't be enough. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be enough. These, these raiders pretty much need to be staggered when you initiate Zantitsuken in order to kill them. Staggering during Z Zantitsuken isn't good enough. Oh, yes! <laughs> Usually. <Next> time. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> but he got it. Because of the thunderfall damage. Yep. And two incentive, two chips. incentive chips. Nice. So I'm good on kill. Yep. I want at least two incentive chips before the next shop in order to be able to fund it. If I'm short, then I have to do something else, which is slower. Uh, what am I doing? I want that. There we go. And this entire run, up until about midway through chapter 11, is pretty tight up too. A quick right. reminder that during this game, we do have some prizes if you donate. If you donate uh, $10, you will be in the running for the Final Fantasy Bomb Perler, the German Final Fantasy IX Strategy Guide, Yavol. And uh, $5 donations will get you in for a Steam key of Final Fantasy 13 or either an Xbox 360 or a PS3 version of those of the game. So if you do want to donate for Shining Force, you get a little bit of a perk. Let's get this over with. For those Shining Force uh, donation incentives, I mean. <laughs> It's not that we have better paradigms set up than were handed to us at the start of the chapter. Uh, it's more efficient to fight with the party than with Odin. 
Uh, we couldn't summon, we don't have enough TP, but even if we could, we would still do this fight with uh, the party. And this is uh, taking advantage of the commandos targeting different things to kill them really efficiently. Yeah, the initial Psycom Infiltrator we targeted, uh, Fang managed to kill while we were focusing on the second Psycom Infiltrator. Easy. We have a few donations here. We have a $1 donation from Arthelinus. Just says, holler at my boys. <laughs> we also have an anonymous $30 donation. It says, Bowie has the voice of an angel. A $10 donation from Jetstorm4. Most interesting run of a corridor simulator I have ever seen. Awesome marathon so far. RPGs have always been my favorite games, and it's good to see them broken down so quickly. Now I want to hear some more singing in Shining Force 2. Finally, we have a $10 donation from Frizzy, or Frizza. I'm not actually sure whether uh should be using English or German pronunciation. But either way, the donation comment is, there's a non-zero chance that this streak will cause me to lose my job before the weekend is over because I'm staying up all night to watch amazing runs. Still, if the money raised helps people dealing with mental illness, I guess that's okay. I can always get another job, right? Money goes to the good ending for Chrono Cross because a complicated game means a confusing ending. Also, the song that plays over it is truly beautiful. Yeah, I was not going to get that. So missing that dodge is a PC difference. On console, that dodge is free. Mm -hmm. Luckily, this retry is pretty consistent on PC. So it's not worth doing a Deceptive Saw cancel. You're just uh, always having to retry the fight instead of sometimes having to retry the fight. Uh, same is true of the last dodge in this outside section. Oh, good. Got it. First try. Wow. Very nice. They were nice. Is this real life? <laughs> I think it might be. Uh, I think it's a Final <laughs> Fantasy, Fantasy, actually. <laughs> Fortunately, there are no landslides around. And now we have the awesome Siren of Doom. Luckily, we won't be in this section for too long. <laughs> Amazingly attentive soldiers. <laughs> Meanwhile, the story is, well, not really the story, but the running gag of the chapter is that they keep changing the color of the alarm. I can't remember if we're code green or code purple. I guess we're code green. Looks that's like we're code green right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> but then one of the cutscenes features, uh, uh, ooh, I don't remember her name, Nabat. Trying to go, is it code purple? No, code white. Maybe it's code orange. She doesn't mention white. Oh. That, that's Dice's line. All right, okay. Code white. They got the uh, oh. undo. Ooh. That Sneaky. was new. Yeah, Only the Orion screws that up. Or the Viking in this chapter. They used the Mountain Dew executives to uh, make the warning colors. <laughs> But most of these inside dodges are pretty easy. For I the most part, you just hug the left side of the corridor, and unless something makes you have to deviate, like possibly this soldier. Almost. Good nah, it's fine. We have another donation here. This one is from Garrick16. $50 for Abrocentia. What do you call... Actually, no, I can't think of any punny jokes. Oh well, put $40 to the musical and $10 to our lord and master, Demon Chocobo. And with that, The Shining Force musical is at $188.50 out of $250, so we're making good progress on that. Way to go, guys. So Saz and Vanille aren't the type to sit around and wait to be rescued. They've uh, engineered a little havoc of their own. We'll get to see another few fights showcasing the uh, damage of stacking buffs and debuffs and stagger all together. I think 
think they have more fights together in this chapter than they do the last two chapters that are in combined. <laughs> <laughs> Deceptus. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> so Burning out of places to put Deceptus souls on. So, so bridge four. <laughs> Have you practiced that strategy recently? No, of course not. So do that'll it, be fun. Do it, doing it live. I mean, I was going to do bridge four with my third Deceptus soul. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing with my second one or fourth one now. Uh, uh, burning it. Probably uh, just going to burn it in chapter, chapter 12. twelve and keep that bonus one. Yep. For chapter thirteen. Not gonna do Jella Titan. Oh, he's already doing Jella that. Titan. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I assumed you were already doing that. I figured not. Pangolin, no. Mushushu, and yeah. Yeah, Penangolin, then Mushushu, then Bridge Four, and then and then yeah. probably Jella yeah. Titan or Chapter Twelve. Take your pick. Right, I'm just gonna make a save since it's been a while. Hmm. Not really a safety save, just a. Uh, You're doing stuff here anyway. In case I accidentally sell a doctor's code, save. In case the uh, game decides to crash. Not a super common problem, but lockups are known to happen with this game. Although we're past the most common one. And yeah, little Sharky agrees that you should probably use it on Jella Titan. <laughs> All right, well, if Sharky says I should use it on Jealous Titan, then I'm going to go and burn it in Chapter 12. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure yet. I will make up my mind. I have enough time. Two hours? Hour and a half? Mm. There's that Warrior's Wristband we I mentioned earlier. And of note, he uh, took the Brawler's Wristband, maxed it out, and then used a catalyst that he got from a boss drop to transform it to the next higher tier of plus strength items. And the experience that he used to max it carries over, so um, that Warrior's Wristband is already at level 8 out of a possible nice. 11. That dodge is normally very tricky, but they were yes. all conveniently facing away from me. They never even saw him. That is fairly rare. Yeah. And, and now we enter Code White. <laughs> I Looks remember. very orange to me. I remember because the uh, engine is shut down. Mm. So there's an exciting dodge coming up. Not this one. This one's boring. I was waiting but for that look, to so, so you've seen us a couple times do a little bit of luring of enemies. This is kind of the ultimate in enemy luring. Do you not get that chest anymore? I don't get it if I have lots of Phoenix Downs. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that's Thank okay. you. Very nice. <laughs> So, pulling him out into the corridor, and then he turns to face you, and then he backs away. Yeah, the alternative way of doing that is you can pull him out of it and then run all the way up to this platform and around and get through. Right. But that's slower. It is slower. So this fight can troll sometimes. Um, that's, that's not deep protect, Vanille. Uh, luckily, it's not, so Oof. I may have spoken too soon. All right, we're good. We're fine. Vespa Shoulder can cast a Rogo, which is uh, one of those uh, commands that has Rise on it. And if it happens to hit you around the same time that Thermodon's Photon Blast hits you, you can just die. His targeting says, I'm doing this for safety. Thanks, Benil. So he's oh. going to time this potion to... Uh, uh, avoid being launched by Photon Burst. So I'm probably going to lose Deep Protect here because Vanille managed to inflict it in her opening string. Mm. When she does that, it only lasts 60 seconds, but this fight tends to last about a minute and 10 seconds. Uh -huh. So it's probably going to wear out conveniently right as I stack her in. This is another one of those enemies that uh, doesn't really take a lot of damage until staggered. Yes. When he loses his shell. staggered. Still have Deep Protect. Still have deep protect. Still have deep protect. There, it's gone. Rip 2016, never forget. Oh, it's back. All right. 
Alright, kill him right there. Might have been better to wait on the first blitz. <laughs> Waiting in a speed run. <laughs> Only good when it makes it faster. Didn't you do a lot of that in chapter two? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have waited, but eh. Waiting would have been my middle name, but the line at the place was too long. <laughs> so here we have some more outside dodges. These would be a lot trickier dodges if the uh, time you had to spend in their zone was, so, was longer. But since you can just cut the corner off, relatively easy. And camera trick the rest of them. Camera tricking helps kind of. some. The camera trick is mainly for the final soldiers. Yes. Yeah. I believe. But you can camera trick way later than I do, because I think Zwanzig does it way later. So I don't know. There's some differences here again between PC and console. Um, on a uh, console, Lude could have just cut directly across that big square area instead of running around the outside perimeter of it. Uh, but if you do that on PC, you tend to get caught by the aerial soldiers. Kalavinka Striker. It's a fairly straightforward fight. This is basically just a upgraded version of the Chapter 3 uh, boss that we fought, Garuda Interceptor. Yep. Uh, I believe D Sharper calls this the paperclip boss. I can't imagine where he's getting that from. Oh, maybe it's those paper clips on the wings. Probably. So by inflicting uh, slow and curse on Kalavinka Striker, we gain a lot of control over its uh, ability to attack. Uh, it doesn't attack as often, and curse allows you to interrupt its actions even when it's not staggered. Although now it's staggered, so curse is kind of super close. All right, so if you missed that fight, here's another one. <laughs> yeah, this one's this <laughs> time it's really a little harder same. because uh, uh, just like with uh, Garuda Interceptor, Kalavinka Striker is harder to stagger in this uh, second phase, and it has a uh, little bit nastier attacks. We're actually going to use some Sentinel coming up here. with the whiff. It's okay, we didn't really need those con hits. The uh, no. Sab's inflictions have given us more than enough duration. She's jealous of lightning missing in chapter 3. <laughs> <laughs> so you can keep Kalavinka's most, uh, striker mostly interrupted, but Hellstorm Bolt is non-interruptible. Once he initiates that attack, it will finish. Right. Uh, Rather, when he gets up in the air, it's uninterruptible. If he starts on the ground, you can still okay. stagger cancel it, oddly. Uh, on older routes, older strats, we used to get uh, Bar Thunder for this fight, which makes surviving Hellstrom Bolt basically free. This fight's hopeless. <laughs> Hope doesn't really uh, contribute a significant amount of damage here, so. You only really need two characters to stun lock something. Yeah. yeah. Aegis Soul. <laughs> <laughs> I don't All even right. know where that one's going. I would normally use it on PC1, except I have not practiced blindfolded PC1 with Strouds, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure. Uh, Hecaton? Uh, my second one was going to Hecaton. Oh, that's. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, Alex? Uh, the, the Tala? <laughs> I wanna, I'm a, that's not what I want. I did something wrong there. Okay. Now we're good. Except that's still not right. <laughs> Alright, now we're good. Oh, almost. Alright, we got a donation. $50 from Torakasi. Thanks for doing this to everyone at RPGLB, both runners and staff. As a social worker in training, I can vouch for the need for much better mental health services, both nationally and globally. 
As someone who personally deals with mental health issues, they, like, sort of suck just a tiny mass of chunks. Thanks to all who've donated and keep them coming. Announcer's choice for this donation. I went ahead and put that to the Shining Force 2 musical, putting it only $11.50 away from being met. So if someone wants to snipe that, go right ahead. I believe this is the first part in the game where you can actually choose your party members. Yes. Except for your leader. Yes. Lightning has to be the leader. So it starts opening up, so you'll start seeing our main party usage of at least Saz and Snow. Yep. Let's get this over with. <laughs> So this section is all about uh, the power of Saz's buffs, multiple commandos, and incidentally potions to help keep you alive. Which it just did. <laughs> potions are still very helpful. You were way lower defensive stats than you typically would at this point. I think casually you'd probably have around 2,000 for most of your characters. No, no. Not at this point. Sure. Uh, close yeah. to 1,000. Okay. Uh, so between... We're not that much lower then. 1,000 to 1,400. can get snow up kind of close to 2,000 if you right. stack HP bangles on him. We're taking a specific route through various platforms to get gill and other items that we want. Leapers scopes. Also to fight, uh, more specifically to avoid a specific fight. Um, there's a fight on uh, the center section that we used to use a Decept Assault in order to beat. Uh, when we rerouted to this deviation coming down the side here, we were able to cut that cassette saw out of the This fight can sometimes be very dangerous because the uh, three, if the three aerial soldiers concentrate their fire before uh, Snow gets them provoked, so they can kill Lightning. Once you get a soldier or two down, that danger goes away, and Snow can rejoin the fight. Yeah, cool. So this is uh, four fights on the bridge, regardless of which way we go down. Uh, but yeah. Yep. This way just gives you the, some stuff that we need in our chests, including the Weaver scope we got. Yep. And some gill that we may or may not need wholly, but I like picking up gill when it's 3600, not when it's 30 gill. Yeah. Makes it so you can skip other chests that we could have picked up elsewhere in the run. No so hesitation. Quake here. This is the first time we've used Quake. Quake adds 26.6 .6 seconds of chain duration to all enemies. Uh, I can also do damage, sometimes that damage can be appreciable, but mostly if we're using it, we're using it to add tons of chain duration to everything. So the strategy here is actually to stagger all three of the enemies and then unload with commandos. That was a very close potion save there because that was targeting lightning. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that blitz didn't hit the soldier, so it was a bit useless, but whatever. Keep the enemy off balance. All the commandos are doing double damage to Thermodon thanks to Endwater, which is why it died that fast. Submit it. Submit it is a good time for that fight. So here, since I have six Deceptisols, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use one on this next fight. Yeah, this fight has gone over a decent number of changes, actually. It used to be a fight where you would summon Odin. It used to be uh, used to be you always used Deceptisol and summoned Odin. Yeah, it used to be used both. And then one or the other of those got cut out, 
And then we got to our current strat, which you're not going to see because <laughs> we have these extra deception cells. But like the other fight with lots of aerial soldiers, this one can be very dangerous. Uh, luckily, with them staggered, you can interrupt them. So having three commandos... Oh, I'm sorry. We've got the Sentinel to uh, yeah, it's make that save. Shots, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wipe out the aerial soldiers first. Yep. I just want to say, I hate this fight. Yeah, <laughs> it's rough. Yeah, the fight goes more or less the same without Deceptisol, but much longer. Much slower, yes. So coming up is Bart 1, which is a pretty fun fight. This is uh, one of the hardest bosses in casual play. It's not that hard of a boss in the speedrun, although it certainly can kill you. Um, the strategy we're going to use is a pretty cool one, which I wish I could take credit for, but I can't. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, so this is what Villagin uh, was referencing earlier when he mentioned commandos attacking different targets. Uh, we're actually going to set things up so that Lightning, Saz, and Snow are each targeting a different head. And what makes that particularly special is each of the heads is a different element and therefore weak to a different element. And we're going to get Saz to cast the correct end spell for each commandos to be attacking that. Uh, whichever head they're targeting. So these heads cast spells, and as you spend time in the fight or kill off the heads, they upgrade their spells. By spreading out the damage like this and making that damage highly efficient between the Fortisol here and the end spells, um, the Dolphin's going to be able to minimize the time when any of the heads are casting the most dangerous spells. And then we'll get to the second part of the fight, which has its own Cocoon's nifty mechanics. So that retargeting was essential to make this all work before he throws the Libra Scope. And then he does need to get the Libra Scope out so that Sal will start doing the end spells. And now everyone has different end spells. And they're each targeting different heads that correspond to their end spells, so it's really efficient. I believe it's Lightning and Snow have better stats than Saz, is that correct? So they're going to kill their heads faster? Yeah, Snow already killed his head. So now Snow has lost his end spell because he's attacking a target that is not weak to that element. Now with two heads down, I'm gonna get Saz to recast some different end spells. Yeah, there's liberal potion usage in this fight because Lightning's can, HP can dip down really quickly with all the spells flying around. Yes. A little hiccup there because uh, after I killed the left head, I retargeted to Bart's head instead of the other right pauldron eyelet, I forget which one. So uh, it sort of messed up Snow's targeting. So that just slowed down Saz getting Vigilance on everybody. Vigilance is important for the second half of this fight. Uh, Loot is using the targeting trick again where he's getting Snow and Lightning to concentrate on the same target. Okay. So once his pieces are gone, Rotandalus uses this smile attack. He casts magic at you. And he starts using Destrudo once his HP drops below a certain threshold. Uh, if all goes well, we are not going to see Destrudo. Um, with uh, physical attacks and vigilance, it is possible to keep Bartendalus disrupted while he is staggered. If Luke can get the timing right, and the timing is very tricky, then he'll be able to keep Bartendalus from initiating any actions once he starts uh, dealing damage in Cerberus here. Probably not going to get it because of the backflip. Yeah, there's an attack there. Luckily, that was Baptism in the Ruin and not Destrudo. Probably not going to get it because of this gap here. Hey, we got a smile, though. 
And almost always he follows this with the Strudo, but he's almost dead, actually. Come on, come on, Saz, kill him with Ruin. The reason we didn't uh, want to see the Strudo is yeah. because it resets the chain damage. But he was low enough to be able to finish without having to worry about the Strudo. Pretty fortunate, despite all of my lack of interruptions there, that that wasn't less fortunate than that. I've had him use the Strudo when he had more than half health, which means he basically have to restart everything. Yeah, that's a pretty unfortunate timing that adds close to a minute to the fight. Yeah, the Strudo is an attack that just does a lot of damage, but it has different stages. So if you do enough damage to Bart while he's uh, distrudoing, he'll do less, less and less damage. So coming up here, we're going to have our first randomly generated, pseudo-randomly generated paradigm deck. Um, and this is where the development of your characters helps to determine which, uh, which paradigms you get seated with. But we're not going to use them conveniently. Yes. Because we're going to use a different party. And this is the Rav menu where all <laughs> but one role I'm selecting is Rav. All there right. we go. And when he's setting up those paradigms, the development of the characters also determines what the other paradigm, uh, other roles pop up as when he creates a new paradigm. So no you may have noticed he was creating roles for different characters uh, when creating new paradigms, and that's why. This is another fight where he's going to try to stagger both of the enemies at once and then unload his cons. Commander. Oh, Saz is dead. I'm gonna revive him after I do this. So Saz can die in this fight if he situates himself right next to Snow like he did. Actually, I'm probably gonna do a, well, I was gonna do a second Quake, except now they're both second, so it's too late. I should be fine, though. TM. <laughs> I'm going to wait for snow. I'm just going to blitz and kill both, hopefully. There we go. So now this chapter is another chapter with not a lot of fighting and a lot of running. A lot of running, a lot of dodging. A lot of it's actually somewhat pleasant because there aren't many cutscenes in this chapter, so it's just a bunch of dodging. Yep. Which makes it pretty relaxing as a runner. Not sure how exciting it is as a viewer. So, we really are well, relaxing until birds. Yeah, and then yes. birds. And then birds. And bombs. Ah. Bombs are pretty easy to dodge as long as you have enough space. Um, yeah, they're pretty they're, tame in this chapter. They're pretty predictable in the way that they charge at you. But they Plus also they noise. really <laughs> followed me past the battle zone there. <laughs> They also take up a lot of room, though, so when space gets tight, bombs can be very difficult to dodge. Which we'll see in the next chapter of it. You are currently watching RPG Limit Break 2016, an RPG speedrunning marathon in Salt Lake City, Utah, on the benefit of NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. This also happens to be Mental Health Month. So if you want to tweet out the event, not just the event, you can also tweet with the hashtags act for mental health that's the number four in there, and hashtag stigma free. That last dodge that Lou Dolphin just pulled off is a pretty tricky one. Um, usually, if you want to guarantee that dodge, you have to lure the enemies, but he was able to just run through it. Especially for newer runners, these dodges in these uh, sort of tube areas can be a little tricky because it seems like you have more room than you actually do. Yeah, the flans have a deceptively large hitbox. So this next big room contains lots of birds, so we're going to try to avoid them by taking the side path here. But because birds are jerks, they will still possibly try. in one teeny little area where I'm very briefly in the battle zone. Right here. Oh, well, that was fine. Alright, <laughs> good enough. 
but it is faster to go around this room rather than through the room dealing with all the birds. We have a $5 donation from Kubo Kyle. Final Fantasy puns for Final Fantasy speedruns. Part five. Hey, Lude, why did Chocobolina cross the road? Uh, why? To go for a walk. <sighs> I don't get it. To go for a work. Work, oh, there work. we go. Okay. Now I got it. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> This isn't Final Fantasy X news. <laughs> <laughs> and on a note that may be more pleasant to uh, some of you viewers who may not appreciate the art of puns, the Shining Force 2 musical has now been met. Excellent. To be fair, there might be puns in that. So Snow's going to jump down and land on Lightning's head. Maybe. Yep, there is. <laughs> <laughs> That's another PC glitch. Dropkick. Thankfully, your party members, while they have collision, cannot start fights with enemies. That would be, that would be terrible. <laughs> would be awful. We'll yes. be exploiting that later on. Yeah. This is another terrible dodge. Well... We haven't only, had a terrible dodge yet, but this one's pretty. Not only awful. do the flans have exceptionally large hitboxes, so do those little imp yeah. guys. There are a lot of them at one point, or at that point. I like that guy. You yep. just get out of your way. The behemoths in this chapter are pretty fun because they just charge past you and you run past them, and and then you're on your merry way. Meanwhile, if you're watching the mini map, uh, your other party members got stuck behind that other dodge. <laughs> it's okay. I don't see them. Out there. If he gets into a fight, they'll be there. Yeah. Check it that way. Because the space-time continuum is no match for game mechanics. <laughs> Truer words. So here's another behemoth. I'm going to incite him to charge forward by running across his vision like this, which makes him charge forward, and now he's too slow. So this next boss coming up is uh, the best place in the run to use a bonus Age Assault because it guarantees that we can avoid a potential massive troll. <laughs> with, good, with correct execution. Indeed. So this is Sid Reigns, and he has a attacking pattern where he goes on the offense for a while, and then he either goes defensive or he goes healing and then goes back on the offense. Uh, the time it takes to stagger him without an Age Assault is enough time where he gets to that second defensive part, uh, defensive or healing. And if he goes defensive, then you have to wait until he gets through that and goes back on the offensive Please. before you stagger him Cutting you down. if you want to guarantee the kill. Um, what we're doing with this fight as a broader strategy is attempting to stagger Sid before his HP drop below 60% and then keep him launched and juggled until we kill him. Otherwise, he will transform and kill us. It's not a guaranteed kill in casual play, but at our stats, he's going to kill us. And in casual play, this is one of the toughest bosses, especially with the, the time spent in the game. Yeah. Or very easy if you happen to stumble upon the stagger and juggle strategy. Many people have. And then get confused when other people are complaining about how hard he is. <laughs> uh, the reason Aegisol makes this a better fight is the extra buffs add enough extra conditional modifiers. Since chain resistance is pretty high, so those conditional modifiers are very significant. And they allow you to get the stagger in early here in this second offensive phase, well before he would go on the defensive. Not really what I wanted to have happen, but... So what I tried there was to try to cancel Snow's ready animation going into this paradigm so that Snow instantly launches him. That way you don't lose the interruption from the Ravager hits uh, and give him a chance to initiate action. Sid is, when staggered, um, 
you can prevent him from initiating actions, but you can't interrupt his actions. Um, you can't interrupt his spells, but not his physical. Okay. And that's a special property um, some actions have where even the stagger doesn't make them interruptible. That was a nice and easy fight. That was the first of two fights in Chapter 10. Second of three fights in Sorry, Chapter 10. Sorry, second of <laughs> the first fight. Sorry. I forget that that's part of Chapter 10 sometimes. It's really an epilogue of Chapter 9. Because after that, you can change your leader. Exactly. So this second elevator is the first of two elevators where enemies will drop down on the party while they are riding the elevator. Somewhat cruelly, it's the second of three elevators. The first one they don't have enemies on. If you're not expecting it, uh, it's a nice surprise for you. Yeah. And the worst part about it is if you retry the fight, you go back to the top of the elevator. Luckily, these bombs are pretty easy to get into this pattern where they just sort of follow lightning around the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> So this dodge isn't exactly free, especially when the bombs do that. When one of them gets stuck, it becomes a little bit dicey. There we go. But it's pretty close to free. The next elevator, that is not the case. <laughs> Far from it. Next elevator has birds. Enough said. Yep. And since these areas don't have birds, it is faster to go through the middle. Although the fight uh, that he has to dodge coming up here can still troll. Yeah. This is purely a function of the number of enemies and the narrow width of the um, <coughs> hallway. <sighs> that was close. Yeah, and even though these are fighting each other, they still decide to come attack you. When Unlike the you. Chapter 4 enemies, these enemies will notice you and stop fighting each other. These are arena fights that you can skip in entirely. Here we have another weapon pickup for sale purposes. Still. And I think we have a good time if there's any donations or whatnot. We do have a donation, a $1 donation from Dan. Thanks to all the runners doing this for a great cause. I suffer from a mental illness, and it has gotten the best of me a few times. I wish I could donate more to this cause, but can't right now. May the RNG gods be with all the runners, and again, I personally thank each and every runner at this event. And I want to say that it's fine if you can't donate much. There are other things you can do. Not only does every little bit help, so a small donation still helps. You can also spread the word. In fact, that's one of the best things you can do. If you mention uh, this to your friends, whether it's through social media or just telling them about it, uh, maybe they'll watch, they'll don't, they might donate. Uh, and even just encouraging people to use uh, perhaps those hashtags that I mentioned earlier, hashtag act for mental health or hashtag stigma free. Get the word out because this is a cause that a lot of people often overlook. So giving it more exposure is just as important as throwing money at a charity, if not even more so. So that dodge I just did is one of the craziest bird dodges. Yes. The yellow birds are faster than you are. Which always makes it difficult to dodge. So it is technically possible to do this dodge without the Deceptisol. You have to position yourself so you are behind the yellow bird when it lands and then run around as it spins around, staying behind it. If it ever catches a glimpse of you, you have failed the dodge. <laughs> so I believe Norapav said that he was going to riot if I didn't do that decephalus, so there are riots right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to wait till the Hawka for riot shield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. So the uh, next fight coming up is another Eidolon fight. And this particular Eidolon fight uh, 
has the highest Gestalt multiplier of all of the Eidolons. Uh, so that means that actions you take that raise Gestalt raise more Gestalt in this fight than they do in other fights. Um, and I mentioned that because, well, this particular Eidolon puts out a lot of damage really fast, and the strategy that Loot Dolphin's going to use might look a little suicidal. <laughs> That's because it is suicidal. No, it's not. <laughs> But uh, it only looks scary if you look down. You should close your eyes. Yes. That was a like line that. from Chapter 3 we didn't mention. Uh, but by being very aggressive, it's possible to end this fight in under 40 seconds. I could use an Aegis all on this fight, but it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a solid place for one. Actually, I think Aegis all on Alex was a good one from what I recall. Yeah, it is. Arguably better than this. Alright, we got slow. So both of Fang's debuffs, debilitations really, slow and curse are very important to this fight. Um, slow gives you a lot more time in between the really nasty attacks, and unfortunately no curse, so he's gonna get a little more defensive here. Curse makes it so Bahama doesn't interrupt you. So you can just keep going at him. If you're wondering how Fang just got Protect, Shell, Veil, and Vigilance out of nowhere, it's because of an accessory I equipped called the Tetratic Crown. That when she dips into red HP, casts those buffs on her for 60 seconds. Very useful for this fight. Very useful. All right, so before I can even do anything, I'm probably going to finish because of my allies, and there we go. There are ways to make that individual fight a lot faster by changing the paradigms. Unfortunately, the time it takes to retry the fight and set up those paradigms is more than the time you save. That is also true for the next fight. And the paradigms they give us in the next fight are quite trash. Like, in, in that last fight, they weren't completely horrendous, just mildly subpar. <laughs> <laughs> and that's being nice to the... Well, they at least give you one paradigm where both of your allies are Ravagers. I, technically, I guess we have that for one paradigm in this next fight, too, but it's much harder to uh, make good use of it. And now we've started chapter 11, which is the longest chapter of the game. And it's even in the speedrun as well, the chapter is at least an hour long. Yes, of 13 chapters, we started chapter 11 with a lot left. <laughs> Putting it mildly. This is also where the game difficulty spikes, because it was sort of intended for you to uh, spend a little time detouring and fighting missions before proceeding on. So really it doesn't spike quite yet. Right, this, uh, this section is fine. That fight you have to lure a little bit. Uh, the flan is otherwise impassable. It's at the narrowest point of the uh, hallway there. The slug at the back tends to stay at the back. If you're not paying attention, it will catch you. And then these giant flans, uh, the dolphin's running right at them and then veering off to the side. Um, that's because the the way the flan responds to your presence, he moves directly towards you. This time he had enough space on the side that he could just run to the side. But the first one would usually catch you if you run off to the side before you enter the zone. I'm going to go ahead and Aegis all here for, for kicks. <laughs> Don't normally get to do this, so let's go ahead and do it in a marathon. Because why not? Yeah, having this amount of Aegis cells is pretty ridiculous. Because I'm you supposed to have zero right now. I have two. You mean this amount of pretty much every shroud? <laughs> so I didn't let her run far enough forward, but... So Lou Dolphin's going to be using some double paradigm shifts here to try to help maintain a certain distance between Fang and Hope. 
Um, he wants to get Fang to use Provoke and then freeze her in place with the Paradigm Shift so she doesn't back up before she starts guarding. Alex does this pattern of two attacks, bit of a pause, two attacks, longer pause. Uh, we're taking advantage of those pauses to spend time in Relentless Assault in order to get as much Ravager time as we can. Uh, but Alex will kill Hope if he targets him, so we need Fang to be keeping him provoked whenever he's attacking. We want the distance between Fang and Hope because there are some uh, targeted AoE abilities that Alex can use. Yes. Alpha's down punches are AoE and will hit Hope. And then Blast Punch is an even larger AoE. Yep. I threw that potion there to keep Hope's feet on the ground. Although I think with Vigilance, actually, I don't have to worry about that. I can just use spells, but it also heals Hope, which is useful. I'm not sure if Explosive Fist's cut is high enough to get past Spell plus Vigilance. And there you have it. Pretty good, Alex. But well, mm -hmm. I just saw helps. Not only does it help with the uh, defensive aspect of things, uh, Luke was able to skip casting Protect on everyone at the start of the fight. Uh, it also um, increases the chaining, chain building that you're doing, which increases the gestalt that you're building. So as we mentioned earlier, Hope runs at 93% 93, 93 the speed of everyone else. So we're going to swap our team as fast as we can here. For a long time, we didn't uh -huh. know that. We used to wait on this ah, menu until wrong we order. Sorry, this is just muscle memory. <laughs> needs to be in that order, otherwise I'm going to mess things up. Uh, we used to wait on this menu until we were on the other side of the Arc Hilt step, which cost us 13 seconds. A significant amount of time. It was actually worse in the old Fang route because uh, we would run with him through to the Mahabara Ooh. shop and upgrade menu. That's right. <laughs> which was even worse. Hmm, what is that out there far in the distance? <laughs> nope, not that guy. He, <laughs> he, he wants attention, but let's not give him attention. That guy! I believe that that is a nasty species of turtle known as an adamantois. Ooh, I want to kill one. That sounds like a plan. Maybe Just I should wait yet. a bit. <laughs> should probably wait a bit. Okay. Might, might want to do a little preparation first. Sounds good. This is just a nice walk through the definitely not dangerous at all planes. So many of the enemies in this area are intended for later story or even post-game combats, <coughs> Adam and Toys. And uh, many of them are, most of them are killable at this point, although very difficult. That particular enemy would just kill you. Yes. Well, I don't know, Snow. They may or may not be forgetting someone, but don't forget that the Yeti is offering shirts for RPG Limit Break, themed on several of the games that we have here at this event. If you want to go to theyeti.com slash RPG Limit Break, that's Y-E-T-E-E dot -E -E slash RPG Limit Break, you can find the selection of shirts there. Each one you purchase, uh, for each one they that you purchase, they will donate three dollars to Dami directly. So, get some cool shirts, contribute to a good cause. Sounds fine to me. Coming up is the single grind fight of the run. This gets us 6,600 CP unless the Behemoth King kills the Magistatharian, which has happened to me a couple number of times. There used to be what was known as three ground. Fought this fight three times. And for a while, there was actually no ground in Fang Route. Did you see that? Snow Route is faster, even though we do need this fight in. Uh, it ensures some key abilities later on in the run. It's a pretty quick fight. Yes. And a guaranteed preempt. It's 
So we buffed Saz there with Bravery and in Fire because currently he has uh, the two best strength accessories we have at the moment. The Warrior's Wristband Level 8 and the Power Wristband Star, uh, giving him 218 strength. Snow just has a Power Wristband Level 1 for 20 strength. And also because Saz has Blitz, that's a bit more powerful than what Snow is capable of with just fists. And that was another fight where, so at that time we added Imperil to the mix to create the fire weakness on the Behemoth King. That was then exploited with the Bravery, Deprotect, uh, and Fire combination. Coming up are some of my least favorite dodges of the game. <laughs> Several of these dodges uh, require patience and or luring. But after them is my favorite dodge of the round. Well, second favorite. We'll get there. I think I know the one you're talking about. It is a fun one. All right, that was good. That worked well, yeah. And it's okay if that first dodge takes a while to lure out, because you'll be waiting on this second one anyway. Just so you know, Little Sharky wants you to decept the puddings. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not, and say we did. So this next enemy group coming up here looks impassable. Yeah, look how wide his arms are. Jeez. Blocking the entire corridor. Oh, hey, an opening. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, never mind. Got too confident. <laughs> okay. So you run up beside him, and he turns to look at you. As long as you let him turn to look at you. Actually, I don't like where the hop lights are. The dodge is pretty easy. I've never failed this dodge, so it's now a game of what do I do now? There we go. <laughs> Very accommodating of him. <laughs> That's what should have happened the first time. <laughs> Apparently, I'm too fast. That's what happens when you try and hop the turnstile. Right, I'm going to save here because this is a significant menu, and if I make a mistake here, I'd rather load the save than do other things. Not much sort. This is really the last drop where kill is an issue. So superconductors are the uh, best... A uh, component we'll be able to purchase in terms of turning gill into XP on items. Uh, there are some better ones in the game, um, only available from the uh, R&D Depot, which is an optional shop you have to do side quests for. Here we're turning a bunch of warrior wristbands into plus 180 strength each. This is how we keep the character stats, offensive stats, competitive with uh, what the enemies are going to be doing. Also made a black belt there. Uh, provides 20% physical damage resistance. That's uh, key to helping uh, with mostly Vanille's survival in a lot of fights going forward. But we are putting it on Fang for the next fight, and it makes it yes. a lot safer. Yes. Especially with an Age of Soul. This next fight is dangerous, not just in terms of being able to kill you, which it most definitely can, but also in terms of trying to get the Gestalt meter filled up before Doom kills you. Uh, and all of the Eidolon fights you've seen so far, uh, we've been nowhere near the three minute time limit. Uh, but this one, uh, without an Aegisol, and especially without the uh, Black Belt, uh, it was not uncommon to see times in the 2 minute 20 second, 2 minute 30 second range. And if you got trolled and managed to survive, often that survival was at the expense of... Too much time. Too much time.
is the uh, last fight where we'd be using Fang in the normal any percent speed run. Uh, today you're gonna see Fang get used one more time. We do have one donation right now. Ten dollars from Silver Fry Fire. I almost said Silver Fry. <laughs> it just says Steel Guard. <laughs> <laughs> Snow, do something. Steel guard. <laughs> For those it's... that don't know, that's referencing uh, a skit where the voice actors for Lightning and Snow did a, a live-action dubbing over a fight. It, it's pretty special. So. These rust puddings are weak to thunder, so you're gonna see some buffing and then a bunch of commando. And we have to fight these both. They're useful for some XP just to get those critical uh, skills we need. And then also because they're just almost impossible to dodge. To successfully dodge these enemies, because you can, you have to enter and exit the battle zone something like 40 or 50 times. Maybe more. Mm, 200 times. Is it 200 times? Uh -huh. Anyway, it's like several minutes worth of moving in and out of the battle zone. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> it's wacky. They move a very small amount, either when you enter or exit, or maybe both. And if you do that enough, <laughs> you'll move them enough where you can run past them. All right, good. So we got Vanille's fourth ATB segment before we start her summon fight, so she's going to be more active in that fight than the other summon fights where you had to deal with characters with three ATB. That actually that? makes the fight enough faster that it almost compensates you for the Behemoth King Magisterian fight all on its own. Another gatekeeper opening the way for you. I really like the name of those guys too. Though. Are they called Ambling Bellows, or is that the those Ambling, Ambling Bellows is the version that's the later? Hunt, that's right. Those are boxed phalanxes. That's right. Well, I like the name of the hunt coming up later. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess it's a mission. Sorry, wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> you are not the first player to person to refer to them as hunts. Hey, See, so Harmony is an age of soul. So the Protect and Black Belt on Fang should make her nearly indestructible. Shell will help to cut the damage from one of Hikaton's more trolly moves. He can cast Quake. He can even cast Quake twice, which does enough damage that it can potentially be dangerous to reveal. But Especially Shell will make that. Near. Bang. And right. he ends with counter. Yes. So we're employing the same sort of strategy where we're keeping Fang away from our leader. Speaking of Quake. And there's counter. And so even into chapter 11, you can see that potions are still doing a large amount of healing. We actually get more use out of potions than you typically see in casual play because our hit points are so low. Uh, 300 hit points of healing is very significant no to us. I could probably count on one hand the number of times I use potions in casual. Uh, by this point, casual is starting to creep up near the 2000 range, depending on whether you've done any side questing, how many things you fought out on the Arkeld set. 300 is a lot less impressive with 2000 hit points than 1000. And as potions are starting to get less effective, we have a new cool healing tool in Renew. Uh, Renew costs two TP, which means it can be used up to twice a fight without any type of TP regeneration. And it fills 
each heals each party member for half their HP. Even if they're dead, it'll bring them back and then put them to half HP. So I switched my attack string there from D Protect D Shell in Peril D Shell to D Protect D Shell D Protect D Shell because D Protect and D Shell have higher chances of infliction than in Peril. And he does that late in the fight because earlier in the fight he wants to make sure to get in Peril on with enough duration to last the entire fight. Um, you get a bonus amount of chain and therefore gestalt when you initiate a command based on how many debuffs are already inflicted. And that's more relevant than the higher success rate of D-Protecting D-Shell. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> the minor optimizations, they're important. <laughs> it's a couple seconds worth of <laughs> Second here, second there, second everywhere. 4,000 seconds. That's like 54 minutes, right? <laughs> So there's going to be a lot of dodging coming up. Yeah. Yep. There will be dodging for the rest of this section, all of the section after that, and the first half of the section after that. <laughs> and then we will be in Tajin's Terror, where no time can be lost. <laughs> Not a one. <laughs> time has never been lost in Tajin's. It's only been lost near Tajins <laughs> or on Tajins. <laughs> That's another inside joke for my stream where for whatever reason I do not remember the context. I said something about not losing time in Tajins only to proceed to die in some fight and lose two minutes. And that's stuck ever since. I don't think that's gonna work. No. I believe the splits you were running against had a bad enough Tajins that it was almost free to gain time there. <laughs> and I still lost and time. You didn't. Time. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Saberwolf. Good luck to all of the runners. Thank you for doing what you do to support such an amazing and under-supported cause. Thank you for the donation. So there's another box phalanx up here, but there's it's wide enough to just run around him than to deal with his turning shenanigans. That's actually the last dodge of the section. Coming up, more story. And a fun ride that we don't get to see. There's a cute little illusion here in the cutscene that we're skipping to to a segment in chapter four, and particularly the segment where we were controlling a, a dreadnought with hope. Because that clears the way for us to do some, or no, it it stops the uh, Tomos here, which allows us to board him. Yep. Which is pretty cute. It's also one of the weirdest cutscene skips in terms of timing. Yeah. Yeah, as you saw, I've paused like seven times <laughs> too early. <laughs> it's a good thing you're not J-Hobs. Like. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we were counting the number of early pauses, I think. <laughs> No matter how much money I would give for each one, I would be broke before Chapter 7. <laughs> so like 80% of the, the cutscene skips are pretty easy. Either they're immediate or there's an audio cue, like as the music starts playing, you can go ahead and skip. Or there's a visual cue, like as soon as you see a picture, go ahead and skip. And then the other cutscene skips are terrible. Oh, there's a visual now. Can't skip. Oh, there's visual and audio. Nope, still can't skip. You know, it's sometime in the middle oh. of the black screen where audio has been happening the entire time. Visual, audio, and characters are moving. Nope, fake cutscene. <laughs> I have paused on many a fake cutscene in Chapter 12. <laughs> yep. Chapter 11, too. I'm I the... think technically the Tajin's elevators are fake cutscenes, but no one really ever does that. Everyone's resigned to how terrible those are. So we mentioned a treasure chest early on in the run as being one of the most worthless treasure chests in the game. The one we just passed has it beat. Was it that one or the one coming out? Oh, I'm sorry. It is after this cutscene.
I thought we were almost to Tajans. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Yes. Oh, right, this chest. Thinking more at Tajans makes me well up my ears with, with tears. That ears? But nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give up. I'm done. There is a single seeth tear. In uh, yeah. See, what chest. happened was I combined eye and tear and got ear. Yeah. But I should have said ears with ties. Sounds like you're a developer for Yokai Watch. <laughs> <laughs> or Fancy Star 4. Well, while you keep turning that gear, I have a donation for you to hear. Mm. $250 from Dreadpaw. It just says, thanks, runners. Vuligen slacker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these are monogamers. We've seen lots of wolf-type enemies in the previous chapters, but Managrimers are fun because you get to do this and dodge their swipe. They are faster than the ones we've met previously. Yep. So it's very critical to do that little diagonal dodge. And these battle zones are large enough that you have to dodge them multiple times. Now if I get lucky, I can do this pretty well. Nope, he saw me early. So, so. decept here. Run the west, run the west of the ray. Yes. So depending <laughs> on how far you get into the <laughs> battle zone, there <laughs> um, west. determines where you have to cancel this Deceptisol. If you get deep enough, you can do it after this next fight, and uh, that saves you from a fairly tricky dodge. To be fair, that bird thing kind of looks like a manta ray. But now he has to dodge two of these. One monogamer, two monogamer. That was subtle. <laughs> I don't think I don't got it. I remember one time I was when going through that door, I cut across to dodge a monogamer, and the camera just got stuck on the door while I was running down this hallway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the camera tends to get stuck in this area. It's most hop most often happened for me going up a specific staircase, which I'll point out. Mm -hmm. It happened for me once going down the staircase to mission 25. That was special. <laughs> there will be a lot of story in this tower being skipped. And a lot of elevator. And a lot of elevator that unfortunately we cannot skip. The Xylovator. The Xylovator. For some reason it plays the same tune every time. It's the one part of the building that doesn't change. <laughs> and I don't think he's going to show it. Although he might have a chance. But Vanille's animation for uh, pulling that lever for the elevator is mm. kind of special. No, I'm not going to show it. Because, <laughs> no, actually, no, we might. No, yeah, we can. We'll do it. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to do a shop a little later, but that's fine. There's about five minutes of running around. <laughs> so functionally, these are identical oh. to uh, seed stones elsewhere in Pulse. Uh, they give a mission, we go out and we kill something. We get a reward for it. Everyone's waved his Zwanzig. <laughs> this Zwanzig. Monagamer is affectionately referred to as Zwanzig. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't like us. Zwanzig like us wanted today. to give you a hug. I mean, I chanced it, really. I tried to make it through the door before Might he did that. Made but... it? Yeah! Yay. And actually, I should have decepted it because I was going to use that here anyway. <laughs> 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 Whoops! <laughs> But there we got our first look at sometimes you can get out of the enemy zone and still get caught by the enemy. And at least you're past the zone when you retry the fight. <laughs> so, uh -huh. oh, 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 hi. This is a fairly dangerous fight. The manual preempt on this guy is doable, but not exactly as consistent as we'd like it to be. I believe in my PS3 PB, I lost about a minute and a half trying to get that manual preempt. <laughs> For being a pile of sentient jelly, he has the eyes on the back of his head. 
I remember seeing one of the OG runners of this game zoning try for like five or six minutes and not get it. <laughs> yeah, it's something weird with how, like, when he stops seeing you after you've entered the zone, he like turn around, but still have a really wide radius until he starts moving again. And if you jump the gun, it makes it really difficult. And even if you don't jump the gun, he also makes it very difficult. <laughs> he also has about 270 degrees of vision. So sometimes he just takes an angle where he's moving across the zone. You, you have no angle of approach that he can't see you. Not only that, but if he does see you, you try and run into the corner, where he'll do <laughs> one of two things. Either run in all the way after you, or hit you from 15 feet away. Because his arms are very long. Whoops! Ooh. Good job, Zwanzig. I think this deserves a special something. Zwanzig's pretty proud right now, I think. Zwanzig's proud of his Zwanzig. <laughs> ah. Okay, there we go. Anyway, Ambling Bellows. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a pretty free preempt. And uh, then uh, one of the first times we're, uh, the first time we're gonna showcase the power of Hecaton. Hecaton is very powerful at this point in the game. I think technically it's Hecaton cheer. Yeah. But Vanille frequently just says Hecaton, so so do I. Bunch of free quakes. Not that they do anything. If we could guarantee that free quake, we would try to exploit it. <laughs> yes. We're also using uh, Aurora there to, to launch Ambling Bellows. Yes, yeah, so Ambling Bellows. If he gets uh, to attack when he'll you die. So that was 106,000 damage from. Uh, Hecaton's finisher there. Uh, also some kind of interesting noises from Vanille. If there are not Vanillgasms being spammed in this chat, <laughs> then Lewd not proud. <laughs> I see a few. <laughs> Although I think you can do better next time, chat. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yes, you need... This is far from the last time. There must be at least 54 of them next time. <laughs> 54? I'm seeing too many... Plain old Craigasms, and, and that just does not sit well with me. What about you, Lou? Does that sit well with you? No, it doesn't sit well with it's me. It's not the same. Is FFZ active with my channel, or is that not a thing? It should be. So all I have to say about that is Swansig not proud. <laughs> this is another one with a really high vision radius. Not quite as bad as uh, Della Titan, but... I've known people that have had issues with this one. Mm -hmm. But this one's significantly easier than Jello Titan. Yeah. Smaller area as well, so. Like all other enemies of this type, vulnerable to water makes this. Yeah, I'm not gonna blitz. That's too vertical for Saz. Blitz, blitz at a target actually that high will actually Just miss. See you, Daddy, now. Yeah, I did that just to showcase how a blitz can miss, actually. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that we've successfully completed those three missions, the flames guarding this path are gone, and we can now proceed. Appreciate it. And Snow appreciates that. And Vanilla thanks to him. Thanks to him. No, it's thanking you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Vanilla. So this staircase is where sometimes the camera gets stuck going up. And if it does, you get to see the inside of Tajin's. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's stuck! Yeah. <laughs> it's not like there's a tricky dodge up here that you'd really like to be able to see. Eh, no, problem. no problem. Tricky? Nah. I 
have a bad habit of trying to skip every single one of those statues too, even the ones that just mm -hmm. give a mission. I will literally say during my runs, this is not a cutscene. This is not a cutscene. <laughs> yep. We do have a couple donations here. We have five dollars from Ryan Uko. It makes me really happy to see a speedrunning marathon like this supporting the mentally ill, so I'm very happy to donate to the cause what I can. Good luck to all the runners. We have ten dollars from Platinum RPGs. I got you, Lud. Red Managamar! Blue Managamar! <laughs> Thank you for your donations. So this uh, next mission coming up, normally we would try to manually preempt it, but since we have such a wealth of bonus deceptisols, uh, you won't get to see that. It's a fairly tricky preempt to pull off, uh, which is why uh, bonus deceptisols go towards skipping that. I've actually had pretty good luck with getting this preempt on the first try, but not today. Today we don't need luck where we're going <laughs> or what, where we've gone I guess is more accurate <laughs> where we've been <laughs> now we still need luck right luck never hurts hopefully lady luck There's is on our side <laughs> well actually you kind of benched her So again, Quake to help uh, preserve the chain. Hold it together. Starting out buffing Snow instead of Saz because Snow is actually doing damage to the enemies. Now both of them will be. Since they're vulnerable to water, casting in water on the Snow melts those waves. No problem. And then the stagger plus deprotect belts mission. So a quick menu here to prep for uh, Vitala. I guess it's not really that quick, Crystarium. These missions give quite a bit of CP, especially compared to how much we've uh, earned so far. So they do a nice bit of leveling up for us. It's worth noting that on PC, early Crystarium is very, very quick. And it starts to uh, peter out a little bit as we get higher and higher. It gets very <laughs> laggy. So this one's acting better than my PC. Crystarium costs scale up pretty steeply as you get into the later stages. Uh, the CP we're getting right now being spent in these earlier stages, it goes a long way. But it's meant for a stage where all of the nodes cost 4,000 or more CP. So we swapped out the Shield Talisman for the Soul Font Talisman because Vitala primarily, in fact, only uses magic attacks. And quite is quite deadly with them as well. Yes. So we get auto shell on Saz to help reduce damage dealt to Saz so that Saz can potentially survive. Old strategies against Vitala um, used a sentinel to help uh, ensure that the uh, party stayed alive. But uh, we found a more aggressive, faster, only slightly less safe strategy without using a sentinel. And if you do forget that to switch that accessory, you will die. Yes. That's a major part of the new strategy. We have a $30 donation from Alex G. I never thought I'd be seeing my math TA become internet famous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good luck, yes. Lude. Your run has been <laughs> kicking butt so far, and I'm looking forward to the rest. Thank you, Alex. 
whoever you are. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, okay. I've taught like hundreds of students. I can't even fathom the number at this point. So, and it's been over seven years. So, nothing personal. Also, I'm going to go ahead and give a, another quick shout out to our art team here. We have Carrie Fry, who uh, designed a few of our subs, uh, sub emotes. You can uh, check out her work at CarrieFry.com. That is K A R I F R Y.com. She also designed our logo and some of our promo banners. Another person who worked on some of our promo banners, along with some more of our emotes, is LLK. You can find her work at jazaboo.com. That's J-A-Z-A-A-B-O-O.com. And the layouts that you're watch, uh, you can see for all our games were designed by ah. Oralyn. <laughs> Here Nemitz. we go. Sorry. And <laughs> floor is more interesting than this fight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think I'll just finish that plug later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so Vitala puts up with this barrier and is actually invincible until you stagger it. Also cannot preempt this fight in any way. You can. You can. You can. But it's not really faster because you still need to do all this setup. <laughs> ah, for some reason I thought it was a synergy still. Without Shell, I would have died there. Hey. Here we go. <laughs> Unlike most enemies, Vitala can't be interrupted while staggered, but that's okay. It dies so fast, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so now maybe I can finish that plug and not get wrecked this time. <laughs> uh, the layouts were designed by Oralin and Namix. Oralin you can find at uh, either Twitter or Twitch with Oralin, O-U-R-O-L-E-N, and Namix, uh, his Twitch is Namix, N-A-M-U-X, and, and his Twitter is N-A-M-U-X-S-R-L. Nangalon is another enemy that can theoretically be preempted manually. Uh, this is the <laughs> extra Deceptisol that uh, Luke Dolphin deliberately intended to get before he started getting all of the, the uh, extra bonuses. <laughs> it was going to be farmed, and then it became a bonus, and then I got three more bonuses just in case. <laughs> in case. Um, uh, some people swear that this preempt is basically free and claim to get it every time. Those Some? people probably need person. to leave the coffee on the table. <laughs> uh, the step cell is nice though, uh, in part because it lets you get all the dodges leading up to it for free. This is yet another preempt quake summon fight. Mm -hmm. It'll follow a similar formula as a Ambling Bellows fight. Yep. Uh, she's six throw. force blasters here. Get ready, chat. <laughs> Did he rise to the challenge this time? There it is.
This is looking better this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, now we are able to go and access a statue that would have been blocked off by ice if we tried to go to it earlier. And you can actually visit it and get a cutscene and then realize that you went the wrong way. Yes. <laughs> Done that. <laughs> <laughs> You actually get a slightly different cutscene depending on who your leader is. Uh, the same is true for this cutscene that we'll be skipping coming up. And yes, Lude, chat did much better this time. Good. I'm sure you'll be happy to know. I am proud. Lude more proud. <laughs> Lude much proud. All right. Alright, so as promised, the next elevator will be done with vanilla, so we can see that exciting animation. I don't even know what it is, but it's exciting, I presume. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's very vanilla. I'll yes. just say that much. Well said. So she's gonna miss. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> it's the small victories in life. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to shop and stuff here. So I'm going to just do going to do a quick save for Safety, I guess. And then, oh, no, no, we're not saving a second time. <laughs> uh, no, I do want to cancel the save operation. <sighs> a bit this faster to just save again. <laughs> this game is terrible for switching the options of the things you don't mm. want to do. <laughs> do you want to change camera controls? Yes. <laughs> do you want to? Stay with this configuration. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. So from those missions, uh, the Dolphin picked up a fair amount of resources, including another warrior's wristband, uh, six uh, particle accelerators, which are a very high experience value component, and some of the stuff he just sold off. Mostly maxing out his weapons here. Uh, upgrading. Whoa, 54 superconductors! 54? <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> By upgrading weapons for his Oops, main nope, party. Not done. Nope. <laughs> and <laughs> then also upgrading some more warrior's wristbands. Yep, bring some more warrior's wristbands. Oops, and and are you uh, breaking down one of the doctor's codes here, too? Uh, both of them. Both of them. So doctor's codes have been serving us well and uh, up to now by doubling potions. Now they'll serve a different purpose. By maxing and dismantling them, he gets a Fortisol, an Aegisol, an Ethersol, and an Elixir from each. Most of which are useful. Normally all of which are useful. <laughs> yes. All right, so they're in this elevator. I'm going to get my blindfold set up. Because this is probably the last real good opportunity at doing this, so... Thanks to I you don't wonderful think we... people, we mm -hmm. will be seeing blindfolded Proud Pad 1. Absolutely. Should be coming up half hour, 45 minutes, something like that. I don't know how many yeah. fights we have. <laughs> Sounds about right. 
I don't think we've mentioned what exactly Ether Soul does yet. Uh, Ether Soul refills your TP to full, as you just saw. <laughs> that is all it does. <laughs> Could have synced that better, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that you were going to be spending it while you were waiting for him to get out of the way. What did Vanille just do? Did she like try to like block the guy? Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There will be times when she'll push it back in the door. So elixirs are very limited availability items in the game. There's, you can only get up to four of them, and that includes dismantling all of the doctor's goods. Um, when used in a fight, they heal your party to full, although unlike Renew, they will not revive a uh, KO'd character. Uh, but they heal you to full, and they restore all of your TP. Oddly, in 13.2, it will revive your KO characters. <laughs> because consistency used to be Square Enix's middle name, but is no longer. Not Actually, I don't know that ever was, but that wouldn't fly with the joke, so. So Dahaka is a uh, potentially very dangerous boss whom we're mostly going to avoid all of the dangerous stuff from. Uh, we'll do that by... Staggering him before he gets to a transformation and then killing him in that first stagger. And that's when Renew starts being more effective than potions. Yes. From this point forward, we will be relying on Renew for most of our in-battle team. So he's yet to use uh, that one attack thingy. Foul utterance. Yeah. So hopefully he doesn't do it since I just buffed Snow. Preferably, normally Dahaka uses a move called Foul Utterance, which can dispel buffs. So part of the reason for the uh, buffing sequence that was used was to give him time to use Foul Utterance before we would do the buffs. But apparently he's just decided not to use it. That's cool. It's fine by me. So in order to do enough damage to kill Dahaka in this one stagger, uh, once again seeing the combination of Deep Protect to Bravery, Imperil creating a weakness, and in this case, End Water to exploit that weakness. Uh, Dahaka is weak to all elements right now, so which end spell was used was a matter of Luke's personal taste. And End Water is my favorite because it makes a splash. <laughs> Dolphins make splashes. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the fact that Dahaka went on the ground is wide enough that all of Blitz's bullets hit it also is uh, helpful for dealing that damage in time. One last elevator ride. But this one's skippable. Yep. For whatever reason, this one's skippable. Because consistency is not <laughs> their forte. Well, so you can skip the first time you. Uh, oh, I don't want to do anything in there. So here's another minor optimization. By doing this menu in the middle of the jump, Lude Dolphin doesn't actually have to have his character stop running to enter the menu. Not only that, but. Well, I guess we're not changing leaders. No. But, uh. There is sometimes a glitch that happens when you change leaders in the middle of a jump. We'll be hoping for that to happen later on. Yeah. yeah. You can do this next run with Vanille, and she has... Basically, her legs are a little bit smaller of a hitbox, I believe. But she has the wider hand hitbox, which is important for a couple of short enemies. Uh, in the uh, old Fang route, we used to switch to Fang at this point. Yeah. Even though we didn't intend to do any fights with Fang as leader, because Fang has the thinnest hitbox. And that made uh, some of the dodges coming up a lot easier. Uh, unfortunately, our current route has us using the three fattest characters, <laughs> <laughs> hitbox wise. Yeah, somehow we, s we picked the three worst hitboxes to run with. I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten us world records. 
And by us, I do mean Blue Dolphin. <laughs> Although, arguably, Hope the is the did. worst, despite my, like, hitboxes, yeah, Hope's hitbox is fine. But dodging-wise, Hope, with his slower speed, is probably not too good. Depends on the enemies you're dodging. Depends on the enemies you're dodging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't take that the wrong way. <laughs> oh. Fangs for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no re recovery from here. Well, I hope we, we never have to run with him again. <laughs> we better tell some jokes to lightening up the mood. So this area actually is a, uh, this music um, uh, is uh, Dust to Dust, I believe? Yes. Uh, plays over any, uh, instead of having normal in battle music, this just continues to play. And uh, sets a pretty somber tone for this village, which has uh, been transformed into undead monstrosities by the uncaring whims of the pseudo-deities that rule this planet. It's sort of FF13 Xanarkin. So that was a bunch of kids playing in the courtyard that just tried to track us down. And there was a father and his son <laughs> out for a oh stroll. <laughs> Don't create a backstory for the monster. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's, there's going to be a bunch. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to have a detour from the normal any percent route. We've already had one. Uh, when we picked up Get the that. perovskite uh, earlier in the uh, zone. And then this is also not part of the normal any percent route. Sanctions? No, never mind. <laughs> 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 Wait a second. <laughs> Wait, what do you, what do I mean sanctions? <laughs> oh. Now where's Yuvo? I thought she was up. So the uh, Pleiades high powers are very important for a donation incentive that you have all uh, kindly donated for. Uh, they will be used to defeat to the Eden Toys. And that Moogle Puppet and that Perovskite will help to fund the upgrades necessary to get that done. Oh, I thought there was enough space, but invisible wall. Gets me every time. Half the time it gets me every time too. Half the time it works all the time. There's also, as you can see, a slight bit sort of extending from the stairs where you think you can run across and then you get caught. So not this next dodge, but coming up fairly soon we have another one of the run's infamous dodges. Arbor Bridge Dodge. Uh, usually, uh, skilled runners can get past this dodge in one or two attempts. Um, but I have once seen uh, Zoning, whom we mentioned earlier, um, get completely and thoroughly trolled by this dodge to the tune of six minutes, I think. He didn't do it. Well, I didn't move him far enough out. That's what happened. I want him to the, the, I want to lure him to the side a little bit, but I don't want to lure him out too far because if I lure him out too far, he backs up to where he was. Also, birds. Bird. Because what dodge wouldn't be great without birds? <laughs> this dodge would be a lot more consistent if those birds weren't there. And he doesn't want to move today because he's loafing. Because I was just talking about zoning. There we go. There we go. We have a. $10 donation from Damidget2000. Very fun run so far, Lude. Keep it up. I'm so excited. We are almost there to Bart 2. Putting this towards KH2FM level 1 Sephiroth. Yep, we're almost at Bart 2. Yep. So. I figured I'd read that one before you actually did Bart 2. Good. <laughs> <laughs> we're almost there. So We're almost there. Bartandalus 2 is... <laughs> Arguably the hardest boss in the speedrun. Uh, I would argue that. <laughs> yeah. He is heavily. 
He is the most likely to randomly kill you in a fashion that you actually can't do anything about. And it's the only, well, one of very few fights where you actually have to worry about debuffs being cast on you. Yes. Yeah, you could be quite cursed to be stuck here for days, leaving your mind in a fog, <laughs> which is quite painful. Yes, that was rather poisonful. I was just going to say you were poisoning uh, Villagen against you, but... <laughs> Those are all the debuffs he's going to be using. <laughs> all of them. So that bonus fort assault we had is going to this fight. Yeah, usually just a little nicer. Assault. Makes the fight a little bit more consistent. A little faster. So the goal here is to... Well, let's quickly talk about... Uh, what this guy does at the middle of the fight. When you drop him to half HP, he splits open and he dispels all of your buffs and all of his debuffs. And then he starts uh, using more dangerous attacks, uh, most notably Thanatosian Laughter. Uh, the goal with this strategy is to get him to that halfway point in one stagger and past it. And then avoid having our buffs dispel so that we keep them into the second half of the fight. At these stats it is very difficult to survive this fight without those buffs. Oh, Dazga. Which got hit on snow. I don't think that was a laughter push so I'm just going to summon straight away. But sometimes you can do enough damage before the split that he will use Thanatosian Laughter before Apoptosis. That makes the rest of the fight completely safe. Well, as safe as this fight ever is. That's Apoptosis in safe some states, a Sodatosis in other ones, and a Coptosis in a few. What about a Sodapoptosis? <laughs> Now it is a race to kill Bartandalus before he uses Apoptosis a second time. He uses an elixir here to make sure he has enough renews to survive the fight. And that laughter was pretty nicely timed. That's yeah, a fairly ideal time for it to happen. Linnell in peril. There we go. Imperial is important to this fight, not because it gives him an elemental weakness, you'll notice there are no end spells, but because it removes elemental resistances, which allows us to chain, build the chain faster. Tight. Almost Pushes alive. Except, oh my gosh, oh, Vanille's little... <laughs> got that healing He's right real. in time. Oh, all those curses. This isn't really a good situation, so yellow. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be here. All right. So. We're fine. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> fine. That elixir is definitely not normally used here, but it's faster to use it than to lose the fight. I don't even know what I want to do here. I'm like so close to killing him, but I kind of need like something nice. I don't know. Some damage boosting is nice. I know what this calls for. Like D shell. <laughs> so, combo for an Aurora. Definitely that. There we go. Okay. Woo. All right. Nice save. So, part two is the hardest fight, right? <laughs> so, because he used both elixirs there, he's going to have to use a slightly different strat against the final, uh, the uh, real final boss, not the victory lap final boss. <laughs> That's a good example of what can happen with uh, debuffs inflicting and spending time curing those rather than either building chain or doing damage. Mm -hmm. 
And that's finally the end of chapter 11. <laughs> yes. And we, have now, we are now about to skip the best cutscene in the game. Yeah, this one. People, People of Cocoon, sorry. People of <laughs> I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but this is the best fight of all time. No. <laughs> so this is again a fight uh, where on PC it is trickier to manage than on console. Um, on uh, console, you can actually kill an Avatapa Wormack without using an Antetsuken, uh, but on PC, uh, you have to take the a slight time here. loss. I think it's three seconds? I don't know. <laughs> you expect me to know things about the speedrun? <laughs> Please. We do have a few donations right now. Go for it. Yep. We have $30 from Rye Home. Love to see you break some of my favorite RPGs ever. We also have $54, 54. from Annihilator. My hands, they can't comprehend. My hands, no, they don't understand how your hands can so quickly navigate every menu every time. Good luck and keep up the great run, dude. We also have $10 from No Cash, No Cash. Please tell Vulujin to stop being so ridiculously good looking on the couch. <laughs> good luck to all the runners and thank you for raising money for such a great cause. Finally, we have a $50 anonymous donation. I'm a huge supporter of NAMI and RPGs. Thank you for putting them together and making this possible. You guys are awesome and running awesome games. My favorite was an old SSI okay. game, Pool of Radiance. And I would like to know if there's anyone one running that old game. And in fact, uh, if you want to talk about uh, the speedrunning community in general, this is probably not hey. the worst time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> oh, a bunch uh, of scrubs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh. Uh, but yeah, just like where to go to uh, kind of get started in speed running, how to figure things out, you know? Speedrun.com. <laughs> speedrun.com? Yes. And, and check out your... Check out videos of the... Uh, world record runs as well as people active with those runs study their videos study their every movement well maybe not every movement but in game <laughs> in game movements yes <laughs> maybe drop them a message or something most people are willing to help new runners yeah. of any game at the very least don't be shy in my channel uh -oh. <sighs> I shouldn't have done that I should have waited for them to move now this is a really fun dodge and by fun I mean Terrible. These dodges are... So it looks like the front guy I can't really run past. Nope, I can just clip through the fence. Except that guy is in a strange <laughs> spot. He's not normally... <laughs> <laughs> he knows. Oh. 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 What a video game. Okay. So this dodge is fun. It looks like the front guy I can't run past, but... <laughs> He's not the problem. Fence clip. Um, nope. <laughs> I mentioned this dodge is terrible if you miss it the first time. So this dodge is fun. If you fail it, you just run through without a deceptive soul, and then you dodge the enemies. Well, no. Usually, if you go in without a deceptive soul, they'll jump over you. Right. So this is a fun dodge. You run through without a deceptive soul, and then still fail. <laughs> This is strangely satisfying. <laughs> Cathartic, I'd say. So this is a fun dodge. <laughs> you can fence clip this guy. And, and it's easy. Through. It's easy. No problem. But dodge is so easy. I don't know why anyone ever fails it. <laughs> I don't even know what those dogs are called anymore. <laughs> they right. are adamantherons. Oh, OK. They are just faster monogamers. <laughs> Don't renew. Don't renew. Don't Come renew. In. This is another preempt quick summon fight. Except when it's a quick, uh, sorry, preempt renew summon fight. <laughs> 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 that doesn't work nearly as well. That happened in my world record on PS3, actually. 
where I renewed and then I tried to salvage it, which was a terrible idea because if I had just accepted the retry penalty, I would have lost only 20 seconds. But instead, I tried to fight, failed, retried, and lost about a minute or so. Also, Chad, I hope you knew what to do. <laughs> So here we're doing Vanille's Crystarium, or uh, Vanille's Commando. I know what you're thinking. Vanille's a mage. Why am I doing her Commando? Because the Commando is not tied to physicals. And getting her to ruin gives her a magically based Commando attack. Chad and is doing you proud. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Are those ones like not proud to going on? Not yet. Oh, I but guess we're not at the fight that warrants the Zwanzig not proud. Not quite. <laughs> soon, though. Very soon. Soon. Like, I don't know. Might, I don't know if that will be the next fight, but probably the fight after that. <laughs> okay. Now, now, since he mentioned it, there are some Zwanzig not proud. Well, those don't count. <laughs> <laughs> So we've talked a fair amount about the uh, ridiculous damages, you, damage levels you can get to by stacking all the different multipliers. Um, this next fight, we're going to exploit that in a way that you really haven't seen so far. Um, to take out uh, Behemoth King, which is a enemy that commonly gives uh, newer players a lot of fits. Not down there yet. I'm guessing you're at some point going to talk about a sad special. We <laughs> will talk about that after the Behemoth King. But not during the PC1 fight. No. <laughs> no. So the trick with Behemoth King is it will stand up if you let it take an action below 40% HP. Hold it together. There's a couple different ways you could potentially prevent it from taking actions at that point. You could stagger it, but we can't actually stagger him without dealing too much damage. Also, it would take too long. Uh, you could curse him and then keep him stunlocked, but we don't have curse in the party. So instead, I'm going to set up those buffs and those debuffs and just kill him from, I don't know, 60% HP or so. Well, more or less where he is right now. Uh, to dead, before he can stand up. Should be mentioned, if he were to stand up, he would heal and gain a lot of uh, strength or attack power. It hits very hard. And they use a move that just does way more damage. Yeah, you, you pretty much just die. But instead, he pretty much just dies. He tried to stand up. He tried. <laughs> and failed. And then disappeared. Things don't die in this game. They disappear. Cold blood. Yay. You know, sad special. <laughs> How about <laughs> these fireworks? Old man, new tricks. So, et cetera, et cetera. Cold blood is... Um, one of the, each character has a unique full ATB ability. Uh, Cold Blood is Sass's, obviously. And it has some nifty properties related to chain building and stagger. Um, I'm just going to suggest that in this blindfolded fight coming up, uh, we have blindfolded PC1, one of the donation incentives, uh, as the next fight after Luke gets through these uh, dodging sections. Um, watch what happens to the Proud Clad's chain gauge while Cold Blood is going on. And keep in mind that for much of that time, Saz is the only Ravager on the field. Also of note is that Proud Clad will be immune to debuffs, so typical debuff strats will not be possible. That's correct, yes. 
is a nice walk. Oh, the bird. Ah, bird, bird, <laughs> bird. <laughs> Just keep calm and decept on. And this will also be the first instance where he purposely just lets a Deceptisol run out. Normally I would, except I'm going to keep oh, right. this Deceptisol. So that because of the Eden Toys donation. Right. Yes. Normally so, you just let this run out. So this is going to be rather inefficient Decept canceling, but you normally we would let it run out because uh, trying to keep it requires two Decept cancels, unless you were really a fan of dodging Adamantherons, which are just faster Monagrammers. <laughs> so, They're easy, right? Yeah. That dodge is possible, but extremely inconsistent. Yeah, it's easy if you can dodge it the first time. In which case, you've dodged it already, so you're good. All right, so upcoming is pro uh, blindfolded PC1, so I'm, we're going to have to be pretty, you know, quiet as I'm going to be focusing only on audio. But I will note <coughs> that I'm doing something slightly different than normal in that I'm using an Ether Soul because it requires fewer menuing shenanigans. But now, here it goes nothing. Good luck. And somewhere, <laughs> Gronsig is proud. <laughs> <laughs> First somewhere. try. Yes. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Even with the perfect cold blood timing. So that stagger happened slightly earlier than I would like it to. I would like it to happen as Saz shoots his first bullet, but I was a little nervous right, about yes, getting the kill at that point. But And Swansig in chat just said, I am proud. <laughs> this isn't the time for people to be fighting each other. It should be noted that that strategy is very tight. Yes. Any uh, delays or missed inputs, anything like that, and you are not finishing it. And if you can't kill him in that stagger, you will die. He will heal 300,000 hit points, which is more than enough to let him kill you before you can possibly kill him because he also powers up and unleashes a nasty retaliatory attack. So this is Adamantulid. Adamantulid is naturally weak to ice, which makes Shiva extra effective against him. And here you're seeing some of those defensive benefits of a summon. The full heal when you summon. Um, when uh, Snow takes damage here, uh, Nyx will heal him. Uh, the pause there was to ensure that the bounce doesn't bounce off, the bike doesn't bounce off to the right or left, which would prevent uh, Ludolf from being able to get the kill here. 
But thankfully he didn't, uh, well they I guess, didn't jut off to the side. So yeah. now the kill is automatic. And there's free attacking time. This is a lot of why summons are powerful. Sadly, no Scarletite. And Jack Diddley. Yeah. Oh. We had time to make the army understand. Yeah, so that 54 was my reaction to not that Adamant Kellet, but the Adamantoids we're going to fight in a bit. Um, it's sort of an individual fight run, uh, trying to beat it as fast as you can without summon or TP, or I don't know, remember if I used items or not, but. Uh, for the longest time, I had 55 seconds on that fight, but some Japanese runner had 54 seconds, and I had tried for like a week straight, but I couldn't get it. Actually, I tried for a week straight. I got 55. I was happy with that. Then we found the 54, which made me upset. Uh, <laughs> two and a half years later, I think, was about the time frame, I just randomly decided one stream. I feel like fighting Adam Antoy's for fun, so I was just speed killing him for about two hours, and... At the end of the second hour, I had a 54, and it was out of nowhere because I was out of practice in the fight. And I was so surprised. And then I got to the item drop, and it was a trap. <laughs> Trapezohedron. The rare drop from that fight. It was the best? No, the second best catalyst. Best catalyst. It is the best catalyst. Best yeah. sense. It, I was thinking Dark best. Matter was better for some reason. I Dark Matter is the highest accessory tier catalyst. Uh, Trapezohedron. Speaking of birds. Birds. Yeah, that dodges. So here's another uh, extra pickup for the Adamantois kill. Okay, trapezohedrons make the ultimate weapons. Yeah. And another one. There'll be two more chests, I believe, that get picked up extra. Yeah. We're going to pick up six particle accelerators and the Antares Deluxes. One of those is a little bit out of the way, and one of those is a fair amount out of the way. But the one that's really out of the way is really good. Yes. Something relevant to something coming up. We have a donation from Aster, ten dollars, and it just says, "So this is a fun dodge," <laughs> <laughs> which not only is a reference to something that just happened, but is also appropriate because there's a fun dodge coming up. There is a fun dodge coming up, and the dodge involves the uh, distant cousin of Aster Protoflorian that we fought in Chapter Five. Yes. had mentioned how party members still have collision, but can interact with monsters on the field without... Well, I wouldn't say negative effects, <laughs> but... But at least they don't trap you into combat. Exactly. Yeah, those two vampires were oddly placed. Yeah. So, so right here's up there. where we would dodge. But nah. But first. No, no, first we need to pick more. up some loot. Some loot? But No. Oh, not far enough. There we are. Okay. So Adamantherons are still really fun to dodge. <laughs> so we don't. So you don't do that. <laughs> These six particle particle accelerators do a lot of upgrading for us. All right. So. These enemies look like they are, com well, actually, they are completely blocking the path. And since they're focused on each other, they are not going to notice you, so you can't lure them out of the way, just like the Chapter 4 enemies that were fighting each other. So instead, 
we're going to take advantage of that uh, interaction between your team members and the enemies. Almost. Dang it, Zaz. Let's do this again. Oh, we pushed the tyrant pretty far. Maybe that's good enough. Yeah, yeah there nice. you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty fun one. Sometimes the Vernal Harvester gets pushed to the right and you just run on the left. Sometimes the Tyrant gets pushed to the left and you dodge on the right. Sometimes they somehow just get pushed farther apart from each other and you run in between them. That's my favorite of those three. <laughs> it's very hard to tell what you can run in between them. So this is the last pickup required for Eden Toys. And I'm going to menu for Eden Toys right here just to get out of the way. But first to say. So if you were wondering how we're going to kill a difficult endgame opponent with these meager stats, the Pleiades high powers are a major piece of the puzzle. So pay attention to the strength that as we upgrade it, especially once we use the perovskite and we get it into tier two. Turn it into the Hyades Magnums. Mm, so we're at 52 right now. 340, all right, that's cool. 276, you. Let's do some more. 618, oh, that's pretty good. Eight sixteen. Ooh, that's just three six eighteen backwards. Ten fourteen. Oh. And I should also ten fifty four. So this is a little small thing, but I'm gonna upgrade the goddess's favor here, so I can get a power glove on Saz. So dismantling the goddess's favor. Whoops. Uh, gives you a scarletite, uh, which we can then throw into a max warrior's wristband to convert it into a power glove. Oops, I'm also gonna. If I can do this menu, and that's where I want it, yeah. So that gives him another 50 strength. And now say bye to Snow and hello to Fang. And unfortunately, there's kind of a long, uh, longer menu. You might think we're getting close to the end of it, but uh, we need to level Fang. <laughs> Note how much CP she has. Oh, you'll be able to see that in the Crystarium. Oops. <sighs> Pressing circle too many times. Too excited, okay? <laughs> so, we will, of course, be exploiting uh, many of the damage multipliers you've already seen. Bravery, Deep Protect. Uh, Imperil will come into play not because of elemental weaknesses, but in negating elemental resistances to allow for faster chaining. Um, but one thing that you have not seen yet, and this will be the only place you see it, is the fact that they're one of Fang's debilitations, um, Daze, which we saw primary in part purpose, two. Yes, part two, Daze does. Its primary purpose is to just lock someone out of the fight for a while. But it has a secondary effect as well, and that is that the when someone who is dazed is damaged, it breaks Daze, and that damage is doubled. The nifty part is, Daze has a minimum duration. So if you have someone spamming Daze while someone else is attacking, whoever's being attacking has their damage doubled. Because each new Daze will inflict before the previous Daze wears off. And now, in combination with the uh, Hyades Magnums, you might have an idea of exactly how we're going to do several million HP worth of damage in 60 seconds. So Saz went from about 760 strength to 1600. That's about 2.5 times his strength. His HP went down to about 60%, but we don't care about his HP. The fight does involve using the another pretty well-known exploit. Uh, summon will kill off both of the Adamantois' legs and knock it over. 
giving us that 60 second window to actually kill it. And we're actually going to cheat that a little bit. Uh, we're going to have 120 seconds. Because the entire time the summon is still there, it's not actually counting down to when it stands back up. Ah, I'm trying to be cheeky here. <laughs> So it's much easier to just run along the side, but if I run in between them, then I can try to influence one of them to run up the stairs with me. Uh, which, when we get to this next cutscene, which is a fake cutscene, I can't skip it. Uh, if the behemoth appears in it, you can see it deload, because when <laughs> we pan back, you see all the enemies back I just dodged are gone. But I tried to be cute and fell on my face. So Just hey, like there's a turtle boys. here. Just like you guys. <laughs> we need some new challenge, like, hey there, handsome. The big boy. <laughs> so if you've never seen an Adamantoys <laughs> before, well, this is what an Adamantoys looks like, so now you've seen one before. Will but we get an immediate stop? Oh, you're going to wait on it. I'm going to go ahead and wait a little bit, and it's going to spend two minutes. So wonderful. <laughs> That's how much damage it does. <laughs> and mind you, that's its base level weak attack. They get nastier. So what uh, Lou Dolphin's doing here is he is Rav buffering Blitzes. Um, so this lets uh, the Ravager roll bonus and a few other bonuses apply to the seven hits from Blitz. Allows for some nice chain building while also adding a lot of chain duration. So, from the moment Brunhilder is dismissed, there is now a 60-minute timer after which the Adamantoys will stand back up. So now 60 seconds. 60 seconds. I say 60 minutes. You did. That's rather long. <laughs> no, 60 time. seconds. So that's why I had to do the chaining during the summon. Because I don't have enough time to chain the stagger as well as to do the damage I need to do. Because this is pretty tight. So Loot Dolphin is deliberately timing his attacks to occur while Fang is spamming days. Which makes for a very hilarious animation. <laughs> Bang your head! And dead. So what did we get? Not oh, no, 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 no. nothing. <laughs> Here's where it would be a trap, if I had one. <laughs> Once again, thank you for everyone who donated for the incentives. Absolutely. Yeah, that yes. was fun. I have to admit, my heart was pounding about 180 during BC1. <laughs> <laughs> so normally, you only get to pick up one of these chests, because then the Adamantois comes after you, and it breaks the glass and takes the other chest with it. But since it's dead, you get to pick up both. And that's actually important for the uh, gill routing that uh, Luke Dolphin had to do in order to uh, make that work. Yeah, I factored in the 35,000 gill that the plush chocobo sells for into that. I also factored in the uh, sale of the Hyades Magnums, so we're not <laughs> going to keep it since we didn't get an ingot. If we had an ingot, we would be keeping it and then not doing anything with it still because it didn't actually pan out. He was the, hoping. Cut, the cut in HP is pretty significant when your HP is already low. He was hoping to be able to uh, use the Hyades Magnums. Um, it is a lot of raw power. And uh, if you can survive, uh, leveraging that against the bosses going forward is pretty nice. Uh, unfortunately, that first part is problematic. 
Yeah. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Garrick. Just says, let's honor a fallen comrade. And I'd also like to point your attention to that little number up in the upper right. Uh -huh. Look at you. 25,000. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> it's been there, it's been above 25k for a little while, but I didn't want to interrupt the flow during the Adamantwise fight. Well, 25 plus 27 is 52, but we added two numbers, so 52 plus 2 is 54! <laughs> 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 Memes. So it's worth noting, less surprising now that you've seen several those enemies are completely blocking the path, enemies get dodged. But Juggernaut is another completely blocking the path enemy that gets pulled out of the way. And now we return you to your regularly scheduled speedrun. Almost. Just yet. Kind of. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so coming up Close is enough. Uh, after this menu and a couple of dodges. Oh, I'm sorry. And an extra fight. All oh, right. <laughs> yes. Uh, is another candidate for a hardest boss in the speedrun. Um, we like to say that Bartandalus 2 is the most dangerous boss. This boss is the hardest to learn the strategy for. Learn and execute. It's very much, you have to not only have the perfect idea of what you want to do, but react perfectly as well. A lot of small differences in the fight require small adjustments to the strategy. So this is an extra fight to pick up an Aether Soul, since I used quite a few to uh, do things today. What, you didn't get any bonuses? <laughs> <laughs> Bonus Aether Soul would be quite the feat. As far as I know, they are never dropped. I wouldn't be surprised on this round. <laughs> so in Lute's uh, preparation for the uh, Eden Toys incentive, he was having difficulty with this fight because um, he was getting unlucky with death targeting Saz a lot. And he mentioned this to me, and I asked him why he wasn't having Fang cast Fog on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was because he wasn't having Fang learn Fog. Sorry, my so mind was just in a daze. <laughs> oh, that's not the right thing there. <laughs> So, uh, yes, Fog. If you're ever having trouble with sacrifices, Fog is your answer. <laughs> I could see the pain on Vulogen's face after that one. <laughs> These puns are imperiling their ability to continue <laughs> Should we slow down? Curse all uh, these puns. Luckily, we can set aside all these status effects because Proudclad 2 is immune to them. <laughs> yeah, so we have to be quite brave in this fight and have a lot of faith that we can do things in a hasteful manner. We must be vigilant. <laughs> Uncover you the veil of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> you better lock your door to protect you from the <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Yeah, I will be quite protected under my blanket shell. <laughs> So Coldblood is going to do a lot of work again in this fight. Uh, since we can't debuff the Proud Clad, our best damage multiplier is the Chain Gauge. And Coldblood is our key to rapidly wrapping, uh, getting that Chain Gauge from a low level to a high level. So that attack before the Rav Buffer Blitz increases the amount of chain you get from the blitz pretty dramatically. Another thing you notice is that cold blood will keep him interrupted. Yes. Which is very important in this fight. Because the proud pad can't be launched while cold blood is animating. So there was some nifty timing with that paradigm shift so that there would still be a launch happening but now we're in trouble. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. 
Come the Proudcloud has launch resistance, so launch is not 100%. And if he gets to stay on the ground, this fight is not anything close to safe. So the goal of that stagger was not per se to do as much damage as possible, but to do enough damage to get this to trigger. That renew, much like items, uh, TP abilities prevent you from being interrupted. So he's gonna hit the ground here, which is actually fine because it enables me to uh, ATB refresh and cancel Snow's ready animation more easily. So he starts another string of five launches. If he was launched, there'd be a lot of travel. Time. And then we have air juggling with Blitz, which is a lot harder than it looks. Yep. But you do need the extra damage from those Blitzes. Yeah, you'll notice Snow is capping out of the damage go. for this fight at five nines. Very nice good fight, good fight. Too. And that finishes chapter 12. Casual players will notice we skipped a lot of that. <laughs> yes, normally Proud Clad 2 um, changes forms. Uh, he goes into the air. Uh, then he goes back on the ground. He goes, he goes back and forth until you kill him. Um, other nifty stuff. We didn't want to see any of that. Nah. Ain't nobody got time for that. We have a couple donations here. We have $20 from Mr. Swansig himself. I have been super hyped for days to see the true king of FF13 have the chance to show his stuff in a marathon, and I am not disappointed. Great run, great commentary. Swansig proud. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We also, we also have a $55 anonymous donation. As promised from the Shining Force Relay Race, let's keep the great runs going. Also, in Can We Trust? Also, if there was a name for that, uh, I guess someone could just PM me in the chat because it sounds like there might be one that you wanted to have read there. And as for what those donations are going for, this is RPG Limit Break 2016, speedrunning marathon in Salt Lake City, Utah, raising money for NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. They lead, they educate, they advocate, they lead, and they listen. So if you want to reach out uh, for NAMI, help them out, raise awareness, you can go to NAMI.org to check them out. You can tweet to NAMI at NAMI Communicate, and you can use the hashtags Act for mental health or hashtag stigma free on Twitter. After all, this is May, which is Mental Health Month. So now that we're in chapter 13, we have the ability to buy shrouds, Fortisol, Aegisol, and Deceptisol. And that is where most of Loot Dolphin's money went buying. Shrouds for the upcoming boss rush. So I didn't get a glitch to trigger here, but you might notice that there have been no glitches in this run. None at all. Just None. pure, unadulterated skill. And a little bit of luck. And luck. And a little bit of camera messing up. And 54. And 54. Yes. And Final perfume. Fantasy 13 is a very well put together game in the sense that it has not very many glitches. And so far, um, the speedrunning, general speedrunning community has not found any way to exploit the few glitches we know about, with the sole exception <laughs> of the one that Lude just tried to get and didn't quite get. Um, you can get Vanille to jump all the way back down the ramp after hitting that portal up at the top of it, which saves a couple of seconds. So even there, we're talking about using a glitch to save, like, yeah. three seconds. A couple seconds. <laughs> And as far as we know, or have been able to gather, it's a glitch that triggers 15% of the time. Every time, 15% of the time? <laughs> okay. That donation was from Ty2358. Ah. The one uh, that mentioned the Shining Force Relay.
lot of these dodges would be very dangerous. The last one in this little section in particular. These Sanctum Templars are extremely difficult to dodge. They move faster than fast. <laughs> as soon as they see you, they're on top of you. Wake up, uh, wake up knock there. <laughs> this is another deceptive all you just kind of let go away. Well, I guess the first one technically. No, but. but in the normal, that would be the second one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, just because you can't get on the back side of that. And normally this fight would be done uh, with full TP, but uh, thanks to the incentives, Lou doesn't have uh, enough easy souls for that, so. We also don't have Imperil. Or it's an issue to summon. Vanille. We're gonna get there. it after this, right? There it is, there it is. TP to summon, right there. Except I got <laughs> interrupted again, so this <laughs> is gonna be fun. I'm gonna try really quickly to get a Fire Aurora off before uh, Breath of the Beast. There it is, got it off. So the reason for using a summon in this fight is because Bandersnatch is resistant to all damage and Eidolon finishers ignore that resistance. Actually he's immune to physical but resists magic. Yes. Right? Yeah. Whereas Jabberwocky is immune to magic but only, only halves yes. physical. But he's much easier to kill conventionally. He also has a lot more hit points than Bandersnatch did. And here we're using Aurora for the launch instead of the launch ability. And these poisons, much like in Chapter 6, are being used to maintain the uh, juggle in this case. Once again, chat did you proud. <laughs> that is less of a vanilla than the other ones because for whatever reason her vocals are different than the other uh, Hecaton fights we've used her yeah. in. But Nonetheless, good job. It's the thought that counts. And coming up, we have my favorite dodge in the run. <laughs> this pretty much blows everyone's Not this one. The first time they see it. Pretty much. So yeah, we have a couple of normal enemies to dodge. These uh, fish, walking fish things. Are they birds or fish? I uh, call them, they're fish, they're but fish. I call them fish birds because, yeah. man, they look a lot like birds. Probably. And they they're jerks because they move fast. All right, look, yes. he's taking up too much space. Let's just run in between his legs. Perfect. <laughs> 10 out of 10. The one monster with an appropriately sized hitbox <laughs> for the model. <laughs> did I change the default? I did not. I actually like that dodge even better when you do it without Incept Cell. So he turns to face you, which makes it difficult to run between his legs. Well, you can literally just run around him <laughs> past the corner of his leg. Yes. Occasionally, you can still run in between his legs. Sometimes he doesn't turn, and then you just run between his legs. No deep protect. Good job, Vanille. OK, so last loss is basically impossible. I think he actually is impossible to stagger. No, you can stagger him. Can you actually get him yes. to get him to 999? Um, I mean, it would be difficult to get him there without just killing him. Right. But yes. Um, there is one you can preempt in the next area. Right. Oh, yeah. I don't need the protect, please. No, we're we're taking advantage of his natural elemental weaknesses and the uh, good old bravery, deep protect, and fire combination to yep. have 520% damage, and that's plenty. As long as he doesn't wind up killing the deal. Which is quite likely at this point. Oh, no. He's no. dead. Excellent. Uh, Vigilance is really helpful in that fight from the Shroud because it allows physical actions to disrupt Wadislas' attacks. Uh, you can't actually interrupt him, but you can keep him from initiating actions. Oh, hey, Lude. You want to fail eight dodges real quick for a meme? 
<laughs> or are we at, uh, are we at 44? 44. <laughs> 44. <laughs> or no, 46, 40 sorry. Math is hard. Uh, if it were fast, I would, except it's not fast. It failed to just <laughs> Gotta go fast. Uh, what am I doing? I don't even know what I'm doing. Ah. You're renewing for Tiamat. <laughs> we got distracted trying to, you know, intentionally sabotage this run. Did I inadvertently sabotage this run out of my own fruition? <laughs> Uh, wait, no. We're doing more. We're doing more. Just kidding. It's something to note. Remembering all these menus and things to upgrade, from components to buy, to which role of Tristarium to do when is pretty exceptional. Most runners run this with uh, notes active. Extensive notes. It's yeah. usually his notes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just so yes. you know, or read I'll read chat wants you to sabotage the run. <laughs> <laughs> of course chat does. You want me... You Hey, you could try... What you want me to do <laughs> is to sabotage this run? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to suggest trying the Sanctum Templar dodge, Decephalus. No. I'll just kill Vladislaus a couple more times. <laughs> sabotage? No, I'm not going to sabotage this run. Not at all. No. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see him there. Blindfolded dodge to TMS. <laughs> 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 nah, this dodge is easy. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> just, just run around him, right? Mm. Well, I kept running around him. Like, there was enough space, but then I was worried he was going to dart in front of me, so then I tried to dart at him to psych him out, but then I, he didn't psych me out. It's weird. Wait, you see, oh, you run past okay. the first one by clipping the fence. Now, the fun dodge is this one, because as soon as you run in... You go to the left. Oh, hi! <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> see? Left. <laughs> How many more do I need? Four, I Four? <laughs> yes. Okay, now dodge to the left. Oops. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dang it. Okay. Uh, we were we were having a discussion right. earlier about whether this dodge was even theoretically possible in like a task. And I'm not sure that it is. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> oh, okay. Because Try they luring are on them you by running fast. fast. <laughs> All right. So be very very quiet. Hunting is as well. <laughs> All right, one more attempt. <laughs> we swear this dodge is doable. No, we don't. Shh. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be, I'd be happy right. to be proved okay. wrong, but. <laughs> yes, Sorry, it's guys. Totally, it's doable, and you should try it and film it and send it to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you succeed. That's 54, right? Trust me, if I'm ever trying to do this dodge, I will be recording. Because if I pull it off, I want a recording. Yeah. <laughs> 54! 54! <laughs> 54! Run over, reset. Yeah, 55, Ripper. reset. Yeah, it's, it's too late. Oh, I went one over? Oh, shit. So here Oops. we're going <laughs> to take advantage of Vigilance and use uh, Cold Blood not for increasing the chain, but to keep Tiamat Eliminator in stun lock. It's very difficult to maintain Vigilance. So far he has not tail hammered. That is good. That is excellent. He's hasty there. And I believe, yeah, you've kept haste on everyone. So if you still had the Pleiades High Powers, or the Hyades Magnums, a single stagger kill would be possible. And unlike uh, some of his earlier cousin, the Proud Clad 2, in this stagger, Blue Dolphin is trying to do as much damage as possible. The more damage he gets now, the less he has to get later. Yeah, first phase is fairly straightforward. You don't have to worry about the ice. They have a chance to inflict slow, which first removes the haste, and then inflicts slow. Uh, fortunately, that hasn't actually happened. Then so he goes yeah. to the ground and starts using, uh, I forget the name of the ability, but it basically is like the, uh, 
Like Lucian Gall Subjugator yeah. 2, it yeah. dispels your buffs. Laser. Laser rain. I'm trying to use Cold Blood to keep him uh, interrupted here so he doesn't lose all of his debuff or buffs rather. But that's Wasn't pretty successful, but pretty questionable. Like, yeah. Pinpoint Beam does a lot of damage. Yeah. But now that he's staggered and completely debuffed, he's dead. Yep. And he can be launched. And unlike the Proud Clad, I don't believe he has any launch resistance. Two or two is a pretty solid time. Yeah. All right, and coming up is the last candidate for most dangerous boss in the run. <laughs> Well, Orphan 1 is going to be pretty fun without an elixir. Yeah. True, but uh, Orphan 1 is significantly easier, in my opinion, than all three of. Mm. Oh. Right. Eh. For me, well, it takes a lot of RNG I mean, trolling. It depends on if we're doing with difficulty to do or <laughs> difficulty to do fast. That's fair. <laughs> Difficulty for Vanille to inflict her deal. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is really where most of the difficulty of both of the next fights comes in. Yep. One, last, one yeah. last donation before you enter here. We have an anonymous $54 donation. 54? Thanks for gaming for a great cause. <laughs> have we had 54 54 donations yet? <laughs> <laughs> we had one at the start. Maybe five. <laughs> So Lude's going to have to uh, adjust his strategy depending on how quickly Vanille inflicts which debuffs. D-Shell we don't really care about. D-Protect we care a lot about. And now she's going to spam five Imperils, which means she's quite likely to get Imperil. But because it's Vanille, <laughs> she, got she it. did it. She did do it. So this should be a pretty safe fight for more. Really, just a safety quake. Just to make sure that he has a full length stagger. So, coming up, he's going to use Thanatosian Laughter. But unlike his previous iterations, this one does percentage based damage. So, it will look really dangerous, but it will never kill you. It will have the unfortunate effect of if snow is in the air, it will juggle it. He whipped. There we go. Good Perfect. first fight. Very nice. Very nice. This one, he just has to do a lot of things in a fairly short time period in between swipes. Swipes always happen at specific times, but uh, always at the same time. So if you have fast precision inputs, you can do what Blue Dolphin is about to do. If you're me, you have to modify the strategy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I keep a few rounds out of this. <laughs> I always try to do it and then kind of audible it to a slightly different. This is going to be a fun variant because we're not re using Renew, remember? Right. Oh, right. Yeah. Normally you would use an elixir and have basically all the TP you could ever Yeah, want. so. So it would be Renew, Renew, Elixir, Renew, and Summon. He has to skip all of that first part. Oops because he really does need the renew in the summon towards the end. So I'm basically trying to get Vanille to use as many Kirages as she can. Probably don't want to be in Smart Bomb, though. Luckily, Vanille is actually a competent healer now that she knows Kiraja. 
He's also doing quick switches to a paradigm with protect or with sentinel it to help reduce the damage uh, taken. That also uh, ensures that if Orphan uses. Uh, I forgot the name of the ability. Oh, enough damage or HP vanilla. Requiem. Yes. If he uses Requiem, it will target Snow, who is able to survive it easily. Speaking of which, I should say, is able to survive it easily if you switch him to Sentinel. So I really need to get him staggered before he wants to transform to the second phase. Yes. So I don't really have that much time. And of course we don't have any, uh, all the debuffs because vanilla. Yep. You don't have any debuffs. <laughs> So we now are sort of praying, except we do have higher uh, chains, so she's very likely to get the things. There's poison. There's poison. Poison is the one peril. that's pretty hard to get. I let that attack go off because I knew I was going to survive it, and I sort of need to be a little bit crazy to get the debuffs, but there we go. We got imperil, and now I can rest easy, unless he does another slap right now, in which case Saz will die. But now we're fine. So we're doing a little targeting manipulation here. If there is a medic on the field, Progenitorial Wrath will target the medic. So, granted, we needed Vanille as a medic anyway in that case, but even if he had been at full HP, he would have been using that paradigm. Merciless Judgment is also a percentage-based attack. And now we summon. The summon is for safety. This uh, late phase in oh, case he does that this. is really bad. <laughs> so now we're going to put the stall in guest stall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have to credit someone for that, but I forget who, but someone told me that yesterday. That was me. Ah. <laughs> Credit to Malagran for that pun. Good job. So while all this is doing, we're not doing very much damage with the Gestalt attacks, but poison is steadily ticking away. Which is why we were waiting until that timer on the bottom left is just about to lose a point in our uh, Gestalt counter. So anyway, as I, was, uh, as I was trying to say, this late phase of Orphans uh, is highly deadly. And so the summon helps us to survive, and then gives us the ability to do this. Nice. Theoretically long enough to finish him. It, Unfortunately, an early progenitorial wrath. So you will not see this final Gestalt point get used on the finisher. Because poison does not tick down during that finisher. But poison's duration does. And that's not We've had good. two wraths, yes, but what about third wrath? <laughs> oh, we didn't kill her. What's the chance on Wrath Instagram? 50%. 50? So. There we go. Very nice. So odds are if he'd let the other one hit Saz instead of Gestalt canceling it, it would have killed him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. And now for That's the That's not actually how probability works, but. <laughs> toughest boss. I mean, you could slap him up like 10 times. It, it is possible <laughs> to die to Orphan All right, too. so get ready on time. Done it. <laughs> um, not when we beat the boss, but when we clear the final results on the boss. <laughs> it's sort of like the last input. In fact, it is the last input, except for pressing skips. Why can I get not hit auto support? That was terrible. <laughs> And Snow got slowed because of that terribleness. Slap. Nope. There are a few attacks Orphan 2 can do. Most of them are not uh, that bad. There's a slap. This one's pretty bad. Ooh. And I managed to successfully renew to keep Saz's feet on the ground. Uh, safety quick. Because what else am I going to do? So you'll notice that Snow doesn't have bravery here. Uh, it's not necessary. Snow's going to be hitting the damage cap without it. 
Yeah, the, Saz is the only person in this fight. That sounds right. <laughs> I'll be fine. Thanks, Anya. All right, time is coming up uh, in three, two, one, stop. Woohoo! Woo! Six forty-two. And we can say official stats on that run: deaths zero. Failed dodges. 54! <laughs> yes. And let's point out that with those eight failed, extra failed dodges at the end, he was within two minutes of the old PC world record. He would have cut it if if I hadn't it, right? done with the failed <laughs> dodge thing, we would have beaten the old PC record. With <laughs> Eden so, Toys added in. Yes. So that timer is entirely inaccurate. 503.59 is not... The actual play time, it was 506.42, because the in-game timer for this game is quite horribly programmed, and it resets whenever you do a retry. <laughs> so, All right. that's Final Fantasy XIII. Very well done. All right, thank you all for watching. We're going to send you to a quick ad before Shining Force 2, but be sure to tune in if you're, you know, not about to pass out for sleep. And join us for, yeah, why would you do that? <laughs> so get ready for Boy the Hero and no worries. And welcome back to RPG Limit Break 2016. We thank you guys already for your immense generosity. Already over $25,000 raised for NAMI, the National Association for Mental Illness. Moving into our third graveyard shift, it is tonight. It is another Genesis Classic, Shining Force 2. I want to remind you guys of all the naming incentives that we've got going on here for Shining Force 2. Let me actually check with the runners real quick. When are all the, the naming incentives cut off uh, right at the beginning? All of them right at the beginning. I want to remind you guys that the current leaders for all of them, if you want to get in a quick donation right as they are setting up, as they're getting their gear ready, leading for Bowie, it is Arby's. 
for Chester, Wendy's, for Eric, in and out for Gerhalt, Joe's, Jaha, Crab, Cousin, Shack, what? Lemon, Taco Bell, Luke, Five Guys, Peter, Chipotle, Sarah, Waifu, Sheila, uh, BST Girl, or Best Girl, I guess, and for Slade, Mike. If you want to get in for the bidding wars for any of those characters, make sure to get them in right now. What's it for? During the KFK podcast, someone donated to our Oh, sure. Sorry. I haven't been seeing it yet. I haven't been seeing it yet. Yeah, I guess I'll take it. Sure. I want to thank you guys now. We have just crossed past the $26,000 mark. Thank you guys very much. And starting now, we've actually got two prizes that you currently can get into a uh, drawing for. For a minimum of $5, from now through the end of Mega Man Battle Network 6, which will be this morning, you can get into the uh, drawings for the Shining Force 2 Steam Keys. And for a minimum bid of $20, you are in the drawing for the Shining Force 2 3DS case, which will actually extend all the way through our Legend of Mana run, uh, which should be sometime midday tomorrow. So make sure you get in your donations quick, guys.